I have a midget Skittle. <laughs> it's like it's like six times smaller than all the other Skittles in the bag. What the fuck? Wow. Oh, uh, you might win a your prize I, for I, that. I bet that's your idea of a diet. I don't even want to fucking eat it. Well, yeah, it is my idea of a diet. Instead of eating pizza and drinking Dr. Pepper, I'm now eating Skittles. You already and had the Pepsi. pizza. Now you're having is, Skittles, is it, Pepsi, and pizza. <laughs> is it partially hey. attached to another Skittle, like Quattro from no. Is it like a Skittle tumor? <laughs> no, I, I'm going to take a picture of it and show you because this is the fucking I can't craziest wait. thing. Can't wait. Skittle. Okay. If before you cut. The pizza. Is it one slice of pizza? I don't cut the pizza. The people that the store cut the pizza and I buy it from the store cut. How could it be right, a slice of all, something if it was never taken from stands. something else? I don't even want to like eat this Skittle because it's like it's special. Oh, a lima bean that looks just like the leader. I'll put it with the others. There we go. Is it is it weirdly discolored? Oh, I posted it in the wrong chat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh look, that's Here a good go. start. Critical drinker, what are your thoughts on Eric Taxon? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, no. Wait, wait, this actually this Skittle picture doesn't really work because we don't have a scale. We maybe you have really tiny fingers. Okay, I will show you a normal size Skittle then. No, could you I'll take a picture from the exact like same a... angle with a normal size Skittle. Well, how do we know that the normal size Skittle is normal sized? Because I'm telling you, it's normal sized. I don't think that's good enough. Can, can, we, like trust, a can we trust this or wolf guy? Or something. Yeah. Here we go. Normal We're sized. We're waiting with breath on this one. Exactly. And in fairness, you can see the Discord is behind it with us lot in it. So yeah, this is we can verify this image unless he did. Uh... You know, you said it was like ten times smaller. Now you're just Wait a straight a up liar. How do we know that's not the same Skittle, just it's larger, a lighter, color. with an S on it? What the fuck, Rex? It's not the same. And you know what's really one advantage is one advantage that Skittles has over M and M's is that they taste M and M has an M mm on it. But if you turn it upside down, it's a woo. But with a Skittle, regardless of whether or not it's face up or upside down, it's still. S Someone was like, See, "Wait, that's, that's intelligent white. design right there." Ten times smaller. Yeah. Ten times. God loves Skittles. I'm calling lies on this. Anyway, oh, yeah, we got uh, our wants it, to it, know. Um, it, chat wants to know about Critical Drinker uh, and his opinions concerning orphans. Oh, oh orphans! <laughs> I, I, genu I, I strongly object to the existence of them. <laughs> I've got a sneaking suspicion. And sorry, suspicion. The <laughs> There's a fisherman that's suspicious. Um, I shouldn't have had so many drinks before I did this. Um, what did you so, think of uh, Homecoming? It was fine. Um, the plot was a bit weak. It kind of relied on the charm and the charisma of a lot of its actors rather than being a particularly good story. I thought it was a good story. I thought it was a good story too. Well, I'm in the minority here on this one then. Well, I don't know about that because a lot of people seem to think that Homecoming was pretty bad. If she ends up being a mentor to um to like Spider-Man or some other character, I'm gonna be like, I cannot take you seriously. Like if she's like, you know, she life isn't about she, revenge or something, you'd be like, oh no, no, please no. She can sit down with Spider-Man and explain like if someone touches your newspaper, it's okay to rob them and <laughs> <laughs> she convinces Spider-Man to be if evil. If someone winks at you, you can she like turns blast them with evil, webs. Yeah. Friggy was like, no, Doc Strange is good. And I was like, it's kinda bad. And then we watched it and I was I remember thinking to myself, like, no matter how good beginning parts are, when we get to the ghost fight, I know that everything falls apart in the ghost fight, and... Yeah, it was even worse than I remembered. Fucking ghost fight. Zippity zappity. But you know what was cool? Is the, uh, Doctor Strange is very upset when he finds out he's killed anyone. He doesn't like killing people, it's a big deal for him, because he's not only a surgeon, but just a human being who hasn't killed people, so that's neat. He's um, the- he's the anti-Brie Larson. Yeah, she doesn't really... <laughs> <laughs> really sure how how many it. people are are dead because of Captain Marvel? Like thousands. <laughs> no, she's got a higher kill count than like anyone. Yeah, and thousands. like she doesn't care. She just gives a good a little woohoo, like she's having the great old time. And like, you, yeah, you're becoming a mass murderer right now. And a lot of these people aren't even bad necessarily. They've just been told to like attack you. Do you think Jude Law is gonna have another crack at her? Because like he's probably he gonna come back, up. right? They must have left him alive for a reason. Yeah, he can be the new Loki. 
Just he wouldn't look a bad Loki. He look he looks like kind of a Loki type. Well, the important thing is that she didn't have anything she needed to prove to him, so she just kind of knocked him out and then threw him away. And we can we can take a lot from that. Then uh, then she threw his spaceship into space. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she blasted it, and it somehow works now because of that. Because it was like broken, and she just goes. Which Boosh. is weird because norm every other point in this movie when she's blasted stuff, it has destroyed things. Yeah, yeah. But, but did they even establish that well, she can no, power no, things up? Heal things. This she is what I do. No, this is what I do when my car won't start. Like I just I just blast it with something, and it, it just kicks into life. It's great. Like don't you guys? Do that. Gonna go ahead and Shit. in advance apologize for the first one. This is uh this is, <laughs> I didn't believe this was a thing, right? I can assure you it is. Someone sent me this and they were like, this is from his newest right. well his newest video at the time. Winton the reviews skills. uh adopting a different style. He hasn't kept it, right? And I guess he thought it was funny, but again, I apologize. Oh, oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Oh like, my god! Oh, Quentin, that is Jesus like, that's, Christ! That's that is... like a character creation screen when you're like, <laughs> pissed as fuck and you just set everything to maximum. <laughs> no, but what this, this is... is like, <laughs> character randomizer and oblivion. <laughs> this, this is more like in Mass Effect when the people like intentionally tried to make the ugliest character they could ever conceive. Yeah. Yeah, when I He's saw this, like, like I said, I was uh, like, uh, I was like, is this a Photoshop? Like, why would anyone do this to themselves? <laughs> like, is this actually? Uh, it's in a video. He, um, so, uh, from what I saw, he shaves parts of his beard off throughout the video until he gets to this stage, and then he shaves it all except the handlebars. No. Oh. oh my goodness. So like normally he's got like a full on beard going on. I think so. But yeah. Yeah, he's got a compensation beard. Yes. See, yeah, like. When I've spoken to women about beards before, they're always like, oh yeah, we like them because we always assume there's a handsome face underneath. <laughs> but that is an incorrect assumption, my friend. So yeah, that, wow. sorry about that. Apologies. Uh, I showed oh, Rag this God. already. Uh, Rag is this, this, but this was something that we, we ordered to have happen and someone did it quickly. Yeah, oh, yeah. Friends perfectly <laughs> balanced this all in the should be. <laughs> <laughs> Like, th was... There are times when the two ends of the political spectrum can agree on something. Not that we actually have <laughs> Riley Dennis confirming that uh, Vision is trans, but it does sound like I'm something sure that, that would be would. said. Yeah, we got a, a first match. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, that's beautiful. good. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and then, uh, of course, I'm so happy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> After I <laughs> I like that you're just saying bark in the first picture. <laughs> <laughs> I really love this one. Uh... <laughs> Legally, we'll go explaining why the Don actually committed battery and assault. Literally, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> 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 oh, this is obviously a picture from uh, an event that took. <laughs> <laughs> Don three sixteen for the Don so loved the world that he gave his only begotten motorcycle <laughs> that whoever smiles upon him shall not perish. But have directions and arrive. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's really good. <laughs> That's great. I can't remember if I showed this one before or not, but I just find it amusing. So I'm going to do it again. <laughs> Slice it, nice brother. Pretty sure I have. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love your face. It's so good. Then there's this one. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say, really. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, buddy. Someday you could be long too. <laughs> Darn, Darn long guy. <laughs> long guy. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh what goodness. the fuck? <laughs> Actually terrifying. <laughs> 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 long guy. Like. Long guy. So you guys know about the me and the boys meme, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Watching a downward throw spaniel at point five speed. <laughs> oh man! 
<laughs> Some of these I just want to leave on the screen for a while and just enjoy them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is some fine memory. Although this is a uh, a Beowin piece. Um. Oh boy. <coughs> How about a smile? How about a smile? <laughs> <laughs> the halo of the birds. <laughs> My N word. What is your plan? <laughs> <laughs> Wolf is They really plan to on get this revenge one. on Rags and defeat the bots and the bot war. Plan to get revenge on you, Rags, for locking me out of the chat two EFFs ago. It was humiliating and frustrating. <laughs> you must not be a mod during that. <laughs> oh right, the bots from the last time. I will make sure Mahler takes away your mod access and I won't come over to hate. <laughs> Death toll from the bots is catastrophic. There have been tons of suicide bombings. <laughs> Arabics, they will bow before the power of Eve. <laughs> you freaking retard, we You will not get sex. Now go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. You will not get sex. <laughs> oh boy! Ugh. Not this. Don't movie. you love the Hobbit, though? I, this oh, is the no. worst of the three, too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> every every <laughs> Hobbit movie was shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if anything comes from uh, the Hobbit movies, then. It could be this. I love that the people, they always summarize it in the memes as TLJ Defenders. It's that simple. <laughs> Is that like a personal attack or something? <laughs> people call me. That's <laughs> 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 uh, right over here. We got the fucking. Oh god, it's the Avengers, Avengers theme. <laughs> 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 Just look at this image. <laughs> this is perfect. Oh I, man, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> they even animated his head flipping with it. <laughs> oh, that's Goliath. <laughs> Demon of the ancient world. Run! <laughs> <That face. laughs> the animation is incredible in this. Oh thing. man, Shut some up, of though. these are. <laughs> <laughs> you see him in the background, that was great. <laughs> hey! <laughs> 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 See, our old pal <laughs> 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 Oh, that is, uh... <laughs> That's horrifying. Oh, yeah. uh, I, have, I have no fucking idea what I'm watching right now, but even I appreciate this. <laughs> the meme value, it's through the roof. <laughs> you hear you say <laughs> In the distance, I can hear you say I know. Hello, all my head. <laughs> but this is your find. Hello <laughs> there, ladies and gentlemen. We can insult all the time. A long critique long is not critique deep. Is not critique. deep critique. <laughs> all we like. You can try. Run while you have the chance. God, Eric, don't make close-ups of your face. You're just you're so titanically ugly. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Who wrote this stupid shit? <laughs> <laughs> Hate mongers. Jack, kindly <laughs> fuck you. 
I fucking hate Trump. <laughs> 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 Slice and slice and slice. You put the oh, cross on C three PO. Mary Sue. I was half expecting like a tonal quote in the background, but that helps too. What Wolf was actually doing it his time off. <laughs> J, J, J. You will want it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like a bunch of water that turned the fucking writers of Game of Thrones gay. <laughs> <laughs> Story time, story time, story time. Oh god, story everyone time. sit down, yep. sit down. Story time. <laughs> everyone sit down, story time. Legs crossed. So, so, a couple months ago, I was getting my tires rotated. And, oh, uh, is that what they call it? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, you're getting your tires rotated? What was his name? You don't need to know that information. So anyway, I was getting my tires rotated, and I was reading my book, and there was this old lady who looked over, and she was like, do you like Stephen King? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I do. And she was like, my son likes Stephen King, too. And I was like, oh, that's great. Was this, was this person <laughs> Stephen uh, King? A hideous creature? Like, <laughs> well, well, she was an old woman, so yeah, in a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole time I was like, can you just shut up and let me read? So, but again, she wasn't sexually harassing me. Can you imagine if I stood up, pointed at this old woman, and I just screamed at the top of my lungs, SEXUAL HARASSMENT! Then you hit her with the book. <laughs> <laughs> would I have been... Thing is, if, <laughs> if, if she'd been the Dawn, would you have been perturbed by that, or would you have been totally receptive? If, if she had been the Dawn, I would have thrown the book away, and I would have just <laughs> leapt into his arms and been like, take me with you. <laughs> Gentlemen, and welcome <laughs> to a of sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Brown Table. <laughs> that was like our genuine reaction when he said that what the Don did was sexual harassment. So this video is great. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a critique of sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> Clever <laughs> shit. <laughs> People make this shit because of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to give something back. Who's <laughs> <laughs> a little helmet? <laughs> 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that old man got that tractor beam out of commissioner. This is gonna be a real short trip. Okay, hit it! Tell me what did It wasn't made for him. This is two <laughs> different <laughs> Hobbit videos where she's Azog. It's perfect. <laughs> I mean, I guess it must be true. <laughs> So yes, <laughs> Kylo Ben is in Kyle Ben. <laughs> Kyle Ben's flying in behind him too. Let me go back to work. <laughs> just... Fuck that episode. <laughs> After the battle, the Don retrieved his motorcycle from Captain Marvel's corpse, and he drove the EFAP crew on a tour of his many children's hospitals, cancer and AIDS curing facilities, drug addict rehabilitation center, and his climate change prevention complex.
They then in, uh, visited Becky's grave where they ate pizza and played Fallout 76. <laughs> they drove his motorcycle through Brown Table's birthday party while he screamed sexual harassment. He died two days later of the big game. <laughs> big game. <laughs> I like how Brown Table's birthday party <laughs> is like a meme too. I want that to continue. <laughs> This guy like thinks he looks ridiculous. Uh, hey, look. He yeah, let, let's put something completely unequivalent to it. Next, I was going to say, the, the Gears of War people look way stupider than that. Yeah, he looks yeah. like big buff video game killer man. I'm well, fine with that. He barely looks any Biggest different from how he did in the last game, aside from, like, the helmet looks a little different, and he's got the... Was, thing. Yeah, was the Doom guy ever meant to be, like, a relatable, normal <laughs> guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Doom guy. I could, I could really see myself as the Doom guy. The eternal embodiment of unquenchable rage and pain. I <laughs> bet that Don is under that helmet. Oh, yeah. I really hope he is. In these concept illustrations, he's had a bit of an update. Bruh. Look at this dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, What's wrong no, with it? No, no. What, why is he laughing? It's because the sa sausage, sausage arm. No. Oh, oh, yeah. There you go. My god, this is terrible. Well, I don't see it. He's too thick, apparently, for this guy. I, on the other hand, think that he I can't like be too thick. thick. It's be... literally. It's almost like he's wearing power armor or something that bulks out like his existing appendages. Yeah. And but... he's... Like, literally, the only criticism I have of anything that I've seen from Doom Eternal is uh, the HUD looks a little too bright and large, which could easily be fixed. Yeah. And yeah, that's hopefully literally they have the only thing you. I didn't like about it. Otherwise, it looks fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, this is also like fat really shaming. And it, we it, do it's... not endorse fat shaming. So just, just... I do. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> you, sh you should <laughs> shame I, I fat people. I happily do that on my own channel regularly. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'm perfectly fine with fat shaming. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make fun I, of we someone. We should shame people into not being fat. We only shame I, I ugly would... people, not fat people. That's disgusting. All oh, right. You can control ugly. whether or not well, you're ugly, you know, but not whether or not you're fat. people are ugly. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like it's a choice of how much butter you eat or anything. No. Nope. <laughs> it climbed down my throat, officer. It raped you. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I can't go to the gym. I'm allergic to exercise. <laughs> the burger slipped and fell down my throat. I don't know what happened. This is not Doom 2, of course, because that would be confusing. This is Doom Eternal, and it yeah, doesn't yeah. They look don't want to make great. another Doom 2. Yeah, we, yeah, Doom Eternal. You know, most yeah. people say, like, you shouldn't just rename something the same exact name. Yeah. Like, even God of War 4, just calling it God of War, people criticized that. Same with uh, the Tomb Raider reboot. I mean, most people don't want that, and you're, you're just saying we should have another well, Doom 2. Imagine you were in a room with two people named Carl. It would be yeah. confusing. <laughs> yes. Really kind of cements how they feel about the history of the game they're no, working on. No, the reason that people have an issue with the fact that EA called it Star Wars Battlefront 2 is because the EA version of Star Wars Battlefront 2 is a way shittier game and the other Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2005 is a way better one. People have an issue with that because you don't want to confuse the two games rather than, like, squash the history of the original. This is a good thing. My god, you're an idiot. Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of them trying to scrub the history and be like, yeah, just ignore Doom 2, we're going in a completely different direction, who cares about Doom 2? You realize if they, if they named it Doom 2, then all that would come up is this. I mean, if you look Absolutely, up Chernobyl yeah. on Google Images, now most of the images that come up are the Chernobyl show. Rather I hear that was based on a real reason. event. I will catch you guys when I return later on this afternoon. Oh yeah, how long so will we probably be going it's still? I was about to say, we might still be going. How long are you going to be? Maybe two hours? Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll still, be still be going. <laughs> We're going to bring in someone to fill the, uh, the fourth gap. I'm sorry about this. Oh god, who's this massive going to be? No, not him. Not him. <laughs> Ask him what movies he's seen, and you'll find like three or four of them. Wait, wait, Drinker, ask Jay if he's seen some of your favorite. Just ask him if he's seen some movies and pick some of your like, favorites. Like literally any movie that comes to mind. Jay, have you seen The Last Jedi? I have, unfortunately. <laughs> think of some good Jay, ones. <laughs> Jay, I can't think of any good ones recently. Oh, just Fuck. at all times, all time, just pick any like, movie. Like literally at any point in the history of cinema. 
Jay, have you seen Terminator 2? Yes. I really like nice. Terminator 2. And I just Jay, watched have, the original have, Terminator today. Have you seen time. have you seen Street Fighter the movie? I have not. Is well, that... then you're missing out because there's some truly glorious memes on on the go there. It it doesn't sound like it would be the kind of thing where you'd expect like uh, a man. It really movie. isn't what you would expect. No. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll uh, think about list off a couple in a row. Just only answer yes or no, Jay. All right, Jurassic Park. Yes or no, Jay. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen Jurassic Park, yeah. Falling Down? No. Uh, Event Horizon? No. Big Trouble in Little China? No. Flash Gordon? Yes. Cool. Do I have to keep this going for the next like 20 <laughs> minutes? Or... I feel like oh. I did pretty well out of that one. That was like a good 50%. Yeah, usually it's, it's less than that. Like, Jay, Gladiator? No. Braveheart? No. Taken? No. Blade Runner? Yes. Well, I got bored of it and turned it off. Any of the John oh, Wick movies? Boy. Uh, yeah, I've seen the first John Wick movie. The Green Mile? No. The Shawshank Redemption? No, but that's like on the top of my list at the moment. Stand By Me? No, it's also right at the top of my list. Dances with Wolves? No. Birdman? No. Rain Man? No. Good Wheel Hunting? No. Saving Private Ryan? No, you you've oh, actually played it. Off. That's not <laughs> no, here, here's the best yeah, one though. Out. Here's the best one, The Lion King. No, you you know I haven't seen this. Do you spend great periods of your life in solitary confinement on Alcatraz, <laughs> and then like they let you out like for a couple of months at a time? I mean, it makes sense. His career right now is essentially both film criticism and counter film criticism, so it would make sense that he hasn't seen many films, right? Yes, totally. Yeah. Great. I think it's good though because you've you've got all these films in store for you that we've yeah, already do. seen. There is an element of jealousy of like, man, you got some great experiences to come if you watch all this. I wish I could erase my memory of a lot of the movies I love to watch them again. It is offensive mostly, though. That you I, haven't I, seen I Saving do that. Ryan. That's offensive. I mostly like cover good. pop culture films though, so I don't get to see good ones. Don't get Those to see good it ones. as if there's something stopping you. <laughs> you know what I meant by that. I don't. I refuse. Thing is, I don't know about you guys, but I find myself watching older movies more now because, like, movies that come out now just make me sad deep inside. Yeah, and like, they leave like a void in my soul. Uh, me and Wolf have been watching a '90s TV show, so why is there platforming? Fuck off! Like, <laughs> I, have you ever heard of the concept of like 3D environments that you have to navigate and you have to go up and down and forward and backward? Glowing yellow poles that swing you. This is like basic stuff from They're not tutorial. glowing. It's just a yellow pole. I was going to say, I don't, I don't know if it's glowing. It just looks yellow. It's Take literally colored that way so people understand it's cooler, an object that can be grappled. It's a bright I yellow. Love, I, I love the fact that this guy got so hung up on this fucking pole <laughs> that he made a video based on it. <laughs> I, in, it's my, in his mind, it probably is glowing. Yeah. <laughs> Once the color is bright much. enough, it is fucking glowing, all right? Yeah. <laughs> swing you. This is like basic stuff from a tutorial level of a platforming game. Jump on the pole, swing to the next platform. Sorry, I just read this in the chat. You guys chat. are spending five minutes on each sentence. Are you really gonna dab on the guy for talking about a pole? He's the, he's the one talking about the pole. <laughs> what he wants us to do? He made a video on it, and he's talked about other things. So you know, and yeah, we're, we're about we're now talking about uh, the fact that you can dash is apparently a bad. I don't know. Sounds something like cool. uh, it, it, yeah, you might have some killer like like criticism coming up, but like so far, it's been pretty bleak. The Do worst the thing about plan. the poll is that only sixty percent of the people in it have seen, have seen the Game of Thrones finale. What? I understand. I, my brain took a bit for that. It was like he's making a joke there. I got to figure it out, but I did. Oh, Unfortunately, the I time like, it took oh, no. to figure it out. Uh, oh no! Oh no! There was just silence. I've done a bad. Your joke was too complicated. So by the time people figure it out, they can't laugh. I found the survey, and it's actually it's much worse than you think. Oh, no! Because, no. <laughs> because the, the first question of the survey is, do you consider yourself a fan of the television show Game of Thrones? And only 22% responded yes. What? <laughs> what? <laughs>
you've got some sweet air kills and again it facilitates cool kills and faster gameplay core concepts of doom but parkour poles for parkour in doom why is the pole bothering oh, you so much what? <laughs> yeah he's fucking obsessed about this pole man <laughs> Go to the one pole in this map. <laughs> this is like the most meek parkour I've seen, too. Like, there's no wall running. There's no, like, crazy Titanfall 2-esque tricks. It's like you're, you're it's swinging like, from a pole and ending up at a different place on the other side it, of the pole. I, yeah, like, from the footage as well, like, when he's talking about the grapple gun, it doesn't seem like you've got to do that. Like, it's just your option. You know, it's something you can use you know, tactically if you really want to, or you can just blast the shit out of whatever you're fighting. Like, why is that a problem? A couple of people in chat are saying he's in chat, by the way. He is. I've seen him. Is he? What's his name? Crymore. Oh. Hello. <laughs> what, is he here? Your video listening sucks. to us, criticizing his video. Apparently. Yeah. That, it happens sometimes. This has happened before. We Both Just Right and Snowman Gaming were in the chat when we were criticizing the videos we brought them on. It was really I, I, I want to ask him, actually. Dude, do you remember when you had to fight in the Korean War? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. What up? What up, my homies? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello, well, at least fellow it's children. Just that. Except now there's wall climbing. Like it's bad enough that we have sausage doom guy now. What's what's the sausage doom guy complaint as well? Because he's a bit like a thick. Oh. This guy who has literally always been buff. Fired. And look at the demon grabbing his arm. Looks he's like into he's it. Retarded. He looks into it. I'm just. It's a sausage man. Like why would you not want him? I don't know. Sausage man bad. Sausage man. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just picture this sausage in a suit grappling a wall and leaping from side to side like he's Lara Croft. It's the most ridiculous thing, and it just That's doesn't... not a... okay, Wait, is, it, no. is it the most ridiculous thing, though? Is it the worst thing? <laughs> it, it, would like it not he's... make even more sense in this case than Lara Croft? Because he's literally a tank of a person. And I, I would love to see Lara Croft in agile. this fucking situation. <laughs> like, is this alone sure Lara enough to say... In a lot of is this Dude. alone enough to say that the game looks terrible? A pole and you can climb walls? It's like, wow. What about all the other Did, stuff? So I just... really want to play the game he's literally describing of like, you're a literal sausage <laughs> flapping a lot uh, against walls. Yeah. So a, sausage, a sausage shaped like Lara Croft. <laughs> we can call it Sausage Raider. You just play a Tomb Raider <laughs> game, but you're a sausage flopping around. Well, you, know, you used to get the Nude Raider patches, so, like, I want a Sausage Raider patch. <laughs> <laughs> I like that there's extra ammo, hidden weapons, Easter eggs, and more armor hidden in the vents. I don't like that I'm going to have to jump on a yellow pole. Fucking pole, to man! Clear... <laughs> like, oh is this, like, has this guy had bad experiences in a pole dancing club or something? <laughs> Dude, like, I, know I, don't, I, have. I don't even want to ask what happened you know, with you, him you and uh, about sausages. The war, but I think he might have actually failed boot camp. So maybe that's the reason why he's got like a pull phobia. Like he tried to do the pull ups and just couldn't. <laughs> Stop sausage could, shaming. Could... <laughs> Stop sausage <laughs> shaming. Was Doom ever about like, you know, really taking the time to explore your environment? And, and methodically search out everything. It was it was fast paced. It was always meant to be, you know, move I on mean, to the next area. Well, in part, there was like trying to find the secrets to get the big weapons to mm. fight through the next area. Yeah, and, and some I of those remember... were hard to find. Like you had to shoot like a random piece of wall that looked no different from another piece of wall. Yeah, you yeah. Would open it into a room and you get a chainsaw or something. Because God knows that the thing Doom was missing was a compelling storyline. You? Why not though? Why does it? Why, why, is, it, why is it bad for anything to have a compelling storyline? Like, you, you can you can give it a storyline that doesn't totally like intrude on the gameplay. This game so. has especially, a good story. How dare it? Especially if God, it's like, it stuff you can just ignore. Like if it's stuff you can just you know fucking run past and shoot everything. What a terrible fucking argument! Oh, Godzilla's not supposed to have a story. It's like, yeah, well, the story that was there was shit. Like, that was the argument. But it's this misguided need to make everything more extreme that seems to have led to things like. I don't know, man. Doom seems pretty extreme already. Like, the idea that there's a cap on it to me, it seems like. How is. How is any of this making it more extreme? Like, you can climb stuff and you can swing on a fucking yellow extreme? pole, Jay. 
Is it is this like the the same argument as those like gaming journalists who were like upset with the new Call of Duty that is like it's too realistic? It's too extreme because you're a sausage. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's too extreme because like you might get put into a situation where you have to fire on civilians. Like that's modern warfare. Wait, is this an actual example of the you're just not getting what you expected? Oh, you mean like is this an actual like is he that guy? Like you know how people say that that's what that's why people don't like the Last Jedi. You just it's just not what you expected, and you're mad that your theories weren't true. And like he's not. This, getting, yeah, this might this actually be of that real, the real world equivalent of that. <laughs> Didn't think those people existed though. Without feeling so cheapened. Who are they trying to appeal to with platforming and wall jumping? Dude, can you honestly- People not... that like really fun games, I Come guess. Come on, there's so many people this... who are hyped for this. Are you, you kidding? This is like the most hyped game for pretty much everyone. What you'll find when everyone says, what are you looking forward to in E3, they'll be like, aside from Doom Eternal, obviously, because everyone's excited for that. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, yeah, so, well, so this, this. Come on. You know, you know what I'm- you know, yeah, this I'm is really the last one. game I'm hyped for this year because all the other games I want come out next year. This this guy seems to have a real issue with sausages and pole <laughs> dancing. No, I, I don't want to make inferences <laughs> here, but do you I'm think he might have to gone to them. like some bar and there was like a sausage, like actually pole dancing in front of him? Look, I we've all been bad. to bars like that in Thailand, and yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, like, it can go horribly <laughs> wrong. You know, and it can All horribly you. right, really you know? Yeah, well, yeah, it depends <laughs> on your outlook, I suppose. I still don't understand what his criticism is. <laughs> it seems to be that there's too many elements that are leading Doom into um, a bombastic sort of future. It looks too fun, therefore it's bad. <laughs> too many yellow sausages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too many yellow sausages, it, yeah. It's got the newfangled platforming for the kids. <laughs> Fucking... Popcorn enemies. <laughs> Todd okay. said sausages just work. It, it, <laughs> it wasn't like this in my day. Uh, a couple of people said he might have left. I'm still waiting to see if he's... Uh... I, uh, please let him come on, it would be amazing. Oh, he said, sure, I'll say hello. Alright. Uh... Has he... Um, I just has invited he, him to the has... watch together. Whoops. <laughs> hello. Good hello. evening. Good, hello, sir. Wow, that yeah. was a lot of fun. <laughs> you might you might be like, wow, that's that's gonna be unprecedented. It happens all the time on this show, funnily enough. We it is the entire up. point of the show. How do you yeah, do? That was fun. I've heard yeah, very we, we well. want to thank say thank you for joining us for this uh, <laughs> this chat. Thank you for entertaining me. Oh, that was fantastic to watch. You're a big fan of Doom Eternal, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you feel about pole dancing clubs and oh, sausages? Yeah. Sausage, man, you know, I love cheese sausage, but that's about it. If you watch the E3 Bethesda show, right? Like, it looks super arcadey to me. But I did notice that the yellow poles are not poles anymore. Oh, yeah? What are they <laughs> so now? They're, they're, they're like bone things, but they're still there. Really, the, I don't know. So I feel like I have a whole lot of stuff that you guys said that I want to reply to all at once. And, uh, Take the well, reins. The, flo- the floor is yours, sir. <clears throat> the pole is yours. <laughs> <laughs> the sausage is yours. You can uh, do whatever you want with either one, just as long as it's painting for the rest of us. So I've had a lot of time to think about this video. It's a 10-month, 11-month-old video, and every single morning for the past 10 or 11 months, I've woken up to a whole bunch of kill-yourself comments, right? So, like, I get a whole lot of hate for this video. It is one of the most disliked videos on uh, ratio-wise on the platform. Uh, it's almost worse than YouTube Premiere or, or YouTube um, Rewind. So, like, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Like, it's, it's pretty, pretty bad. I've gotten a lot of hate for this video, and I've had a lot of time to think about it. And I don't think that I explained my point correctly, but I don't think I'm wrong either. It's not that I was trolling this. Like, it's not that... I think that the new Doom looks a little bit too arcadey. I don't like the fact that they're slowing things down. Like, the pole jumping and the wall climbing, they're not 
fast. They're not speed. They're slowing things down. You've already got the double jump. You've already got the dash. You've already got all these movement things that make but it those, fast. Cool. Those are right? just environmental things. Everything else still looks just as fast as the last game. Right. And that's what I didn't really get across is those are the things that I didn't like because of that, because it, it makes it feel slower. I thought Doom 2016 was a great game. I really did. I thought it was a great game. And I would like to see more of that. If you were to say, hey, what do you want? And I were to give it some thought again. I mean, I just I didn't even know you guys were talking about this until I started getting uh, a whole bunch of comments saying I've been EFAPed. So much. Oh, do you um, do you have any idea who we are? Like, not that you should. I have no person. idea who you are. I've never no, seen you. No before. problem. We are a bunch of drunken assholes that talk <laughs> about shit that doesn't matter to anyone. Your video has been said to log to us a few times that I finally decided to cover it. Uh, I had no idea what it was going to be like going in. But it was an interesting idea that... <laughs> Do you think at all that Doom Eternal Looks Terrible was uh, not the wisest of titles? I don't know. I mean, it got me on here, so... <laughs> oh, I mean, if, <laughs> if, 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 if now you've circumstances... arrived, sir. Now you've arrived. This, this is the right of circumstance you want to be on here, typically. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> This is how I got on here in the first place. That's actually true. <laughs> that that, that is true. Jay started as an enemy. It, it was a fun video to make. I enjoyed making it. I knew it would piss some people off, of course. Um, I think there's some stuff that doesn't look great in the new Doom Eternal. Would I call it terrible? I don't, I don't know. think I'd use those words, but... You know. <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> you did already, so... I'm, I'm not going to change it now. I'm, I didn't realize how many times I talked about the poll. <laughs> <laughs> I I would have saw, saw it as much more reasonable if there were more polls. I just was that the only poll in the actual footage. Was, or? I think that was like literally the only one in that whole demo. There were two polls that I remember in the QuakeCon thing, but the other one was like really really short, so I couldn't use that footage. And I just ended up having to go back to the same footage over and over again. And I never realized until afterwards how many <laughs> times. Well. <laughs> Yeah, if there were more polls, I could have seen it, but it seemed like you had a, you have some kind of history with polls. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I don't remember do. it. <laughs> I don't remember it, but apparently. Do you think he looks like a sausage man? Bro, okay, so like that one, <laughs> I know I don't understand why people didn't get this right. He's so much bigger, and it looks ridiculous. His his wrists are like bigger than his shoulders now. But and he's yeah, wearing armor. Do you, not, do you not get that? Like he's wearing power armor. So, but, like, but it wasn't that big. Out, it wasn't but... that big in 2016. If you look at 2016, it wasn't that big. They're so big. I can only see his wrists. So maybe he just masturbates a lot. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he does. Maybe he's I mean, having with that. <laughs> a lot of free time in hell, right? I didn't really think it was a good design change. I understand that that you know, with regards to character design, they can basically do whatever the hell they want. But it just doesn't appeal to me. And that's really like, I can't defend a whole lot of the stuff in this video because it's a personal opinion. I just didn't like certain things. And uh, and that's kind of the problem with it, I guess. Um, so were you, uh, were you a big fan of Doom back in the day? Like the original games? I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old. But you Doom, and Nom. Like... <laughs> Korea. <laughs> now, what, what's the other one? Uh, the, I saw somebody in the chat say uh, I was at the, the Battle of Northern Aggression. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not that old, man. Yeah, it's really... Revolutionary War, of course. <laughs> what? What did? What was? Tr what was trench warfare like? Well, um, you know, was George it's... Washington really that? <laughs> <guy>? <laughs> Let me show you my signed book from uh, Jesus, right? <laughs> yeah, for the German invasion of Poland. I'm sorry. What was the birth of the universe like? Did you meet God? <laughs> it was very pretty. It was very pretty. And she's a wonderful person. Did you meet the cosmic Shh. chicken? Did I make what? <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to know that reference, Jay. I know, I just, it just, like, I had to say it, it came into my mind. Beginning of the universe, the cosmic chicken. You know when they, they first discovered that they could get milk from rhinos? Can you get like? milk from rhinos? Well, you can. They're really Apparently good for their ivory. 
feel Shut bad up. for anybody who's out of the loop <laughs> on any of it. I just, I just feel bad. Yes, all of that made sense. If you don't even understand it, it made <laughs> it made no sense to me, but it makes perfect sense to me after speaking to you just for a few minutes. Oh, you don't Are like you collectibles? Are you calling us retarded? Or you don't like excessive, <laughs> easy collectibles? Is that is that the collect? Uh, bro, I just hate collectathons. That's really it. I see Rags is in this chat, and I remember him so high. Oh, he's uh, he's away right now. <laughs> that that's all I'll have to say. All right. Well. Well. Okay. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you for having me. Oh, buy critical drink. <laughs> <laughs> Um, by that guy. What a strange day. I'm wondering, like, what proportion <clears throat> of people will think I'm being serious and what proportion of people will think I'm memeing. Well, I mean, people after, got after legitimately that. angry with you for saying that you wouldn't tr uh, lick Trump's ass, so... <laughs> I, I picked an amazing time to come back into this girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I dropped out for a minute or so. <clears throat> um, it's all good. What a strange <laughs> all, day. All I got was licking Trump's ass, so uh, I'm fully involved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would, so, you, would you want to do that? Would well, you like ass? if he told me it was tremendous, and that was a very good person, <laughs> um, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be up for that. Yeah, oh, fair enough. I could be talked yeah. into it. So he, this... you know, Trump has made some great investments in Scotland. Um, none of them have paid off, but you know, he's done <laughs> it, and that, that's the important thing. You know, he tried. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah fuck, really you're is. both from Scotland. You guys should say hi. I'm not from Scotland. Yes, you are. Live there. Yeah, you've Scotland. got the taint of Aberdeen about you, I can sense <laughs> it. <laughs> and then we'd go to my friend's house and just play the shit out of Tomb Raider. And that was it. That was the 90s, man. I thought you man. hated women. What the fuck? Sausage Raider, right? You mean Sausage Raider? Oh, sausage you're... Raider, yeah. Oh, fuck. That's not fine, even yeah. Nude Raider. Sausage Raider. Yeah, I like Sausage Raider. Surely, game. Su surely Sausage Raider would be one who raids sausages. I hope that someone, like, Baelin, oh my god, you're in the chat. <laughs> Baelin, make Sausage Raider. I did a video recently talking about, like, the original Tomb Raider games versus, like, the shit that we have now, like the reboot trilogy. The latest was one like, was so fucking bad. It, it, it? it almost caused me to pass out with fucking boredom. Like, I, I mean, was that, just, like, I had to force myself to finish that game. And that, that's coming from someone that actually liked the uh, the first Tomb Raider reboot and Rise of the Tomb Raider. It was I didn't wasn't like, the, like the first one supposed to be good. The first reboot one. The first one was okay, um, even though nothing was really explained. Rise of the Tomb Raider was a big old bag of bullshit and chips, and then Shadow of the Tomb Raider was just boring as fuck, man. Like, I couldn't get into it at all. There was so little to do. It seemed like most of the game was just running around collecting shit on the map. There was only, like, two or three well, actual gunfights in the whole game. There was loads of stuff to do, but it was pointless. It was all fetch quests for NPCs that you don't give a shit about. I like that you know, Trinity just became, like, this weird tribal culture thing halfway through the game for some reason. Yeah. I mean, you could tell they had no idea what the hell to do with that. I mean, did you get to the end? Did you get to the final bow? Oh, where the guy turned into like some sun demon, and you had to like <laughs> shoot him a bunch yeah. of times, and then I had I had no fucking idea what I was doing. Yeah, I, I genuinely, I I never understood the plot at any point in the entire game. Like there was a flash flood at some point, and she felt really bad about that, and then yeah, Lara yeah, like, I, I, I was I. I am honestly sick of this fucking version of Lara where she's constantly apologizing for everything and she's just really sad about everything. It's like, oh, fucking hell. Like, you're, you're a Tomb Raider. You get to, like, travel the world and, like, raid these ancient tombs for, like, precious artifacts. That's fun as fuck. That's, like, ten times more fun than any of us will ever have in our day jobs. Like, it's... enjoy it. That's what like, the original it's... Lara Croft did. She actually had fun with what she did. It's crazy. If they had more time to make this game than they did with the last couple games, but it feels like so so much smaller. Yeah, like they don't. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. The maps are really boring. The enemies are really boring. How they didn't even really include like all the supernatural shit they tried doing in the first couple games. Well, you know how 
with with Tomb Raider, it used to be a real globe trotting kind of uh, saga. You'd go you go to lots of different locations all around the world, and now with this one, it's like you're set in a fucking specific place. Whether it's freezing your fucking arse off in Siberia, or you're in like you know Pi TT in in fucking Central America or whatever, and that's all you get is the same place throughout the whole game. It's boring because there's no variation. And you're stuck with these shitty fetch quests that make up 90% of the game. My investment in the third game just went out the fucking window when it turned out that the bad guys were like these weird tribal people that like cut their lips off and screamed at you really loud. And I don't then it turned out they, they were the good guys for some yeah, reason. They're, they're the good guys, but we don't really know why. And we're supposed to like, like them now because they join our side against Trinity at the... Fuck off! You know? There was a this glitch really early on in the game where they go to this village, and it looked like a pre-rendered cutscene, but I guess it wasn't because the chick that Lara and what's his fuck were talking to was like sitting through the table, like not on the other <laughs> side of the table. She was. I, I wish I had the video clip of it, but I don't. Have, um, I was originally planning on making a review of it, and then I just, yeah, I did really didn't want to play it some more to do that. But she was like through the table, clipping through the table, and it showed like a side shot of the three talking to each other. And I was just losing my shit the whole time. My criticism of it was like, okay, I get in the first one, she's, you know, scared and she she's out of her depth and she doesn't know what she's doing. Fine. That's that's her very first exposure to this. You get to the second one and she's still like that. And then you get to the third one and she's still fucking like that. She's never advanced as a character. She's never changed, and that's like the, the whole point. She's meant to like advance towards like being the Lara Croft that we remember from the original games. You know, this is her. This is her experience. This is what gets her to where she needs to be. There is like this part in the third game where she was like crying over like slaughtering a bunch of these people, and it's like it took you three games to get to this point. Yeah, like that should have happened in the first game, and then gotten over it in the second. The, the, that's what you do though yeah you do end up like killing probably dozens of people and you're apologizing for it the whole way it's the most like brilliantly ridiculous kind of combination of character elements that I've ever seen yeah so anyway you guys want to watch a video <laughs> no I want to run about fucking Tomb Raider some more <laughs> <laughs> Out of everything that Thor has been through, like witnessing this, the entire destruction of his home planet, witnessing his mother getting killed, witnessing his father dying in front of him, like, is this thing going to be the thing that puts him over the edge, that's going to turn him into a useless, drunken, panic attack laden asshole? I'm happy with it doing that. Really? Well, uh, the universe did so, just get nuked. Yeah. So. The thing is, uh, yeah, on no, a personal... I would be all right with that. Um, and, like, that's me. <laughs> like I, I could, so that's not you know, Thor. No, but like it's like he um he came in and he almost killed Thanos. Like he, he rammed him through the chest with his with his sword. Sorry, with his axe. Almost killed him, and his one and only thing was like, well, he didn't quite stop him from from flicking his hands and annihilating half the universe. No one else ever ca even came close. Thor almost did it. But he didn't quite make it, and that's going to be the thing that like drives him into like a pit of despair and uselessness. I mean, he failed to stop the end of the universe because yeah, I was he didn't say it. Him and quite, so did right? everyone. So did he everyone. Yeah, yeah, but, but he had he like that a, was because he yeah, wanted Tony to failed. Cap, Cap no, never Tony had failed. a chance in the first place. Neither did the most of the heroes. You could argue Thor that was Iron really Man the only hero that had a chance. Yeah, the group on Titan Marvel. technically kind of did, which is why it's on Peter that he fucked up, but that's another thing that doesn't really get addressed. Like Peter doesn't really have regrets for that because of the way that the structure works. But um Thor Thor feeling like uh Thanos is is a rough name to hear because of the fact that that man represents Thor's failure to save half of the universe. I think that there's something there. I think it's pretty tenuous. Like I, I feel like everyone is like equally culpable for this one. They all had a hand in this. They all had a chance to to try and stop well, Thanos. That's, I think that's addressed in the film, isn't it? Everybody feel they got the survivor's guilt thing. Everyone feels rough about having made it. Um and they couldn't stop him. 
I'm okay with this. Like, I, um, I get that my my issue was, is different, I guess, with the whole... When I saw him playing Fortnite and he was really fat, I was like, ooh, I'd rather take this seriously. Um, I hope they don't play this up for too many jokes, and then they just pile on the jokes. I was like, oh no. It was a joke for, like, the whole entire movie, and then... I really so care about Thor. It's, it's when he, yeah, it's when he gets to Asgard and he's having a fucking panic attack because he's got to speak to Jane. Yeah, I didn't like, really enjoy that. Thor is drowning in failure throughout all of Endgame, but there's no sacrifice or dramatic confrontation that pays off any of the self-pity that we see in this movie. He never has a moment that solidifies himself as a true hero, which is... So, well. I disagree. No, wait, wait. Literally every... Oh, shit. Um, yeah, like, he has his moment with Tony and, you know, like, they, they go up against Thanos again. Thor 1 and 2 are just magically terrible films. <laughs> And even though I don't like <laughs> magically Ragnarok, terrible, I, mean, I do not like that he just palms off Asgard to Valkyrie. Like, there's you need a yeah. whole movie for that. You can't just go Valkyrie's the new leader. Cool, I'm going with the Guardians. Like, really? Fucking, Valkyrie wasn't exactly very Tessa responsible Thompson person. Of all the people, like the, there was the, no fucking other character to give it to. Is the well, no, I know. The first time, <laughs> there's the first time we see her. She, like, falls off of her shit because she's drunk off her ass. It's like, is that really the kind of person you're eating? Yes! She did redeem, she did I, I approve of this! <laughs> you have a bias, you can't. <laughs> her, her whole arc in that movie, though, was that she was only like that because she was defeated by Hela, and then in the end she takes on Hela. Doesn't win anyway, but... Sh sh We're yeah, told. Yeah. Uh, she hasn't she... really earned that responsibility. We, we show no. Well, but yeah. they, they show her interacting and moving along with the village of people or whatever when we first see the new Asgard, and it's like, see, she's the person now. And it's like, eh, we need more than that. Not really, though. Yeah. Like, what have you what have you proven as well? You can organize a fucking fishing village off the east coast of Scotland. Like, I could probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm a total asshole. It would have been, I, I think it would have been better if they had, image. like, if they had a fucking just a completely new character who was there, like, oh, Thor, what should I do? And he's like, make your own decisions. And he's kind of like <laughs> a dick to him for the, for the time being. <laughs> and then at the end, it's like a real moment of, you've actually run this place pretty well, haven't you? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's meaningless, ultimately, because it's like, well, what are you in charge of? A village on the east coast of Scotland. It was Norway, wasn't it? Was it? I yes. don't remember. It I, is I actually it was... no, it is actually on the east coast of Scotland because I've fucking been to that village myself, and it's uh, it's a dump. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> There's no sacrifice or dramatic confrontation that pays off any of the self pity that we see in this movie. He never. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that though, because like, wouldn't does the fact that he fights alongside Earth's heroes against Thanos not count? Does there need to be a sacrifice? Well, that's, I'm kind of curious what this guy is after exactly. I think exactly. he needs to sacrifice his body fat. Don't we all? Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is he after, like, a specific a... moment with him versus Thanos where he does something specific outside of killing him, I'm guessing? I don't know if he... Is that what he wanted? But ultimately, the thing with Thor was always, like, you know, he tested his metal against Thanos and it wasn't enough. You know, he... <clears throat> he went through all this to forge a new um, axe and to get this weapon that was going to kill Thanos. And then he comes in at the last moment to save the day and it wasn't enough to stop him. And that, that, was, his, that was his arc. Like he, Everything he did up until that point just wasn't quite enough. But then that's not a sacrifice. That's just like a person testing themselves against their enemy and not being up to the challenge. Then he works with everybody to defeat him. And then they invent a time machine in the space of like two days. <laughs> yeah, you're a genius. What did he say? I think... Oh, what was, what was the scene? <laughs> when, when Thor suggests himself... The fact that like Thanos' entire like worldview just shifts completely based on the fact that like you know, five people are fighting against him. Oh, you mean like he wants to kill everything and restart? Yeah. In Infinity War, he was like, well, I, I, you know, I can get behind what he's saying. He's like, you know, life has become this this plague upon the universe. It's consuming all the resources. 
there's not enough to sustain it. Okay, fine. You want to you want to reduce it by half? Fine. But now it's like, you know, you guys have fought against me and I've completely changed my point of view and I'm going to destroy the entire universe right back to the last atom and I'm going to remake it in my image. That's fucking crap. Yeah, no, you, you've just I, like shifted his entire worldview based on this one I, thing. Honestly, when I first saw that cinema, I was like, "Oh, is this the filmmakers trying to tell us?" Like, no, he wasn't cra crazy all the time. It wasn't that he had like an altruistic view. It was just that he was kind of insane. It only looked slightly altruistic. No, it's because they run out of fucking ideas. Well, that's kind of what I'm he's... getting at. Is that they were like, "He's crazy, guys. He's crazy." And you're like, "Oh." I felt like he was still yeah, doing. It you have to hate him. I felt like he was still believed he was being altruistic. He was going to make a better universe that people would be happy in, but you would see it as taking all the bad out of the universe. That would be his his takeaway from that. But he, it's, but it's Thanos, Thanos in Infinity War character. wouldn't have done that. Thanos in yeah, Infinity no. War would have recognized that there was something inherent. A lot of people do argue that life. they're different characters, which is part of the problem, by the way, that they fight what is essentially a different Thanos, which feels wrong. Like you don't get your satisfaction. No, they, People that say that can get fucked, and I will, uh, I will <laughs> I have say to that. fight them right now. Do you not agree that they, so they are kind of different characters, and I'm saying that almost as criticism? No, they are fundamentally the same person. You know, okay, they come oh, from no, of slightly course. different parts in their, their personal history, but... Yeah, but they don't have the same, like, in, like, the same attachment to the characters as they did as from Infinity But all, all the things that, they, that made Thanos who he was in Infinity War he's still been exposed to in Endgame. But he all didn't kill Gamora like, or no, like, interact but with the like, Avengers the, at all. No, but the loss of his home planet, the, like, the understanding that like, you know, life has to be um, constrained to some extent, it, like from the basis of his home planet, his experiences, yep. all of that he's been through in Endgame. Well, yeah, I mean, his the only, the only difference, so... The only difference is, is killing Gamora. Well, that and That's meeting the other Avengers. And I have to highlight to you, that is pretty significant. He's he's already admitted he's like, this, like the one person he loves. It is, but he was going to do that regardless. No, he didn't know yeah, it was going to happen until he got to Vormir. But he would have been willing to do it no matter what. That's yeah, I mean, that, but I, I put it to you like he would, he would have, he would have understood that, like whether yeah, it's but that, that hasn't Thanos or present Thanos. character yet because he hasn't experienced it yet. I was going to say there's well, a no, lot of things. Hasn't experienced it, but like there's a lot it, of things. Not like, there's, there's a lot of things I'm willing to do, right, for the greater good, but I haven't done a lot of them. And if I was forced to do them, they probably would change me. Do you know, do you know what I mean by that? Like, there's a lot of things all of us might do. Uh, in really, really crazy situations, but they would change us. I'm trying to think of like, I'll just go with a simple one: bus full of children, bus full of uh, yeah, other yeah. children. You have to drop one of them. Yeah, that's going to no, change I, you. <laughs> no, I, I think like when you balance out everything Thanos has done on like a, a galactic scale, like as much as he's got a personal attachment to Gamora, that's not going to change his fundamental personality. He was who he was before he killed Gamora, to to who he was afterwards. Mm. I don't. I don't think he fundamentally changed from that moment. That decision that he had to make, he made it well before he was on Vormir. But I mean, look at the moments he had in Infinity War, killing, like when he throws her off the cliff. There's that shot that shows his reaction to doing it, like he's oh, shocked yeah, that yeah, even yeah. he did it. And then no, no, I don't. Of, I, no, um, I don't think it was shock. I think he was. He was genuinely regretful. I think he he knew it was going to happen. Sure. And I think he he was unhappy. Like he was sad. He was. Um, but you realize, yeah. like before knowing he had to do that, and after doing that, that changes you. Like he, I, he no. would, I, I agree completely that he would have still done it, but the fact that he hadn't done it in the end game timeline makes him different from the infinity war timeline i i don't i don't think it changed him i think it, it's a symptom of who he was i think he uh, he, he whatever version of thanos you want to come up with he always recognized that i have to sacrifice things that are important to me on a personal level in order to serve as the greater good uh, i agree um and it, it's always it's always like no matter who it is did seem to be something something of a surprise to him like when he's when he talks to Gamora in the in the soul stone or whatever the hell it is when she says what did it cost and he says everything like he didn't necessarily I never took, 
I just, never took it as surprise. I took it as inevitability. I don't know. I just got the impression I that it, he. I, uh, I agree with that. I I took it as like I I kind of knew this was always going to come. Maybe that, but and maybe that he was wasn't hard, expecting. It was a hard fucking price that I had to pay. Yeah, but I was willing to do it because it serviced the greater good. It was serviced my my ultimate goal. And I agree. I'm that saying was, like that was the thing how that it made felt Thanos for him. Such an interesting character was that he was willing to pay that personal price. He was willing to do that thing in order to to ultimately better everyone in his mind. But that's what took him from being a really interesting, morally ambiguous character in in, in sorry in Infinity War to kind of a simplistic character in Endgame, where he was like, you guys have resisted me. I don't care about anything you know, anymore. I'm just... Yeah, I'm willing to like um, pair, I'm gonna destroy the entire universe, basically. What I'm saying about that that Gamora scene is just that uh, he always knew he was gonna do it. He just didn't exactly know how it was gonna feel. Um, yeah, I mean, you you think of like a family member dying, and it's like you're trying to prepare yourself for the moment, but it doesn't really prepare you in full. Like the impact doesn't hit you until the event happens. That would be right for us. We w we would experience that. But well, why I wouldn't it be different for Thanos though? Because I think for Thanos, he balances things on a bigger scale. He understands the bigger picture. I thought that was the point, we though, that we wouldn't. even Thanos uh, couldn't prepare himself for what it was going to be like to do what he did. Like, even he felt... No, I, I, I think he knew what he had to do. I think he knew what it was going to cost. He paid that price willingly, but he didn't do it gladly. Yeah, no, you know, I'm not saying that, that he would have undone it uh, in any way, shape, or form, but I think that it's tough for him to live with it, and that's all. But this isn't uh, me trying to say, therefore, it makes sense that he is who he is in Endgame. I still think who he is in Endgame is too far away from who he is in Infinity War. Hmm. He's a bit too... He's almost one-dimensional in, in, in Endgame, which is a shame. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I think that's that's mainly what we were, we were discussing, because this is the thing. I think all four of us probably agree. Thanos is pretty awesome in Infinity War. As a yeah. character, and hundred percent in Endgame, it's a little bit like, oh yes, he's back, and then you're like, oh, it's not really Thanos though. It's this other, it's this other dude. Yeah, it's a simplified version of Thanos's beliefs, and it almost Plus, feels like they did it to make it easier for us to just see him get deleted. You know? Yeah, I think the movie finished it very well, though. Oh yeah, you, know, you get to see, you get to see him. He's a he's a kind of fulfilled man. He's done his thing that he intended to do all this time. And he's at peace with himself. He's at peace with the world that he's created, mm. and he he understands all the things that he's done. Yeah, which is you really know, satisfying it's not, to watch. It's not perfect, but like it it for for a villain in a superhero movie, fucking hell, that was a yeah. brilliant piece of writing. Yeah. I almost feel sorry for him when he's just peacefully making breakfast and then yeah, chokes <laughs> <laughs> him it's out a, and then it, cut off his know, arm. It, it's a meat fee breakfast as well. Like he, he, you know, there's no, uh, there's no. He's a beef vegan. Or anything he's a in vegan. there. Yeah, he's That's a vegan. Well, from, from his perspective, that would, that would just be the like the ultimate the ultimate fucking kick in the balls. He's like, they're not, they're not appreciating it. Yeah, I was like, I've I've helped you guys out. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, anyway. Should have snapped it a good two or three times to make sure the Avengers were all dead first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he should have just snapped he, to kill them promised, specifically. He promised to spare Iron Man, and he did. Anyway, I feel bad for this person's video. Let's go back to <laughs> it's been All right, like, yeah, shit, it. Sorry, there's a video here. Yes. But after the fact, didn't redeem this. Literally every other core Avenger has a moment like that. Hawkeye volunteers to be the one to test the dangerous time travel. Black Widow sacrifices herself for the Soul Stone. Hulk wields ooh. the gauntlet and brings everybody back. What was the ooh? Oh. The footage? Just the, the, the way they, they showed uh, Black Widow sacrificing herself. That's that's not the way I would want to picture it. Yeah, we we talked about it on Eva. We, we we weren't happy. Sorry, with... it, it, it's it's still too it's still too raw. I don't I, I, I just don't like that it's I can't a, hold like, up the emotions. Shot for shot, like a redo of Gamora's. They death. even use the exact same soundtrack. But it's obviously <laughs> intentional. I just so don't think it was a good idea. They shouldn't all. have done it. I would what even have you, settled you, for what... like. Hawkeye's reaction and alone, because we know exactly what's just happened to Black Widow, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah like, what, what do you actually think about that, that whole encounter? Her well, it was like... death, you mean, or...? 
Yeah, like her, her kind of sacrificing herself over Hawkeye, like the fact that they battled over it, like who was going to be the one that uh, gave themselves up ultimately. Like well, they were showing like... the difference between the heroes and the villains because the, the villain, like Thanos is there and he's like, okay, you're going to have to die for this. And the heroes are there going, no, it should be me. No, it should be me. That's like, I'm pretty sure they were showing, yeah, that was a very clear message there. This is what makes you the hero is being willing to sacrifice yourself and making you the villain is sacrificing well, I, others. I... I think this is what made it interesting. It's like they were both willing to sacrifice themselves to in equal measure. Like Hawkeye kind of felt like he had nothing left to live for. Black Widow, like she never had any family. She never had anything that she was trying to, she didn't have anything that she was trying to recoup, if it were. Mm -hmm. So they were both fighting each other for like that, that right to give up themselves up. And I think it, it it played out very well on screen. Like I personally like didn't know who was going to be the one that ultimately gave themselves up. Well, I think Hawkeye did have like he did say like tell my family I love them. Like he did. Yeah, he he had something back. Yeah, he had something, but like they didn't make too much of it. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. I feel, who I feel sorry for is um, when Red Skull is like. Oh, he, Daughter of Ivan, fucking son of no, daughter of Thanos. I always feel sorry for the parent that doesn't get mentioned in that. Like, why? Why are they the oh. main parent? <laughs> He's like, then I have two parents. He's like, no. One of them is more important. <laughs> when he suits up and gets the double hammer shit, I was like, oh, oh here we go. <laughs> and yeah. you might be like, that's not a hero moment. I'd be like, I don't know. No, that that that's a fucking. <laughs> Hero moment. If to me, it's like a comeback, one. you know. It's like Thor is fucking here, guys. Du dual wielding Mjolnir and fucking Stormbreaker at the same time. That is beautiful. And he's got beard braids. The beard looks awesome. He looks fucking awesome when he does that. If only the but lightning it... shaved off like sixty percent of his body weight, <laughs> along with giving his beard braids. Totally, it worked that way. <laughs> it had a lot less impact since Thor's failures at that point in the story were much less massive. And because it happens while cutting massive, back and forth massive, an massive. battle, meaning the pacing didn't allow for the same impact where his near sacrifice could really sink in. Giving Thor one of these moments is a suspiciously in large the budget. At the very least, a verbal <laughs> confrontation with Thanos where he affirms that he's not afraid of Thanos despite his failure would have been all I needed. All he says is, let's kill him properly this time. Yeah, okay, great, but. This confrontation with the only guy you ever failed to defeat should have way more weight. But isn't that directly well, correlating what, what then? The... Let's yeah, kill him properly this wants. time he versus should, let's not. Have more weight. <laughs> he he did have was a pretty weight. heavy moment. He had significantly like, more weight. Yeah, like for anyone who watched the previous movie, it's got all the fucking weight you need. <laughs> him saying let's kill him properly this time makes you flash immediately back to the fact that he didn't hit his head off the first time around. I know Thanos almost sliced Thor open with his own axe at one point, but there was no interplay between those characters. I think that would have been a great opportunity for a small back and forth that bit, but there. Thanos to say something and Thor says something back that's indicative of their characters. It's not the same I think Thanos, it's, uh, which is really you've got, you've that's, that's the got problem. problem. That's the problem is that they're not the same fucking people. Thor is like, you took everything. I was like, no way, you can't say that because that's what Scarlet Witch says. So he says, uh, you destroy it. No, uh, you. Hmm. And I'm like, he says something, and then Thanos is like, I don't even know who you are, I fucking can't say that, because he says that to Scarlet Witch. <laughs> this is the problem about making Thanos a person who doesn't recognize any of these people, like... Give me one weekend and a whole bucket of cocaine, and I will <laughs> sort it for you. And I would watch the shit out of it. <laughs> Why didn't he get any sort of dramatic beat or sacrifice play during the final battle? He's one of the core Avengers in their final- Dramatic beat or sacrifice play? I think he had dramatic beats. I guess he didn't have a sacrifice play. No. Dramatic beat, all the way. Does he, he need to have a sacrifice play, sacrifice. though? Unearned, unearned what, dramatic beat. What else does he have left to sacrifice? I was referring to his depression and fear being played for laughs. These jokes aren't quite the same thing. Just ch change the change the bit you recorded. Yeah, so that's, just, that's when you go back and I was going to say, that's a significant thing. It. Like, you want to fix that. <laughs> okay. Like, you realize a lot of people just, like, play a video game and, like, playing in the background, which is what I'm doing right now, and fucking Waluigi's a piece of shit and keeps <laughs> knocking me off my fucking bike. Wolf, you son of a bitch! Waluigi. I want Waluigi. you to give this to your 100% attention. Yeah, Wolf, you worthless piece of hey, shit. Hey, I'm giving it, like, 
thirty percent of my attention, and that's perfectly fine. No, I want at least sixty percent. You son of a bitch. Okay, I'll bump it up to sixty percent. I'll go on the easier maps and bump it up to sixty. There you go. Good. Scene and your Lebowski jokes and cheese whiz and so on and so forth. He also seems really easy to encourage. Don't to bring Farquaad like, into this. Yeah, I actually think it's lame that they get him to come back into the fight by saying there's beer on their ship. I was like, okay. Seems like that was a missed opportunity for something there, but okay. He joins the time travel mission because beer. I was just sitting through it thinking, like, yeah, there's so many people in my family that have died um, from alcohol abuse that I, I wish I got a chance to catch up with. The, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, <laughs> that plus just the, the message itself, like I said, the who people tell you to be versus who you want to be. And you might be like, well, does that apply to Thor? I'd be like, I'm not necessarily uh, talking about that right now. Just, just I think it's a good message in general. Um, maybe it is clunkily delivered. I'd have to really uh, go over it. I think it applies to Thor, because I don't think Thor only had one direction to go with his development. Shad, um, I've got a question for you, actually. Have you defeated Sador of the Malmori? Oh, gee, a lot of, a lot of things to address, but it's awesome <laughs> to be on a screen with you, Wolf. <laughs> Good to meet you. And Sador? Who, who, what? <laughs> Have you not seen Battle Beyond the Stars? Jesus fucking Christ. Get out of here. Anyway, what's happening, fellas? Uh, <laughs> the stream? What, are, what are things to say? Well, Shut yeah, up. Endgame is a very divisive subject. A lot of people feel that different characters were either ruined or celebrated and changed to the worst or the better. What's your take How on dare, Thor? Go for it. How dare anyone, anyone say anything negative about Endgame? I am <laughs> no. Not well, allowed. We we're already there, man, so, uh, yeah. Not on my Christian like... stream. Captain Marvel is... was in it, which means it's okay to not like it. This is your chance, <laughs> Chad. <laughs> this is your chance to, like, lay on us and tell us why it's so good. Ah, lots of reasons. It's a, compl it's a complicated subject. Oh, you know why? You know why it's the greatest movie in the world? No. Well, simple re right. Captain Marvel gets KO'd. True. <laughs> that is yeah, true. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> Like, I, oh, when she came in fighting Thanos, I was so worried she was going to hijack it, right? Mm. Like, this was my biggest worry, and I was like, no, don't you do this. And then she gets Infinity Stone punched to the face, and I was like, thank goodness. <laughs> oh. I think so we were all happy like about that, that. Yeah. Do you feel that was the biggest moment of suspense in the whole movie? Yeah. Are they actually going to do this? How ironic is that? The most suspense moment in the whole film was, oh god, Thanos, is he going to be okay? Thanos, please. Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> I was Wait, really on his guy. face. Is I'm it surprised audience? this one. If you ever needed more proof that Captain Marvel is the true villain, <laughs> we're like, don't let him win. <laughs> I was personally hoping that the Don was going to come in and like, yes. blow her head with off. A, with a fucking Infinity Stone right in his hand. <laughs> Punch was the justice for the Don. He is an Infinity Stone incarnate. Mm -hmm. What is the, the stone of? Ooh, good question. The Do you stone... Think all the, the infinity stones of life. just the essence of the dawn put together because uh, one human being cannot possess that much greatness so he had to distribute it in all these stones i think that makes sense yes oh of course i should have how rude of me shad this is jay with the the icon that has the pink background and the critical drinker the guy who's drinking critically hey fellas yeah. good to meet you hey man i hey, love man. your videos especially <laughs> when you talk about titiyama hey man <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, pa to, I'm gonna to pass out thing. soon, so uh, yeah, make it quick. <laughs> yeah, I've been drinking a lot by now too. I'm with you, buddy. I just what woke up. On, wait, like, Mauler, what are you on tonight? Are you on rum or? Uh, yeah, it's rum and uh, coke. Uh, it's gotta be coke. Yeah, everyone's mm. running coke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we haven't even okay, gotten to the sorry. Star Wars arguments yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly I have to see the Star Wars arguments before I like vomit. So <laughs> well, the Star Wars arguments are gonna make you vomit, I assume. <laughs>
Well, just on what you were saying about the Hulk um, uh, right before I came on, right? Uh, what you were saying, Mola, is I think spot on, right? The, the most significant thing that's happened to these two characters, it's the dynamic between the Hulk and, of course, Bruce Banner, and uh, it's the conflict. And up to every point <laughs> that we've seen on screen, the Hulk has been more powerful than Bruce Banner. If, if, he, if he gets angry or anything like that, the Hulk takes control. And then suddenly the Hulk isn't coming out when he wants to, and Bruce is fighting, is actively fighting to get the Hulk to come out. And then obviously something happened off screen where we didn't even see where Bruce Banner finally overcomes the Hulk, wins it, and, and he actually gains control. That is like the most significant thing that's happened to his character ever, and we don't see it. Like how that guy was saying Thor only came because of beer. It's like, no, he obviously wants, it's, wants a chance, a second chance, but he's battling against his own kind of lethargicness that has built up over five years, but that's still there. And so in my mind, I was kind of seeing that scene that he really wants to go and is just looking for any excuse to overcome himself. And the beer thing was just that excuse. He, he wanted to go from the get, like, you know, all the way, if that makes sense. He was, he was waiting for some tertiary, silly reason yeah, to like go. Just, when he... just an excuse, like, because it obviously has been eating him up. And he hasn't given up, um, even though he's just being blasé about everything. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's that's kind of just how I saw it. Do you want to jump into responding this video with us, or do you want to? What do you want to do? Yeah, well, let's let's do this thing. If he's going to try and defend <laughs> the Last Jedi, <laughs> him fighting words as well. If you follow that link, it'll take you to uh, watch together we did before. Nice. But uh, this people time, people defending the Last Jedi is a rallying people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All the nerds come out of the woodwork. What did you say? <laughs> Bada boom, he's back to his old self. For how realistically his grief was set up, it's resolved really quickly and without any real weight. He said something really, really flippantly there that he's just taken for granted. He's saying what Thor's grief was resolved? Like, I didn't get that impression. I feel he has a lot of crap to work through still. Yeah, like... that's, that was actually something I said earlier. I was like, I'm, I'm assuming we're not done with Thor by a long shot. But I could be wrong. They might ignore you know we never know because it's passing through different writers we don't know what they're doing but uh i would hope that they deal with well, Thor later we can hope we we can hope like like the little, you know captain marvel disappearing but um so uh, that yeah i like that point because uh now i've forgotten i just woke <laughs> up fellas <laughs> what did you say more <laughs> If you've got a point to make, then make it. Otherwise, yeah. oh, oh, that's right. That episode. he gave up. Yeah, he gave up on lead leadership completely. Um, at the end of um, Endgame, and then he was just trying to, you know, go on a, a trip to to find himself and stuff. Hmm. That is uh, an interesting kind of character development thing because it's always been about leadership, and he if, wanted it, it. By 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 interesting, do you mean uh, fucking bullshit? Yeah, so because... you didn't like that. <laughs> No, uh, and, and I'll tell you why. We've got three movies of him like learning all of the skills and all of the lessons, the moral lessons that he needs to be the leader. You know, like mm -hmm. um, he he learns humility. He learns what it means to lose loved ones and stuff, and uh, and be alone. Um, and ultimately, that's what you need to become leader. You need to be self sufficient. You need to um, put uh, your own personal needs and wants aside. And you get that, and then uh, there suddenly he's like, "No, um, no, I, I'm not ready to be leader of Asgard. I'm gonna like defer it to Valkyrie, and I'm gonna go and do something else." That just seems nonsense to me. But has he it's... learned true failure yet? That's irrelevant. Like, <laughs> he... I don't know. Wait, wait, when you learn responsibility, failure is potentially an aspect of that. But you, you can't then just take all of that and say, well, he's not ready for being leader yet. We'll, we'll reset the, the tape on this one. And he has to go back, right back to the beginning and start again. Do you, do you feel like that, him, him at the end of Endgame is something we've seen before? Yes. Wait, what would you pinpoint as an example of what we've seen? Where we've uh, seen Thor at the end of Thor 1. Thor at the end of Thor 2. Thor at the end of Thor Ragnarok. You think he's the same but he's situation? ready for being a leader he, in those. He's a man who's learned fundamental truths. Oh, come like, on. You could say that about every hero in every movie. No, but, like, it's particular to Thor, though. 
you know, every every Thor movie has had some aspect of him that's important, and it's so, like taken something away from him. It taught him something, and at the end of it, he's come out stronger. I th so whether or not I consider what they've done in Endgame to Thor to be an overall piece of stronger writing will literally be dependent on how they take it forward. Um, because if we, they were to do that thing that we potentially suggest, like right now. What I like about it is he's free of Asgard and the idea of being a ruler. He's just a dude with uh, the collection of the Guardians. That frees him up for a lot of things. It just depends on what they do with it. For example, um, I hate Iron Man 3. And I was like, Iron Man's I characters... I pretend that movie doesn't exist. They almost destroyed uh, Iron Man. And then Civil oh, War... so dumb! Civil War and, and Age of Ultron working together. Like, Age of Ultron's not even that great, but uh, Civil War combines the events in a broad sense of Iron Man 3 and Age of Ultron to create this brand new amazing arc that makes me fall in love with Iron Man again. Uh, could they do that with what's happened with Thor in Endgame? I think it's possible, I just think it's unlikely. By the way, if you, you guys can hear my kids in the background, I apologize that they're just playing Minecraft. That's all right. <laughs> I've seen a few people call him Shad Spawn in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my my advice is, like, get yourself a big old uh, baseball bat or something and just go at it. <laughs> I, no, I, just give him, I just give him swords and say, good luck. Good luck, yeah. <laughs> yeah good you luck. know that. The one that's alive at the end will be my true heir. Yeah. <laughs> I must be fun yeah. having kids with, with swords in the house, actually. That's not... Adlets. <laughs> you have to, like, you have to, like, keep a sword room that they can't go in. I keep them in their room. I'm joking, I don't. But but you, you, they have to they have to learn how to you know how, how to use swords from a young age. They're shadlings, shed seal doers, air. <laughs> shed seal do doers. I can't do it, man. Honestly. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Thor to be to be continued. Possibly we have to see yeah, how they take it. Let's say it. Like, go go. I came to an unfortunate realization. Thor in this movie is just a less developed, worse version of Luke in Last ah! Jedi. <laughs> Everybody, Ooh. brace yourselves. Everybody just like that. <laughs> it's time for the, the, the sea cow titty milk. Here we go. Brace oh, yourselves, yes, gentlemen. Really. Two legendary heroes broken by failures that left their worlds in ruins. Okay. Already, the, already, already the I, that Luke went through is like, I'm sorry, what he did, what now? Like, why? What? <laughs> Luke's failure, quote unquote, <sighs> amounts to he. I decided to kill someone. Oh, he no. yeah, threatened not, a uh, child for, when they were sleeping because he saw a potential premonition of them being evil in the future, and then abandoned everybody for some reason. Uh, That's such a I false equivalence. Don't, <laughs> like, I don't, how is that comparable to it. Thor in any way, shape, or form? Thor loses most of his people, his brother, he, he fa and he f blames himself for, you know, uh, half the life in the universe dying. And Luke decides to kill his nephew because he's getting bad dreams. <laughs> like, oh, is this the same thing? No, no, no. Maybe. He, he, I mean, he kills like, his like, nephew like... because there's a possibility he might become bad. <laughs> he might be <laughs> evil. <laughs> Well, let's well, give that some benefit of the doubt. Can... Maybe, maybe there's just a scene out there where Thor was standing over like some child <laughs> with his axe, and he was like, "I'm gonna cut this fucking thing's head off." And then... He went up to baby God. Thanos in his crib, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I'm gonna kill you." Buddy. We just for we were just never shown that scene, and that's that's his whole arc. I'm just saying, like that that decision Luke makes is more similar to something Thanos would do. <laughs> Killing, yeah. killing for the greater good, that's got Thanos Not to mention, over. have you heard yeah, people talk nice about how, um, perfectly balanced. Luke wasn't <laughs> exactly wrong, because Kylo, not minutes after that experience, decides to murder a bunch of students. Like, mo the majority of them. But did we- did, Could it be argued? Wait, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Did we ever get this, like, f definitively sorted out in our heads? Was it Kylo, or was it Luke? What, that the killed the students? Yeah, I, I want it to be Luke. <laughs> well, Luke. <laughs> Why would it be Luke, Luke after trying to kill Kylo was like, you yeah, know, no witnesses. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, Luke like, was trying Luke, to frame Kylo this whole time. Luke was like, you know, I I need to kill Kylo, and he was such a fucking useless pussy that he couldn't even do that. I was like, I just want him to do something. Like he he succeeded at something. They retreat to some place close to the sea and drink their problems away.
Then later, yes. they become heroes yet again. But the main difference, aside from the fact that Luke, Luke didn't become most... a hero at Luke the end, yeah, he a hero. Kind of a coward oh, by yes. not showing up. Yeah, Luke, Luke did it over Luke Skype. For, I don't think that Luke counts. Force projected it like an image of him onto this battlefield that he had no involvement in, and he had no understanding of what even was going fucking on. He doesn't then, even successfully like teach her anything. Then, <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he teaches her fuck all. Like, if you get old, you just you just lose all hope and everything. And you know, I can I can identify with that because so, uh, someone said he did successfully catch a fish, though. Look, yeah, and he successfully uh, pole vaulted a crevice. He successfully yeah, intellectually right. molested an alien. Um, <laughs> he, he he successfully pole vaulted that that crevice to like spear a fish that he could have just speared from where he fucking was to begin with. <laughs> How do you get it? How does why, he lift up you... the pole? Does he lift it all the way up? Or does he go down that, there and collect it? Wait, where realize... did he where did he make the pole on an island that's got no <laughs> fucking trees on it? It, but he brought it with him on his X-Wing. <laughs> you have to remember also, he pole vaulted across the side, caught the fish, meaning he had to pull up the fish and then put the pole back down, carry the fish, and pole vault with the fish under one arm across to the other side. Writing stories that are unique and interesting and, and, and um, powerful are, is hard enough by itself. But if you try to do it when you're bending your story around all the different rules of, like, social justice or or identity politics or whatever it might be it becomes nigh on impossible to tell a good story and that's what we end up with with this you have you've ended up with a story where you're bending it around so many different rules that you can't tell a good story because you've you've lost everything that's that's interesting about what these characters are meant to be. I mean, talk about, like, we go on tangents with fucking the Marvel series. This video is going to take forever for us to get through because TLJ, oof, that's some... We got some we, everyone here it's has takes on that. It's been a long <laughs> ass time since we last covered a TLJ video. It's true, it's true. I, I, I apologize because... No, it's all good, man. I know. This is, I, this I, is I, fresh. This is some Rant shit. away, buddy. It gives me a chance to eat my pizza and not have to say anything. <laughs> yeah, oh, you got just... pizza? No, I yeah. ate it already. Yeah, this is why I, I, I think I talked to you about this, Mola. Like, <laughs> oh, sorry, there's the, there's a freaky there's a freaky sounding child in the background there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vader, you look like a big black dildo. <laughs> yeah, That's you don't get any of <laughs> yeah, exactly. The main difference, aside from the fact that Luke is mostly treated with dignity, <laughs> mostly, is the fuck off. <laughs> Get <laughs> fucked. What? You know? No, they no, did no, a no, big no. steaming turd on his character. Treated with dignity, mostly. What do you mean? Fucking it wasn't even Luke. With dignity. Bull fucking shit, my son. <laughs> No, um, fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack on my next bottle of Jack Daniels for that one. Like, <laughs> fuck it. I'm gonna bullshit I'm, right now. I'm just gonna go get a burger. <laughs> <laughs> the I'll American way to get minutes. drunk is eat a burger. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, like, uh, let me ask you a serious question, gentlemen. When you think about like Luke and um, and Ray coming into conflict for no apparent reason, and um, Ray beats the shit out of Luke. What purpose do you think that serves within the overall narrative? What do you think that informs us about their characters? I think, what, I think the intention of that was to establish Ray as being competent and capable, uh, but it just came off with being disrespectful to Luke's character, undermining his strength and progression as okay. a Jedi and stuff like that. But I think that was their intention. I think all the, uh, you know success and uh the feats that ray is performing i think that is all to just try and establish that she is a strong independent character kind of thing uh, but okay. it failed no, because... that's, that's that's exactly right now mm. thinking about <laughs> that character in the second movie in a trilogy is that where you think you want her to be do you want her to be established as a strong, independent character that can do anything she wants and can take on any adversary and can uh, overcome any challenge? Do you See, think no, that's like, the, like, do you yeah. think that's where she should be in this stage of her character development? I don't know. I'm not sure there's a definitive thing to say that she should be somewhere specific because yes, so many there stories is. I'm going to tell you where it ways. should be. Where she is in her current character development, she needs to set back. A major setback. 
She needs to come yeah. up against the antagonist and realize that she is not up to the challenge. She needed to fail in some way. Do you know that she's done with Star Wars something. episode nine? Meaning that she's going to have a big win in episode nine, probably, and then what? That, that means she you dies. Say? <laughs> It's, imagine the, if they did that. If she got killed, she was like she fought against some big bad and died, and the rest of the heroes have to deal with whatever happens next. I'd be like, wow, good job. That see, no, no, no. no. she's gonna die to sacrifice. No. She's gonna sacrifice herself to save the entire galaxy, uh, and then she's gonna have a massive funeral, and statues gonna be built of her. Uh, see, yeah, they that, literally that, chisel. That they chisel a Ray you, statue you, out of a you, previous statue that had Han, Leia, and Luke in it. This is why I say it like it absolutely kills your ability to tell a story because you're not willing to put your characters through what they need to go through. And you're not willing to do it with Ray. And so she doesn't go through the hero's journey. She doesn't learn anything. She doesn't grow. She doesn't change. She doesn't develop. She just stays the same fucking boring, virtuous character that she was always been. And then you end up with a boring character that no one buys into because she never gets tested. This is my fundamental problem with everything that's going on with Star Wars at the moment. Yeah, Ray's worthless. Got nothing going on for you. As someone who write, uh, as someone who fucking writes books for a living, I can say to you, this is fucking killing the storytelling ability of Star Wars. It's the it's the absolute worst thing you can possibly do to the 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 universe. What does she have invested in the conflict? Like, what are her personal stakes? Yeah. Why does Luke she do good? Absolutely exactly. fucking nothing. She, yeah, doesn't like, care, <laughs> she doesn't care about Han. She doesn't care about Luke because she never bonded with him. She doesn't care particularly about Finn because she did not spend any time with him. There's nothing to draw her into this. But everyone loves her. Everyone respects her. Everyone believes in her for no reason. Well, this is why it would have been more satisfying if she actually turned to the dark side in The Last Jedi, because there's no real anchor point for her conflict with the dark side and the bad guys and stuff. I mean, Luke, he lost his parents, and then he sees, you know, his secondary father figure, Ben, die in front of him as well, and then he finds out the big bad and guy is his real father. And he did like, establish, he wanted to this release, he say, wanted to fight with the rebels already as well. He did establish that he exactly. wanted to fight against this, the Empire. She doesn't even have that. She doesn't even have that. This this is why I said, like, the, the fight in Return of the Jedi between Vader and Luke is the best fucking confrontation you can possibly ask for in all of cinema. All of these things that people, no matter where you are, no matter where you come from, you can identify with. You can't get any of that from what we have now. Because there's none of it. It's not universal. It's not it's not uh, it's not something we can buy into. So what you're saying is that you don't like that Ray is a woman. <laughs> He's not <laughs> I was about to say. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Um, You're that's clearly exactly, a misogynist. That's exactly what I'm saying, yeah. Um, you, know, you know something that I wish, like, you know, there's there are a lot of ways that you could try and fix The Last Jedi, and some, like, some of the problems are too hard to fix. Give, give, but, me, give me one fucking weekend I could fix it for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> if Snoke brought in, like, say, Finn and Poe, and uh, who was the Asian chick? Um, Rose. Uh, Rose. Rose and everything like that. Bring them in, and then one at a time, slowly kills them. Their sacrifice in the in terms of the plot could have had real emotional weight for par character progression. This is one of those situations where killing off a character serves the could have served the plot so well and established Snoke as this vicious, you know, guy that because then it also makes you real think, oh, holy crap. Who's he going to kill next? All of the characters that you love, that you care about, theoretically anyway, <laughs> that, you, that, you, that you want to see survive, they start getting murdered by this well... motherfucker, like this this evil character. I would have been happy to see Finn die. Um, <laughs> that's so, that statement out of context. You know what that means? <laughs> so happy. You know what that means? <laughs> You're clearly a... <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like black people I see. <laughs> no he he had a good character arc and i think he i disagree good... <laughs> he learns that's, that there are bad guys on both sides and that forces him to realize he's on the good guys team it makes no sense at all 
that's that's the character arc that I want him to have. All right, it's not necessarily I'll give you the character arc that he gets, but that's that's what he should have because that's where he starts from. He starts from the position of, you know, he's a stormtrooper. He's like this mindless killing machine. He learns to like um, think for himself. He learns to like uh, help other people, and he learns that. Um, you know, Don't you think that he's goofy he is a complete insult to his upbringing? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, why he didn't want to be a stormtrooper anymore. He was just... Well, this I'm okay with that. Support. I'm okay with not wanting to be a stormtrooper, but you don't grow up as a stormtrooper that's been fucking internalized that you're a warmongering machine in one man that also happens to fall over and go, Whoa, oh, oh god, oh, this is so funny. Ooh. We, you're just like, no, no. You, you know, it would have been good if we got just a little bit of explanation. Like, he wasn't indoctrinated from birth or whatever. He was a conscript from, like, being a young teenager or something like that, and it's like, okay, he got put into the stormtroopers. He didn't want to do it, um, but ultimately, that's what he got put into, and then he rebelled against it. Fine, mm -hmm. you know, you've got you got a little bit of context there. Like he he was right from the beginning. He was um, forced against his will to be doing this thing. Fine, but as it stands, like you don't you don't get much. And then you've got Admiral Holdo, who essentially has exactly the same opinions as Leia put into the story, and then she ends up sacrificing herself and killing herself to, to, to further that goal. Does it not make sense that that should have been Leia originally? I think it would have. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense that autopilot doesn't exist in Star Wars. Um, no, no, it doesn't at all. But then Ryan Johnson's a fucking retard, and we just have to accept that. <laughs> Should we? I was going no, to say, by the way, there. you're right. It's like they they needed someone who basically had the same reactions as Leia, but someone that they could sacrifice because they decided not to kill Leia in that movie for some strange reason. Exactly. Um, I, I honestly think the first the first draft that Ryan Johnson submitted, Leia was got the one killed he used. in it. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Leia got killed in it, and then some some hero. Within fucking Lucasfilm said, uh, Ryan, I don't think that's a good fucking idea. I think well, you should. That's the uh... one thing they picked out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I would love to think that they picked other things out, but they clearly didn't. No, like, what you're kill, you're version. killing off Luke and you're killing off Leia in one fucking script. You can't do that. See, I don't know, because it falls into their playbook of trying to subvert everyone's expectations. Everyone was expecting Leia to die, and so I think. Old Johnson's like, well, I won't kill her then because that's what you think, and uh, and wasn't, so that might have been a first draft thing. Wasn't everyone only expecting her to die because she died in real life? Though? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, She yeah. should have just died. <laughs> yeah, I think it would have been. Uh, imagine uh, how uh, imagine how powerful it would have been if she was the one who piloted that ship straight into the the. Oh God, uh, we're still at the, this the, point. The, we literally okay. So from I was hoping that we would have made it further in. from this guy saying Luke wasn't like humiliated, we've just been ripping into TLJ. Like that's all this has been. We've just been fucking Sorry, ripping man. into it. Uh, let, I don't. Let, I've let been me, doing it too. Let me bring you up to speed, right? But like, let okay. me get your take on this, right? Uh -huh. How it. good would it have been if um, Leia had been the one who piloted that ship straight into the 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 fucking bridge of the enemy? Um, flagship, rather oh, yeah. than Admiral Holdo. That's how still, much more. How much more powerful? Anyway, I know it wouldn't have fixed anything, but like, would it have been more meaningful from a dramatic point of view? I think it would have been better if it was Akbar. Honestly, it should have been Akbar. Holy shit! Now we got a full Akbar. house. All been, right, now we can Akbar. kick Jay finally. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling all while I was gone. I was telling this bitch. Listen, it should have been Akbar the whole goddamn time. What did she say? Oh, he's only a meme. He wasn't really in it that much. He didn't have much impact on the narrative. He wasn't yeah, I a know. meme. I, he was my I, favorite I, I, I character. Will, I will ask you this, like, from a serious point of view. Like, would would Akbar have made any sense from a dramatic point of view? Yes. Why? Okay, Wait. look, Holder's completely fucking invented. So the idea that you have to go, oh, we can't just add meaning onto Akbar. He's just a meme of a character. He's only had five minutes of screen time. It's like she is five minutes more than fucking Admiral Pink here. Like, why? Why is it that people are like, oh, it makes more sense for Admiral Holder? It's like she was invented for this film. No. Why could we give some development to Akbar and then give him this line? He's an existing character See, for fuck's point. sake. So this a, is my thing. I, like, yeah. I, I think Leia would have had much more meaning. 
Maybe, you maybe. I'm just or... saying not Holdo. What the fuck is Holdo? No, 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 no. Holdo is, like, that's my whole point. Leia should have been Holdo throughout the whole story. But then well, what she'd if, have to what have, have they, her dialogue. You could actually have, have both. all those type things. You could have had both. You could have had um, mm. uh, the, any time that was devoted to Holdo given to Akbar to re-establish him as someone with depth. But the other thing about Akbar is people still liked him because of the meme. He was a, an, it, people just liked Akbar. It's a trap, right? And and even if they didn't devote anything to him, just because he was a liked character, seeing him die still would have had a more emotional weight. And then they could have had, um, oh, what's the moody bad guy again? <laughs> Kylo? Kylo. The mo- Kylo! That's, that's his <laughs> Kyle Ben. His he, he's clearly Kyle very ben. rememberable, guys. Um, ben, ben Swole. Yeah. They could, and, and they could have had him kill Leia as well. They could have had best of both worlds right there. But they didn't have any. I reckon Kylo Ren's I, I just, I, I just, I don't think I'm... I, I don't Wait, what did you I'm say, Jay? I marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Ray could have been a great character and they ruined her. That's the same feelings with no, Kylo. Ray, Ray couldn't have been a good character. <laughs> they, they rewrote yeah, it. That's what do you mean she could be a good character? Yes, there, that's there, what you there, said. Honestly, there's there's a bit in and The Force Awakens, casting. like up until up until this point, like there's a bit where um you see her having her dinner, like in the ruins of some like Atat in the middle of the desert, and she watches like some Spaceship. How dare you call it at at instead of at at? You it's massive a fucking at at you motherfucker. <laughs> no, it's at at. It's an at at. That is, Wolf is correct. It's uh, sorry, an at at. It pisses me off yeah. because that new stupid fucking Star Wars game is like they unironically called it an at at, and I was like, licensed Star Wars product. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm going to pass out soon, so I'm going to have to like hurry this up. No, that that, that scene where where she's like sitting um, outside her AT AT, um, having Good. her dinner, and she's watching like a, a spaceship kind of take off into the the sort of dusk sky. That's a good scene. That's a good character building scene where you you really kind of feel her isolation, like she's stuck on this shithole planet, like where she doesn't want to be. That's fine, but from that point onward, that's where it starts to go downhill because that's where they start to abandon that idea of like you have to earn something as a character, and <laughs> then they go beyond that, and it's like she's just perfect at everything. She could fight anyone she needs to fight, she can win everything she needs to win, and she can just do everything she needs to do. That's where like the 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 Ray as a character starts. Yeah, to that's fall where Captain Marvel. Wait, what? <laughs> And Captain Marvel too. You see that there's more the equivalence between those group. characters than I originally thought. Captain Who would Marvel win in a fight, Captain Marvel or Ray? It's really unfortunate that they're brand new like role models for feminist, strong female characters when they're both some of the worst characters in the history of fucking fiction. Yeah, it's okay. We've got Captain Phasma. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna let my right. daughter watch Alita: Battle Angel. We've got her. Just that's let her watch Terminator Two or Aliens, Aliens yeah. or something like that. Like that's a that's those have got properly strong, good female characters in it. Watch Buffy. Just let her the look art. up to people regardless of their gender. You can look up to anyone. Yeah, <laughs> Jay, that's so I don't think I don't, I don't think that can be done. Yeah, Jay, that's wrong. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so, uh, Rags, are you in the the watch together? Because we're all, we're trying to get through a video eventually. Um. <laughs> How long have we been on this video? <laughs> Ten years, maybe. Um, yeah, it's so been like two hours. So we right, everyone else, right? right, right everyone, else. everyone else, we're gonna play the point he just said, and we're gonna let Rags respond to it. Everyone else, stay quiet, okay? Because this is something the Rags yeah, obviously right. wanna. Right, yeah, just, everyone uh, else, let Rags. Here. All right. It's close to the sea and drink their problems away. Then later, they become heroes yet again. But the main difference, aside from the fact that Luke is mostly treated with dignity, mostly. Is God, it actually has uh, been two hours and 15 minutes. What do you think about that, right? Video. Um, Luke doesn't become a hero in the end, really. What do you Maybe think about the like statement that he's people. mostly treated with dignity? Um, uh, no, <laughs> no, not at all. The sea cow no, is just I, I sitting think... there reading its paper, the... New, reading the news about what happened on the island yesterday. No, I think it was like, like one of my buddies is going to help me out here. Like I'm, I'm pretty frightened and I'm pretty intimidated by this guy. But <laughs> uh, he keeps doing it every so, day. 
<laughs> so there, there is there is clearly a power imbalance there that uh... there's like there's several of them and Luke keeps going to the same one he never goes to a different one. <laughs> his special favorite once everything is over Ray is like, like a... Luke I want to ask you about the cow thing, okay? And he's like, no. <laughs> he's like, Luke. He's like, yeah, like, once he's done, he's like, I'll be coming back for you. When it's done. <laughs> do, you, do you think it, like, misses him after he dies? It's like, has it or... <laughs> painted on the hood of his X-Wing? Okay, uh, so you guys ready to continue now? Because we're all, everyone's caught up now. Wait, I don't know if I am. Luke's arc throughout the movie is actually focused on and followed through on. A good chunk of the movie, no, and when no. I say a what it, what even is Luke's arc? He uh, goes from grumpy old man to grumpy old man that can project himself to another. He dies like a he, fart he, in the wind. Like if I uh, if I was going to be super generous, I would say like, you know, he's given up on everything. He's given up on the whole idea of being a Jedi and he's given up on the idea of the Force and he eventually learns to reconnect with it and uh and use it to help people. But there's another element to this because it wasn't like something he actually overcame. There was a, a, an opinion he had at the beginning that was reinforced by Yoda is that the Jedi are useless and need to be destroyed and they're bad for the universe. And with Yoda symbolically, well, not symbolically, like literally destroying <laughs> the old ancient Jedi texts, is but like that's the confirmation that the Jedi need to be done with. And uh, which kind he of doesn't make sense with Rey becoming the next Jedi kind of thing. My, my 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 issue with Luke is like not only is he portrayed as a horribly flawed character and and he does horrible things, but he doesn't even do them successfully. Like he, yeah, he's like bad at being stupid. Yeah, he, he sees Kylo Ren as a threat, so he's thinking about like killing him, but then he draws his lightsaber and then he pussies fucking out. And then, like, Kylo Ren sees him with his lightsaber drawn, and then that starts, like, their whole confrontation. And then later on, he's, like, he's gonna, like, blow up the Jedi Temple. He's gonna, like, burn it to the ground. And then he pushes out of that as well. And then Yoda shows up and like, has to use lightning to, like, start it. It's like, you've given him the absolute worst... You got a heckler there. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm, I'm picturing Drinker being on the stage, and this baby like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Get, get that fucking baby out of here. I'm trying to mute myself so that none of the background noise doesn't come Seriously, in. Seriously, like. I'm trying to work up an emotional kind of moment here, so just shut right. my fucking kid up. <laughs> right. Keep going, keep going. We're, we're with you. We're, we're with all you. right, cool. So yeah, like. You've got all of these things, like, potentially, okay, I can buy into Luke doing these bad things, but then he doesn't even get the dignity of doing them. He has to fucking have someone else do them for him. That's the ultimate fucking insult of this whole thing. You don't even allow Luke to be a bad guy. You have to, like, like show someone else doing it for him. You could fix this whole thing so easily by just saying, okay, like Snoke was getting into Luke's head and he was starting to like influence him to like want to um take out Kylo Ren, like to be suspicious of everyone else around him, whatever it might be. And Luke realized the danger that he was in, so he shot himself off on this island and you and he was trying to use the Jedi text to find a solution to this thing, to try and find a way to be free of Snoke, of of all the, the like dark side influence that was like coming in on him that would have fixed that would have fixed fucking everything it would have given him a purpose it would have given him some agency it would have given him a reason to fucking be there and it would have given a justifiable reason to have closed himself off from the force and i came up with that in like the five fucking minutes <laughs> we were talking. and i'm half fucking pissed right now ryan johnson couldn't come up with that in like a year while he was sitting there, he on went his with his right first fucking, fucking draft, play. dude. He didn't even redraft. That's so insulting. I redraft. I guess, I think, that I guess the thing you want to take from this is that I'm smarter than Ryan Johnson. Oh well, my, you <laughs> Yeah, that's a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder if there's like a Ryan Johnson bobblehead available anywhere <laughs> so I can just like set it in my car and whenever I'm angry, 
smack its head. You just flick it and it just goes bloom. I know, I know, I know for sure. There's definitely a Ryan Johnson deal. Oh my god! What? I can. I don't I want Ryan it. Johnson's face anywhere near my no, most treasured I, regions. <laughs> I want it. I want it so that I can have like when I'm playing Dark Souls or Sekiro or something, and I like die, I could just be like "fuck you, Ryan," and I could slap him in the face, and his head will just go left and right over and over. This well, little... we'll get we'll get Wolf for this his is, birthday. This is the... a Ryan Johnson pizza slicer. This is the thing. That <laughs> would well, like right. Ryan Ryan work. Johnson could have made this all good if he just said, "Look." We tried to do something a bit different with this movie. You know, we tried to do something a little bit experimental, a little bit different. I didn't. Maybe it didn't work out. We got and it out of our system. Like, It'll never. Yeah. What do you? What, maybe, what do you mean? Why is that? It. Why is that any better than the interview where he said uh, he has not heard a single fair criticism? Because he would at least admit that he fucked up. No, no. Apparently, I think it's better. Just, I think it's better as know, a creator to say you can never make mistakes. I think that's that's really virtuous because that means you're really good at it. Ryan so Johnson you know, is like you know Captain how, Marvel as well. You know how <laughs> easy it would be, like, if if people who directed these movies just were honest for five minutes of their life and just said, <laughs> "Yeah, okay, but, you know, I'm sorry, we fucked up a little bit. It maybe wasn't what everyone hoped for, but we tried our best." I think he genuinely. That, that's all it would have taken. Though. Yeah, I think he thinks he made a really good movie. That's what. That's the beautiful thing about it. If you're <laughs> a problem, it's, it's so good. That's the problem. The kind of person. If you're the kind of person who would go ahead and make The Last Jedi, thinking it's a good movie is, like, not as drastic as actually making it. Do you know what? Does it not blow your mind, though, that people, like, fair enough, Ryan Johnson wrote this, and, you know, that was his first draft of the script or whatever, but, like, sensible adults like us looked at this and said, yeah, it's fine. I think one of the biggest mentalities they had with going into it is, how many toys will we be able to sell from this? Not many. Because, you know, all the kids want the Rose Tico toy. Oh, my God. Dude, have you seen? There's a Holdo toy. It comes with a pistol. I was like, who would buy that? Why would you buy it? <laughs> so embarrassing. Does she hold a pistol in the film? Well, remember when she pulls it out when she's been taken into custody as part of the mutiny? She just Dude. has a pistol. Yeah, that's like kind of a failed mutiny if you let the person you're mutiny. <laughs> I'd like to remind everybody that TLJ like, is not very yeah, good. Don't, don't, you, don't you have a break? Don't you have a place where you can put prisoners? <laughs> you know, it's 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 nice that we're going back to OG TLJ, and we're just... It, feels, it's, it's it like actually feels nostalgic, time, ripping like, into this is TLJ. The thing, like we're right? visiting an like, old friend. The, like, an this old is old hat for you. want to, like, punt off a bridge or something. <laughs> this is old hat for you guys, but this is something that I've needed to get out of my system for, like, two we, years. We've talked something. more about TLJ than any other piece of content, but we've had a big gap, so it feels good to get back into talking about how fucking the, terrible the TLJ is. So like, much. Friend in a so much. I, I said this to you, Maul, the other day. Like, th The Last Jedi is a perfect example of writing yourself into a corner and then using an absolute bullshit excuse to try and get yourself out of it, and then writing yourself into another corner as a result. Um, I upset a lot of people who like this film when I said that they should use TLJ in writing classes to teach how not to write a script. They were like, how dare you? And I was like, no, 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 seriously, it's got it's got almost all of the like hallmark terrible pieces of writing, be it character, will building, or plot. It's all in there. Great. You could learn a lot from TLJ about what not to do. Isn't it just... Force Awakens mostly that fucks the world building though. No, you, well this is the no, thing. You can no. you can you can accept that your world is fucked or you can try and fix it. TLJ just said, nah, fuck, we're fucked. I, I, I would have been fine with TL sorry, with um The Force Awakens, the world building, because I it wouldn't. doesn't it's so bad well, it's so boring and they just uh oh, do it again, the same thing, just oh okay. Here, Here's say... my thing, like it, a, a really good um, second movie in this trilogy could have fixed most of the problems that were present in the the Force Awakens. I can agree with that, but would you say that you can fix uh, both of them in a theoretical, incredibly written episode nine? Do you think that's possible? No. I don't think so. I, well, I like well, it. Well, the last year I ruined based so on much what we for have, me. Based on what we have now. Yeah, yeah. On, could like, could you could, could you, sir, given infinite money and time, write an episode nine that fixes everything? Well, oh, I, okay. well, 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 well
Yay! Uh, uh, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Solo Dream. We did it. We saved the Star Wars. Well, I am brainy as fuck. Um, <laughs> but I, I think if, uh, even then, I'd be struggling. Honestly, I'm one Instead of the people who says no. Uh, I don't think like, there's a fucking I, chance I, in hell Episode Nine can be good. Like it's I, so I, unlikely. I genu I, I've genuinely applied, I've, I've applied my writing brain to this one and just thought, like, okay, where would I go with this? What would I do to try and fix this? And I could probably put it right to some extent, but I couldn't give you a good, satisfying conclusion to the the story. Yeah, the, no, it's a horrible circumstance. In one movie, you're dealing with a whole bunch of characters that you need to develop in their finale. It's like, what the hell? And it's like, also, you need to have a I, convincing I, story that you have to develop because there's nothing to work with. I, if it was up to me, I would kill off either Finn or Poe. I would kill off Rose. I would um, give Ray the like a, a proper defeat at the high end, at the hands of Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren. Um, Do the Knights of Ren even still exist, though? I Have would potentially make Luke a false, like fucking clone or some shit. I'd be like, "There's a real Luke <laughs> that got captured and taken away." <laughs> at that point, though, you just yeah, you just there was all a dream. Fuck it. Can you make a mentor character also go through the hero's journey? Iron Man. Hmm. Who? Well, in fantasy, becomes a mentor after he's completed his uh, hero's journey. What is what most people might argue, but you could also oh, argue uh, that he's. But, he's... But who, who? Who does he become a mentor to? Spider Man. Spider Man. Yeah, but that's like three movies. But I mean, I'm what do you mean? like three on... movies. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, we call that a trilogy. Star Wars is known for those. Yeah, but like, try and break that down into one movie, which is what. We're oh, you're saying is it possible here. to do in one movie? Uh, it's possible. Yeah, if you have a good writer. I was gonna say it's tough. That's yeah. That's where the skill comes in. Like that's how the thing. Can, you how can, can you make how it... can you balance that though? How can you balance a guy who seem who a mentor who should know kind of everything, um, and and is just prevented from taking the next I step think... because they're so they most of the strong stories then. about mentors they usually have something to learn or something that they haven't gotten over. There's a lot of stories about mentors that haven't quite. They think they maybe they they're completed in their journey, but they haven't gone. Yeah, there okay. Yet. He's almost portrayed as a character who's back yeah. in the. No, you're the, right. Stop the... there. He's almost portrayed as a character. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's almost portrayed as a character like back in the the sort of realms of um, a new hope, where he's clueless and he needs to learn something. He needs to learn something that's going to be taught to him by someone else. Right. And person that's going to teach him that thing is Ray, and that's completely wrong. She shouldn't be teaching him things because she doesn't fucking know anything. She is younger than him, she's less experienced um, than him, she doesn't know this stuff. She shouldn't be able to impart that kind of wisdom on him because he should be there so before her. The thing that brings to mind for me is a mentor can often be cynical, and then when you have someone who's not learned anything, they're very idealistic, and they can inspire a mentor who's cynical. That's the kind of but thing that I would imagine. Yeah, totally. But there has to be reciprocation there. They each well, have I'm, to learn something from each yeah, other, but I agree. they don't. But we're talking about a potential, not what TLJ did, right? Because again, we all agree that TLJ did shit. So, is everyone ready to continue? Oh god, yeah, we're, yeah, we're watching a video. Let's do it. Follow through on. A good chunk of the movie, and when I say a good chunk, I mean the only good chunk, is the stuff with him, Rey, and Kylo. While he teaches Rey things about the Force, she helps him come to grips with his own failures. And it really takes a while- I don't think she helps him come to grips with his own failures at all. She basically just- She says to him that uh, it's not his fault that Kylo turned out the way he did, and then she realizes from Kylo that it kinda is. And then- is that that's not really concluded. She says it's not too late to save him, and Luke is like, lol, you're an idiot, and then Luke does, uh... Yeah, but remember more, no one's... No one's ever... <laughs> well, yeah, uh, so what I find odd here is that this guy seems to have delved quite deep into Thor's sort of ins and outs in Endgame, highlighting issues, but he's, he's totally glossing over Luke's story in this and taking all of, like, vague beats to try and create a sort of storyline that wasn't necessarily uh yeah. there it's almost it's almost like he's projecting which is odd because he said he didn't like the last jedi so i don't know why yeah but when you've got a point you want to make in a youtube video and you've got like a lot of your advertising revenue on the line i mean it's a controversial position to take right to say that uh tlj did something right that uh the mcu was trying to achieve 
Like, ooh, so what, what is his what is his fundamental point about like look? Like, well, I'm assuming we'll get to that like, in the last third or so. Ray Ray helps him come to terms with his failures. Apparently, which I I would love qualification for because I disagree completely. This this pisses me off as well because she shouldn't have anything to do with his failures. She doesn't even fucking Those know the context things. of them outside of flashback recants that are all different. <laughs> like, like, you know, we've all done things in our lives that we're not proud of. Like, I've done horrible things. Um, but, like, you you don't need some random outsider to come in. <laughs> that sounded and tell like you murdered someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should should we did. be worried? I, I did once. I did once. I it. did once throw up on a stripper in the middle of a private dance, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, I want to believe that's true. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, right? You you don't like to have some random outsider character come in and tell you, you know, the things you did were okay, or like help you make peace with the things you did. It's so fucking presumptuous. It's so fucking arrogant. You shouldn't do that. that. That's not a thing that... that well, yeah, uh, she's got no insight uh, for his life, those events, other than him telling her what happened, and then Kylo telling her what happened, and then she tells Luke, Kylo's not completely gone, and he's like, lol, stupid. How do you describe yeah, that series of events? Be all right. How do you describe that series of events as her telling him to overcome his failures or whatever? Like, It's like, come on. She, she gives him... Yoda is more responsible for that than she is. He only agrees to train Rey after careful contemplation and talking to R2. And <laughs> he agrees to train Rey after careful contemplation. What are you... Why is he brushing over uh, this stuff? Fuck. Like, this is the kind of shit that drove me to drink in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> it drove me to drink critically. The fact that it we have to expected. desperately hope that any of the OT characters get to fucking talk to each other. Like, that's why this was yeah. a ray of hope. We were like, oh, Luke and R2-D2 get say to see yeah, each like, other. See it in the <laughs> cinema, like, watching that scene, I was like, oh, shit, this is where it's going to kick in. This is where we're going to get a little bit of Luke and and uh, be in the, the character he used to be and the, the person we used to love. And it's over within, like, 30 seconds. Like, oh, you and There's your thoughts. There's nothing there. And then he's back to being, like, this miserable, grumpy drunk asshole and you know how i feel about that sort of thing how do you feel about that sad <laughs> <laughs> it makes me sad what is what does the r2 and luke scene have to do with ray i honestly want to know I, I, i'm tempted to check the script like what is it that they say to each other that even has anything to do with ray Akbar just pointed his finger at holdo and he was like she's a trap and then they <laughs> were up here like she's <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, just a fan in chat said, this is not their trilogy, they're old, as a reference to what people say. I fucking hate it when people say that. It's like, this is not their time. They as characters have moved on. It's like, just because you're old doesn't mean you can't fucking learn something or have a story. What the fuck? Like, not yeah, nope. this is Once like, you hit 30, like, your life is basically over. Oh, Jesus. This is like Rocky. Guys, guys, this is like Rocky. Just... Like, you know, Creed is over. You know, you're just there to You're just old. Fuck and off and die. They, they yeah. clearly hate old people. Um, who, Who's the black guy? Finn. His ship. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot his character for a second. <laughs> yeah, I I hope that she's like horribly paralyzed from like the neck down or something. <laughs> I hope like she's that. horribly paralyzed everyone, from the neck up. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> everyone, everyone in chat is right. Logan was a bad film because Logan's old and he shouldn't have had a story. Logan's too old. He's 90 old. Old. Indeed. Uh, Gandalf the Grey, more like Gandalf the Gay. Gandalf the Old, get rid of him. Well, Fuck. he is technically gay. And old. The, act, the actor is. That is uh, true, yeah. You know that Picard series they're trying to do? Why? He's old. Yeah, he's old. <laughs> Stop it, he's old. Fuck. I, I can't wait to see them rape the corpse of Picard. Like, and Lando, like don't forget Lando. We got plenty to rape. God, God. You yeah. can ruin all the old people. Palpatine. So much, so much rapage going on. It's Man. awful. Let's let's kick on. It's gonna be great. It's grief. He'll Someone's gonna to take that out of context after... completely. <laughs> There's plenty to rape. So, someone's just going to say we got plenty to rape. And it's gonna be like <laughs> Mauler 2019. <laughs> like the old quote, "I have not yet begun to rape." <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna own that quote 100. <laughs> percent 
careful contemplation and talking to Artu in a really beautiful scene that doesn't feel like cheap fan service at all. Yes, yeah, it does. It's they literally, literally used. They literally use the fucking mess. How is that not fan service? It, it doesn't feel like cheap fan service, really. It's, it, but if it works, I don't think there's anything wrong with cheap fan service. Well, this is the thing. I'm actually not against fan service as a whole, but the idea that this isn't fan service, like when you were designing this scene where R two D two shows a 30 years on disheveled Luke, the message that got him into the fight in the originals, and you, you, you're not in any way thinking, oh yeah, the fans will fucking love this. You're lying to me. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Jay. Hi. <laughs> Hi. You know, I was, uh, you know, I'm talking about Star Wars. For a while. Let us, about let us. Talking about the message, because that's the best scene in the whole movie. I know it is. He just, he said, wait, so Jay, what's your take on this? He said it's not fan service. I don't care if it's fan service or not. Like, that's another question. That's another question. Yeah, I didn't ask that. I, 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 fucking piece of shit trying to dodge. I don't know. Questions. I don't know. <laughs> My take like, is, yes it is, but it's still, I love the shit out of it. I don't know what the fuck Ryan Johnson was thinking for any of the script, so I, I would not be able to tell you if it was fan, fan service. Like, you've you've got on a character was... arc for TLJ, because I feel like when I met you, you thought it was 50-50, right? I thought it was fine, yeah. I thought it was fine. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you see, that was kind of the, this is interesting now that, because on a surface level, if you don't take into the pr the previous movies what was established and what's important to maintain about the previous characters, and you were to just look at the Last Jedi as if it was a movie by itself, well, nothing before or after, there are it elements would still that be are shit. enjoyable. Oh no, there are fun parts in it, like some of the jokes you could laugh at, and some mm. of the visuals are really spectacular. Mm, things, and yeah. so. It's just when you look at it deeper, you're like, holy crap, what happened? And then if you look for, at the plot holes, like, God. For me, the, the one and only high point of, of The Last Jedi was when Holdo rammed her ship into the, the you know, See, First Order ship. it looks ship. great, and it had a big oomph, right? But then it also undermines the canon of oh, Space exactly, Travel completely. Like, v visually, it's, it's very impressive, and it looks lovely. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you have that moment in the cinema where you're like, holy shit, like, this is cool. But yeah, then you actually exactly. start to apply your brain yeah, to it. Yeah, that doesn't last like, long what, enough, does it? Yeah. <laughs> I've, uh, I've taken you all as role models, by the way, and come back with a big drink. I've drank a when lot When we first now. met Jay, he thought women were okay. <laughs> After spending time on ETAP, he seethes with an undying <laughs> hatred. Now they're the hor day. horrible creatures. It's just men for me now. We penetrated the un impenetrable forest of Jay's brain. <laughs> Jay, Jay, I have to ask you a question. Like, you're in the UK at the moment. Where, whereabouts are you? I'm in Leamington Spa. Oh, God. Lemon? I know. Uh, yeah, is that... I, say, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Oh. I don't want to be here. It's okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Jay. Right. You guys... Kick oh. Jay. Hashtag you guys... kick Jay. You guys ready to... Fucking Leamington Spa. I know. Sounds like there's small people in the background. You need to get rid of them right now. <laughs> get rid of them. They're just trying to put input. They have thoughts on The Last Jedi 2, okay? <laughs> Pretty late for an abortion. Their brains are too small. It's and never too, too late for an abortion. Oh, what the? <laughs> no, I'm saying that's bad. I'm saying, I'm, yeah, I think that's bad. No, right, I, 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 I get. I get applause for uh, I think abortion for, should be for, a, for a Tomb Raider for a Tomb Raider <laughs> reference there. Right? <laughs> Someone said to Anakin them. Oh, oh god, <laughs> these are my kids you're talking about. No, I'm talking about other people's kids. I think you mean younglings. Oh, oh yeah, younglings. Younglings. Like, They're called ser younglings. Seriously, yeah. it's like it's like one in. The, it's pretty late at night. Like, can't can't you like chloroform them or something? <laughs> it's like, not oh, late for Australia. <laughs> It's 10 in the morning over here. Oh, fuck, you got it. Oh, yeah. it's only the start of a day. All right, all right. Yeah. Damn it. We got, we got to get through this video. It's important. Why did Luke leave a map to himself? It's never confirmed where the fuck that map came from. We have no idea. It's a mystery box, and it's never answered. No, didn't they like, say In ways well, that makes like, it worse, though. If, if, if Max Moncido says to you, like, there's a map to this guy, you fucking Who? believe him. No, of course. No, there is a map to oh. him. It's just that nobody knows who made it and why. The only thing I have to go on, because I talk about this in the extended parts of my TFA review, which will be out in 2076, the, uh, the idea is that he's gone to place X, and there is a map that takes you to place X, and it's like, oh, so technically that's a map to Luke Skywalker. That is the... Well, if you say place X, then it sounds like place X, which is... Funny. I would like to place X. <laughs> 
Well, we we all want a better play sex, but <laughs> we can do that in the inner mission. <clears throat> the, the thing is, like, it makes sense. Like, he left the map, two pieces of the map, with two people. He, that he, he didn't trusted leave it though. There's no confirmation that he left it. Oh fucking! Like, I'm sorry. Okay. It's just that we have to go with what we're given, and he that map. We have no idea where it came from. <clears throat> but so, like, I'll tell you what J.J. Abrams said. Uh, R2D2 has the bigger portion of the map because he accidentally yeah. downloaded it when he put his penis inside the thing. And I'm talking we, strictly we, from the movies to... before chat starts asking why. Like, why aren't you considering the video games or the books about how he explains it? Fucking everybody's got a different account, including J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams initially says something along the lines of, I don't fucking know why he has it, he just does. And then later on in interviews, he's like, oh, he has it because he downloaded it when he was tizzling around with the Empire stuff in the other films. It makes but total sense. We, we're right. Why we, would you we need ever to do... make that up? Why? Because we... they're hack writers, Jay. They have no fucking clue what they're doing. But how can we... you be that thick? <laughs> we... Has anyone even pointed out that the idea of a space map is really stupid? Because all you need to know is the endpoint. Yeah, you don't need I was to know about the... to say. <laughs> why don't they just call it coordinates instead of exactly? A map? Fuck you, and they show cool. the map, and that there's lines between these star systems. It's like, but she does one jump to get to where she needs to go. That's just you need a coordinates. Yeah, you need a location. You don't. <laughs> need that. You don't go also, that exact like, route. The planet isn't it, there when you get there. Yeah. Even if you even if you know the like the rough area, can you not like narrow it down to like the number of planets there? <laughs> I like the idea, like, by the way, that they had R two D 2s portion, which is essentially the universe outside of this small block. And it's like, why don't we search the small block? <laughs> like, why? Yeah, we fucking, we well, have we the Republic on our side. Send a billion ships in universe. The fucking, fucking small block has got to be like millions of stars, though. To be fair, if you it doesn't like, matter how galaxies. many there are, search them. Like, they got the Republic yeah, on their side. That's the most power in the universe. Like, none of, none of this. None of this answers the question of like, why do we even have a map to get to Luke? It's not even. Place? That's the thing. That's not favorite, to Luke. It's to that specific Jedi planet, whatever the hell it favorite, is. But but who made it? Why? And that's the that's the fucking thing. They never tell us. That's the problem. My favorite thing though is, is like all we have is to assume that Luke made it, and he left it there. Right, right but I'm, I'm, go I'm going to this place. And like, if if anyone ever needs me, I'm gonna leave the the map coordinates with two people I really trust. And if you combine those two things together, you'll find a way to get to me. Fine, okay. But he doesn't want to be found. Apparently the, not. The no. place that he went to was the most unfindable place like ever. <laughs> Except there's a, a map to it. Yeah, according to Ryan Johnson, yeah. I that's fucking hate that totally dialogue, right. by the way. Unfindable. I don't have I mean, a map to my apartment. <laughs> It would make sense if there was this weird nebula or something around the planet that, you know, blocked hyperspace travel unless you had to go from one exact specific angle yeah, from like another a planet. Yeah, run. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. There was nothing like that established. It was Remember just like, Solo? the planet is here. Well, and all you need to do is go there. And if you were like, can hey, we, Luke, can we, Luke can why did you think about... that the idea that you'd go to the original Jedi Temple was somewhere that people wouldn't <clears throat> expect you to go and is unfindable? And he's just like, mm hmm. No, what if he was had like an apartment on Curson or something? <laughs> he's just on the street, one alleyway. He's just like, yeah, nobody's gonna look for you. Yeah, it's like he's one person. It's a whole city planet. You're not gonna find him by accident. Well, I don't know. Maybe you will. He wears you a shawl. You know what would have been what what would have worked quite well is if he was there for an actual specific reason, like he was trying to research. Oh, that would be great. That would be so cool. Like he was, he was if there were find... reasons for the things that happened in the film, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'd love like, that. Imagine, no, but imagine if, no like... films have was, reasons for things. He was trying to find, like, the secret to, like, stopping Snoke from, like, infiltrating no, the Jedi Order or something, would something why, why, like that. Why would you write that? That sounds really boring. I prefer that there's that's no reason for anything to happen. Brave and smart. Yeah. But you can see how, like, you can take that same premise and turn it into something that's well, do you actually know workable. Why you just said so it, fucking easily. Why you just said it's even more frustrating is this quotes from Ryan Johnson saying, like, when I was taking up the reins for J.J. Abrams, I had this character who's a hero who's just hidden himself on some, you know, distant planet. I have to write a reason for why he would have been here for so long. And, and you're with him for that point. Oh, you're I like, know. Yeah, that, yeah. Die. And then it's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to write him so he's it's a like... cowardly piece of shit that wants to kill himself. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. Fucking JJ, JJ, like just give me a call and I'll I'll sort it out for you, man. Like yeah, people like, are like, there's no, we'll there's fine. nothing else you could do. How, what else could you possibly write? It's like God, anything right. else. <laughs> I will I take that he was kidnapped and captured and put on that island. He was kidnapped by Jawas, mistaken for an old. <laughs> he was MacBook. kidnapped by Jar Jar Binks. 
I would just like to point out, right. For an old MacBook? Yeah. I was trying to point this out for five minutes. Because they scavenge old, like, machines and stuff. So they thought that Luke was an old MacBook. Why would they think that? Because Jawas, they don't have good vision. (laughs) (laughs) I want to see this version now where it's like, MacBook. Okay, well, I would take everyone's version over uh, JJ or Ryan's. (laughs) I would take. Oh, uh, could you imagine like, a Tommy Wiseau directed and written TLJ? Oh, it would be oh, so good. Oh boy, dude, been so good. He'd probably make Luke into a vampire, and yeah, that would yeah. be perfect. Yes. Like, did, you, did you ever hear that story that yeah, Tommy yeah. like really legitimately wanted the twist of the room to be that Johnny was a vampire and he'd like drive his. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. The the twist was going to be that Johnny is a vampire. I have his flying I car off the, the roof, and that was how that. the movie was supposed to end. <laughs> why did the Wars not let him make that? Because they didn't have the budget for it. Well, the, the night is always darkest before the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have seen that. Both is of them. It, is it glorious, or is it shit? Yes, it, uh, me and a friend were huge fans of it. If you... <laughs> Uh, dude, if dude, you dude, read dude, the dude. disaster you said, artist, you're getting is it, it glorious or is it shit? You said yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me, me and a friend that are really big fans, Tommy <coughs> in the room and all that. Um, we oh, went fuck. to go see both of them, and it was great. Frontman two four two said Jurassic Jurassic Park thinking face. What does that have to do with anything? Anyone? What I'm <laughs> talking about? <laughs> We've dug Jurassic up the bones Park. of prehistoric <laughs> Jews. Can you imagine, <laughs> like, they, they take the ashes of the Jews and they, like, use them to recreate Anne Frank? We can bring Anne them Frank. back. Like, they, they put Anne Frank in her own little exhibit, and you're just like, oh, you died once. See the Jews but then, in the wild. But then life finds a way, so... Mm. <laughs> the Jews break we gotta, out we, and we're start up, eating everybody. We're, we're up our allotted time. We got we, we got to play this video a little bit more to make sure we're still responding to it. Okay, we got to let's do it. Right, let's do oh, it. This is He's this a is a valid though. response. The movie makes serious, gentlemen. That. He literally says he came to this island to die, which is heartbreaking. Thor- Not yeah. heartbreaking. It's fucking annoying. Well, it's heartbreak. It's heartbreaking in a way. Breaks my heart. It breaks my. You know, you're right, Jay. Oh, oh, breaks my oh, brain. My, all Breaks of my, my childhood heart. My heart brain. wonder and all of my childhood happiness and joy and everything about cinema just died with that. And I just became like a shriveled husk of a man mm-hmm. that only lives for his next booze. He came to this <laughs> island to die, which is heartbreaking. Thor agrees to join the mission because there's booze on the ship. I actually liked Shad's take on that. I have to say he's changed oh, my mind a little you. bit on that. I'm just muting oh, myself okay. so the kids don't. It's the Thank, noise thanks for hanging out, by the way, Shad. I, I like you, hey. so you're a very good man. Uh, well, I like you guys as well. It's fun thanks to hang for out. for ignoring so. your children to instead <laughs> hang out with us and talk about Star Wars. <laughs> Chuck on Minecraft, sit them in front, have fun. <laughs> there, go build the castle. Dad's got to talk about Star Wars. <laughs> how, how, many, how, many, how many days is it since they've eaten anything? <laughs> oh, well, we, we, we had a feast last night, actually. Like, did was, you know uh, that the carpet is edible? <laughs> Children, your shoes are not only walking implements, they are food. <laughs> it's the other. <laughs> if you boil them. Um... I kind of imagine they're quite resourceful out there. So, if... Yeah, hungry kids get resourceful. Shad, you're going to teach your kids to take back the land that you lost to the Oh, well, yeah, right? you know, no, I've, what, I've Jerusalem? killed a snake with a sword, and it was a, a tiger snake, one of the most deadly ones in the world. So you, you, this, these are the things you got to do in Australia. Wait, you killed a snake with a sword? Yeah, I, did. Oh, I can't I, wait. I, sounds awesome, dude. Sword when it gets please hard. tell me. I, I, I'm just imagining like that. a Dark Souls fight with Shad in it. <laughs> like he's so he's walking through the street, and then this little the little snake comes out of the high grass. and goes, "No, yeah, no." The health bar appears, and he's like, "Oh god." <laughs> oh yeah, in Australia, the, the critters have health bars. <laughs> That's you know. They have, dude. They have phases. Uh, yeah, I was talking to multi-stage phases and health bars, <laughs> alternating <laughs> attack patterns. I was talking to Fringy the other night, or maybe it was last night. I don't. Remember. I was talking to Fringy at some point, and he showed me like a six-meter crocodile. And yeah, I'm like, mm, yeah. yeah, I'm never going to that country. Ever. We got yeah, gators yeah, here. 
These are the things you just got to deal with. You no. Like... <laughs> this, this, no. Why do you see guys? Why... How do you use swords, guys? Seriously. This is, this is why I like Scotland because there's nothing here that can kill you. Also, shad guns are a thing, mate. Drugs and stuff. The That's how they get you. <laughs> <laughs> Rip snack. <laughs> Tiger snakes, king of the monsters! I'm just waiting for me like, oh, also there are elephant snakes, there are whale snakes. <laughs> like, what, what are all these things? We, we mean? even have snake snakes. <laughs> Basilisks. Thousand dollars for plate on plate. Dragon snakes, they can fly Dragon and breathe fire. <laughs> Griffin oh, snakes. Dragon. Balrog snakes. <laughs> Thor agrees to join the mission because there's booze on the ship. The moment he like, rejoins the fight is played off as a joke. Luke rejoins the fight after he's talked some sense into by none other than Yoda. Yeah, which makes uh, so much right, fucking like, sense to me. Is that, is that played as any yeah. less of a joke? Yeah, you literally showed him going, yeah. boop, you fucking noob. <laughs> Go and help him. Yeah. You, you dumb fucking asshole. I always like, love the, I'm gonna burn, the red light like, media take. No, like, why is Yoda a crazy asshole? <laughs> why is he normal so, Yoda? Someone, so, like, Luke's going up to that tree to burn the Jedi Temple. And then he stops, and then he sees Yoda, and then Yoda makes lightning come down to burn the Jedi Temple, and looks like, no, I've got to stop this. Kill ceiling. <laughs> and then he tries to go, tries to go into it, and then it explodes because that's what trees do when they're on fire, and then like it <laughs> knocks some on his ass, and jo Yoda's like, <laughs> you're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> like, what was what was Luke gonna do? Was he gonna run in and someone, flap his cloak? Just, <laughs> what, what was this scene trying to show us about anyone in this? Like, f nah, fuck it. I'm just checking out of this shit. I'm just drink right now. You just, guys just talk amongst yourselves. This is nonsense. <laughs> it also seems to contradict Yoda's character. Like when Yoda is training Luke, it's all about the Jedi way is the best thing ever. You know, the Jedi. It's his strength from the Force, and he is fully there. And now he's suddenly happy to burn the, mo the like, Jedi secret it. text. Yeah, it's like, like that but it's okay. It's okay, it's okay because Ray Ray knows everything. She needs no, to know. that's just actually. Amazing. I've got something for that because I said that in a video I made on it. Every oh, few boy. days, someone in my comments came to me that actually what he meant was that Ray literally just took the Jedi texts and you see them in the file. Right, yes, right. Well, I, Which I is it, not, that, that is she's not precedent to destroy a fucking building. That is stupid. Especially with the, I know. what about those poor caretakers who wake up to but the ashes like, of the fucking thing they're supposed to maintain? They're like, wow, thanks. Well, now I'm out of a job. Not but, the text. Fucking ghost no, puppet. We have to call a space Uber think, to come pick think, us up think on the most well, unfindable right? place in the universe. <laughs> Think as well about Luke, right? He, they he's been on this. He's been on Craggy Island for like the next, like the past ten years or whatever it is. All the, all he's had is those Jedi texts. Has he never read them? Has he never like looked at them or anything? Yeah, you'd think you'd want a Reader's Digest or something if you're just stuck on an island for the rest of your like, life. Like, if there's no Pornhub or anything, like you've got to have well, something, man. He, like, he's he got does have, well, he's got Luke the does have just, something. Yeah. He might have done some things with the frog people and the no, aliens. no, no, I, it, no, it, the no, alien team. Let me no. squeeze out your eggs. It's the sea cows. It's yeah, the, the sea cows. cows. You no. might have done a lot. That milk didn't can, come from nowhere. I can tell how they look at him, and it's the same way that like my girlfriends used to. <laughs> you, you literally couldn't have cut off at a better time. You just all you said was the same way my girlfriends dot dot dot. <laughs> 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 but that, that was like a sacred worshipping building and Yoda's like, but the books weren't there. Like, Yoda! That's... It's not just about the books, Yoda! And Yoda's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as as Carswell just said, I blew up your church, but it's okay, because the Bible was okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good point. <laughs> well done, Yoda, you piece of shit. <laughs> You Jesus, drunken ghost Bible. puppet frog. Also, why Yoda? Like, wh why isn't it Obi Wan Kenobi? Yeah, what's the hey, spirit of Count Dooku? Could you imagine if the spirit of General Grievous appeared? <laughs> 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 why the hell are you here? <laughs> he steals the books and is like, "I this will make a fine addition to my collection." Do, do you remember that meme with like uh, Dooku's head on a spider body? 
like <laughs> like the whole no one's ever really gone. Yeah, oh, no one's yeah. Ever really gone. That's a thing that could legitimately happen. And then Luke, Luke is like, what that. the fuck? He's like, I'm good now. <laughs> like, okay. Imagine the ghost of General Grievous going up to Luke and saying, General Kenobi. <laughs> just doesn't understand it at all. <laughs> yeah, he just, can't actually tell the difference between people. I'm just picturing several, <laughs> several force ghosts. <laughs> several yeah. force ghosts turning up and several of them being like, oh, we're not necessary. Wait, which, who are you? Luke. No, I never met you. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Let's just... Qui-Gon Jinn shows Jedi up. some Jedi they never met who can also do that. This who are Luke. you? Like, I'm, I'm Tim. <laughs> like, uh... There's nothing is like, else going on, so I thought I'd just show up. Qui Gon's like, Anakin, you need. To... No, wait, you're. Who are you? <laughs> like, he's like, I'm the son of the guy that you taught. He's like, oh. And then Vader's ghost is there, and he's like, Anakin, how did everything go after Phantom? Oh. I just. <laughs> yeah, he really shows up. I was like, I'm so glad the Empire was destroyed. The, all the Force ghosts start catching up and teaching each other lessons. Luke is just sitting there like, guys? <laughs> is this about me? I don't know. No one gives a shit about you, Luke. Shut the fuck up, Luke. <laughs> you don't even want to be a Jedi get, anymore. Yeah. Get, get yeah. back to milking that sea cow, Luke. Luke rejoining the fight as a hologram instead of in person. First of all, his whole ship is underwater. No! Is no. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, number one, that's the fucking the film's set. choice. You can't say that that's get, just a thing because, okay. like... First off, his fuck. whole ship was underwater on Dagobah, too, but that didn't stop him, now did it? Under a swamp, yeah, which is swamp, more yeah. damage than water, by the way. You know the- I really hate that shit when- so let's say, for example, a theoretical Guardians 3, uh, Shad is like, oh, I can't wait to see, uh, Thor's story in it. Thor dies in the opening five minutes, he's just dead. And then Shad is like, wow, they- they've completely wasted his story, and I argue to Shad, well, they can't do anything with his story, he's dead. It's like, that's the <laughs> fucking film that killed him! It's not that stupid! Like, they could've just had the fucking ship on a different Literally piece of the island. in that story is arbitrary. God, I hate <laughs> it when they fucking make that argument. It's like, no, we could've just had the ship. Why is it that the ship covered in water means he can't use it? The whole reason they showed it was to make us think that he was actually showing up there personally. Exactly, but it's like, no, it's exactly. not actually. That, that made everyone think that he was gonna fly over to them because he still had the X-Wing. Can I ask something? Go ahead. No. <laughs> You mean, can you ask two things? Hang on, can you hear me right now? You've already asked something, yes. Jay. No, that, that was Wait. it, that was your question, that was your no. question. You fucking blew it, Jerry, you fucking blew it. I said that, I accidentally pulled the fucking cord out of my mic. Oh, wow, that's, that's yeah. tough shit, isn't it? But why did, why did Luke park his sex wing underwater? Did, did you, you say sex wing? You sound like yes. you're closer to your microphone, Jay, calm down. I am, I am closer to my microphone. Don't. Uh... Well, actually, I moved my microphone closer to me to plug the cord back in. Get it away, it Jay. I don't like the sensation. I don't think... I, I, I wouldn't imagine there was any particular reason for it. Just because it looked cool underwater. So did he, did he swim out of it? Oh, yeah, by the way, there is some logic... That, I'm not saying this is true, right? This is something to consider. If you can survive the vacuum of space, the pressure of you air trying to get in... You yes. should be able to survive underwater. It's not unheard of to think that if it's designed to be in, like... A no pressure, no atmosphere environment, and keep people alive Though, inside. I'm not a scient. Water. I'm not a scientist, it, so I don't it, know the specifics of that. That's a scientist. Scientist. They're, they're very different environments because water is can potentially be very high pressure. Well, that's, that's the thing. It's complicated. Pressure. I don't it, think it's the same. You could just as easily have parked it on a cliff above. <laughs> that's the, why. That's that's and why. Then, and then go out of it, and then just like. Yes. It just has like dirt also. Also, on you on could easily establish that X wings can fucking function underwater. You could just say that. That's why blobfish die if you take them out of water, it's because they've not got the pressure to hold them together anymore, they're literally held together by the pressure. I've had a lot, yeah, of, I've had a lot to drink, chat, You see, okay? Jay has been holding that knowledge in his head for years now, just waiting <laughs> have, for the right time it, to it, let everyone is this know the, about his Is knowledge. this the point where we have to debate how the, the bombs, like, fall out of those, like, <laughs> Fuck those bombs. stupid <laughs> fucking bombers, fuck them. <laughs> well, hang on. There, there is a possible answer to that, even though it is mostly dumb. It's that the, the ships, <laughs> the, the ships have a gravity generator of some kind, and so the gravity on the ships could have accelerated the bombs. And then once yeah, they're but, in motion, because they're in space, they just continue. No, then the no, bombs no, at the no, bottom would even wouldn't then, go as even then, it doesn't the work. The top and they yeah. crash into each other. Even then, it doesn't work. I, I, I've got. I've got this one. Like, they're above the I've planet. This, they're orbiting above the planet, okay? <laughs> but that's not the what? angle that they're at in comparison to the planet. It is, though. They're no, it's not. It's not. Like, Watch it again, it's not. The planet is I'm next sure to when them. You, 
when you look down, you see a planet below. Wait, what is down? It's to the right really? of them. It's to the right. Really? It's to yeah. It's off to the side. It's not to directly below. Uh, Ooh, I, I withdraw my point that. then. Fuck it. <laughs> I withdraw my stupid point. <laughs> yes. Fuck it. I'm not. But, I'm my not desperate go attempt to make let's, this feel less. Shit. What, what were we oh, talking? Oh no, I'm not going to try and defend it. What was the point the of the video? What point were we supposed to be addressing? <laughs> Forgotten. I forgot. <laughs> was something about. Well, Luke, were we supposed to be covering three videos three, today? Yeah, video yes, there, there is a third video to covered. cover. <laughs> there are swords that they find in water that are, are still intact. Well, not when I say intact, they're still rusted. In they found a way to link this to swords, but everybody. Exactly. That's what it comes <laughs> back found to a way. Swords. We did it. <laughs> I'll always do it. Um, but you know, they survive um, and were able to find them because they were in water. And sometimes it's because they were also immersed in the mud. But there are other. So there's conditions in which it can survive. But if this is seawater, that can be worse. But anyway. No, no, I, I is, understand, man. There, the there, there's plenty of murder weapons that I've tried to dispose of, and they've ultimately <laughs> been discovered like years down the line, like in the river. You can't like, throw it in your awful. sink. <laughs> no, no, it's like you throw it into the local like river and you think it was going to get washed away, but it doesn't. It gets preserved, and then there's yeah. going to be some asshole on YouTube that goes like uh, magnetic fishing with it. They get it, and then that's Look. it. You're nailed. He said something interesting here. It was perfectly reasonable for him to appear as a hologram because of the grief he's experiencing. I'm <laughs> that's not. not sure those two I don't think that this man is a therapist. How do these things follow? How do you? Why exactly? Why would grief prevent you from wanting to appear Physically. in person? <laughs> I'm like, listen, Doc, I think I'm depressed, depressed anyway. I've been down, I've been upset, my life is just in shambles now, and the therapist turns to you and he says, so can you force project yourself? <laughs> <laughs> is that how sad you are? <laughs> is that how sad you are? <laughs> <laughs> the five uh, stages of grief <laughs> and five is projection. It's like acceptance, <laughs> anger, Force projection. Brings a whole new meaning to projection, right? <laughs> projection. I'm, I'm sure this guy's a really nice guy. I'm just no, like, yeah. Are you, I, I mean, are you I like. I kind of like his editing and like his like humor. I, 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 I mean, in in fairness, Shad, a lot of idiots are nice people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hello. I was well, still, I still happily say that I, this video isn't so bad. I just, <laughs> I feel like he's desperately trying to make TLG the good guy in this argument, and it's just not working. And honestly, it's more difficult. It's far more a show. Of, well. It's more of a show of character. Yeah. Hey, are you okay? <laughs> well, is, is someone gonna die right here? You understand, sound drinker. It, he's you know, not. He's not it, had a life of least, drinking like me and you. I don't think that is equivalent as if he was there. But. That's my son. <laughs> he was there personally. You should probably feed him or something. Your son is a fan. No, of the he last was voicing guy. his agreement. Well, he, the he was like, is, "That's right." If he comes to Kylo as a projection, he's not in any danger of anything happening to him. It's completely yeah. risk-free. Almost like his. Well, no, he literally well, dies from it. He's he's maximizing. That's that's fucking, no, it does that's that's from it by die. doing something that kills that's him. Fucking bullshit. But he merges with the Force. That's like yeah, he doesn't die high. from the strain. But well, no. Just, he's, I mean, that's what the film tells us that happened, right? Because uh, remember, remember, honestly, remember when like, Kylo is like, "You're not doing this. The the strain would kill yeah. you." Yeah, but that's whatever, the, whatever this chaos. film that's establishes right. as, as as rules, like it doesn't matter. It is just nonsense. Back when I was making my TLJ rage, back the first video that ever was viewed beyond a thousand views or whatever. Uh, I remember reading threads where they were saying, "I cannot wait." After Luke, uh, no, sorry, after Yoda. Lightning struck the the tree. That proves the Force Ghosts can affect the world, and I cannot wait for Yoda and Palpatine's fight as Force Ghosts. Uh, like, unironically, uh, and I was just like, "That's where we're at, folks. People are looking forward to that." We're fucking done. How would the what would happen as a result of that fight? Nothing else one, would happen. They're both one dead. of them chops they the go head. To super hell. They, yeah, they go to super. They become super force ghosts. They're on a different plane altogether. They can only visit force ghosts. <laughs> then they become even more powerful. <laughs> Strike me down, I shall become really powerful. <laughs> more powerful than I was before. Eventually, they end up in. Uh... The paths of the dead in Middle Earth. Oh, his whole ship is. <laughs> All right, let's. We can do this. How many times are we gonna have to see this fucking X-wing? Unlike Thor and Thanos, the entire climax of this movie revolves around the confrontation between the two characters who incited this devastation. Um. Okay. So, like, 
inside maybe he's, of this devastation. Maybe he's right when you cut away every single piece of context and you literally keep it to the pieces on the board who were involved in whatever happened. You know Wouldn't what I mean? Snoke be the one that started all this? Yeah, that's actually true too. But if you said, like, Kylo was involved at the inception of bad happening, so was Luke. And you know who was involved at the the climax of the film trying to sort it out? Those two same characters. Luke's one feels a bit more personal, um, but for, there was a still Thor had a lot, you know, he went through to get there, so I'm not... I, I, well, it's hard well, to say no, which no, is better. Wait, wait. Luke's one sh feels like it should be personal because it ultimately comes down to him and Kylo, but there's ultimately nothing there. Well, yeah, and nothing happened. Especially in terms of solving the problem, because it really fucking bugged me when Kylo said, uh, did you come to say you forgive me, to save my soul? And Luke just goes, no. Luke's <laughs> like, what? <Yeah. laughs> uh, you're, 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 you're a lost cause. Oh, God, yeah, that's the thing. Luke saying he, does, he, he thinks that his family member is unsavable. It's like, oh, my God, my head, help. Rewatch the OT over and over again, crying, rocking back and forth with a Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Luke that I know. Episode 7 never happened. <laughs> Episode 7 never happened. Episode 7 never happened. <laughs> Subverted expectations. Oh no. The villain who tore everything down and the hero who failed to stop them. And technically, Endgame doesn't qualify here because this Thanos isn't the same one who killed No Matthew shit. Unifor. So it's not even oh, really good, a fair because comparison. The Luke, in, uh, the Luke in The Last Jedi isn't the Luke that I remember either. Oh, there you go. That's a nice comparison. These, I mean, I know what he's saying that is, is not the same in the sense that they're from different timelines, but they are the same because he's just... Thanos from the past, like like he's completely equivalent, mm -hmm. and is intending to not only do the same thing that he did before, but he wants to do something far worse. He wants to kill everything now. So mm. to say that Thor shouldn't have any grudge against this Thanos because it's from a different time period, that doesn't. That I doesn't agree matter. that he should have a problem with this guy regardless, but I think it's a missed opportunity yeah. to not have the Thanos that met all of the Avengers. It would have been Arguing? especially yeah. someone like Iron Man who was defeated thoroughly. To then fight him again in a round two. The, one of the things I absolutely love about Thanos in Infinity War is his dialogue. I almost love everything he says. I'm like captivated. Captivated? That's the word. Watching him. Um, in, in Endgame, he's very just, I am bad. I kill. Oh. Yeah. The, the good thing about Thanos was like, you could sort of understand where he was coming from. You know, you might not support his aims or anything, but like, you oh, could I understand it. He, he, he wasn't necessarily a bad guy he he the fact that he asked to... after the more in titan and he's not the person who f throws the first punch in titan either he's talking to doctor strange and doctor strange is like i think you'll find that our resolve is as strong as yours and he goes our and then he gets hit like he he wasn't even like in fight mode he was in chat mode he's much more fascinating in infinity war than he is in endgame unfortunately yeah my and... my problem with him in infinity sorry in endgame is like when he comes to that final confrontation with with Tony and Thor and uh, and Cap, he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to destroy the entire universe now because you guys resisted me." And it's like his entire worldview has changed just because these guys put up a bit of resistance to him. You know, everything that he held dear, everything that he considered important, this idea that he could like. Um, balance the fate of the entire universe in his mind just went. Not to mention that all of that it is dependent on fucking G Nebula's head having a glitch. Yeah, well, th that's what I was saying to yeah. you earlier. It's like, all of it came down to like, you know, if she hadn't spazzed out in front of him in that one particular scene and shown a really incriminating bit of conversation, he would have had no fucking idea what what was going on? Not to mention, it happens one second before Nebula's about to go home. If that button was hit five seconds earlier, none of it would have happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just watched that... uh, in game the other day. You know, after that happens and she's like, he knows, she could have pressed the button right then. There's a lot of time. She, she could have pressed the button between yeah. then and, like, and the moment um, she's captured by Thanos. It's like, why did you press it at any point during it... that entire progression? Any time like, like when your when your plot depends entirely on like just random chance like that, 
that's when you've got shit right. Not even just random chances. Characters acting stupid. I want to go back on the uh, the whole Thanos thing because I think what you guys are saying uh, has validity. Um, but I think that like another way to look at it is like Thanos is working towards this goal and uh, he wants to achieve it and everything, and then he finds out from someone from the future that he does achieve it. So that would be awesome. But then he finds out that everything is worked for is now going to be reversed by these people messing with time. And I think, I think there's enough justification there for him to feel rightly ticked off. And that was like, and cause that could make him doubt that if he succeeds, what if someone just reverses it? They're like he can't stop people from discovering so time travel. If I go steel man you for a second, you're saying that he's like trying yeah. to create a better world and he realizes that there's no fucking way he can do it because no matter what, someone's yeah. gonna travel back in time and undo his actions. Therefore there's potential he's gonna to create stop him, yeah. he's gonna create a universe where everyone's happy. That's it. And it can't be like his will can't be challenged. I think or the problem. Reversed. But then you could make that work, but you have to give it more. I was going to say it's so quick in the it. movie. It's like in one conversation he goes from zero to one hundred in terms of one hundred percent genocide. We, yeah, we, yeah, we don't get to we don't, we don't get to see the sort of impact that that has on him. You know, it, it'd be interesting if we got to saw him, you know, be gutted that that. The idea that all of his plans have fallen through, and like the universe is always going to resist him if he tries to do this thing, you know, fair enough. If you get a little bit of time to let that sink in with him, but he just it takes it on board straight away, and he's like, "Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to just like reshape the entire universe now." <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> well, my son agrees. I got a sec. Anything anyone wants to say before I hit the old end stream button? Uh, how right. many pieces of pizza are you going to have, Wolf? Uh, I don't know. Have not decided I already, yet? Well, I already had a pizza, and I also had a burger. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone say goodbye. Yeah. Quickly, everyone say goodbye. Goodbye, quickly! Ah. Rags is gay. <laughs> you made can, can, you, can you swing off it, though? That's yeah, the question. I know. <laughs> and then we got yeah, the sausage raider from... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope there's a patch for that. Oh, I fucking love this show. <laughs> <sighs> okay, what's this? I hate yellow <laughs> Wolf, Wolf, go to the... Wolf, they scroll up, everywhere. scroll up, Wolf. Scroll up like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that Lara Croft in a sausage? <laughs> Scroll up even more. Duo of true evil. Oh my god! I'm witness for that reaction. It is time to see Beowin's creation. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Sausage Raiders oh, and the Adventures of Pipe Man. <laughs> Good God, that's the stuff of nightmares right there. Oh, the the weird folds in its body. <laughs> <laughs> the way this is horrible, but I like Blessed Pipe Man as a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's gorgeous and disgusting at the Horrifying same time. Horrifying and incredible. So the video, right? Is everyone here? Chad, are you here? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Beautiful. Oh boy, we still got three more minutes of this bullshit. Just got a fucking another video to respond to. That should only take us like three God, more hours. I'm though, so fair. tempted to just pick up my Switch and play Zelda or something until this is done. 60%, that's what Critical Drinker demanded, right? 60%? Fuck, that. Okay, easy map on Mario Kart. The end game doesn't qualify here because this Thanos isn't the same one who killed half the universe. So that's a limitation on Endgame's part and a topic for another day. The Last Jedi, meanwhile, features an emotional confrontation where Luke finally um, redeems his failure. Not emotional. How does he redeem his failure? Okay, so this is this is the whole problem in concepts. Like, first of all, we have to identify that it was a failure. Secondly, how is it that this theoretical failure was even redeemed? How does he even know what the situation is on crate? When he when he rocks up, you know what would have been really like awkward he... is if everyone piles into the Falcon, they lift off, and then um, it cuts to Hux on the ship. He goes, "They're trying to escape. Uh, keep track of them with our hyperspace tracker that we have very much established." And then they come out of hyperspace, all cheering that they've made it, and then the First Order entirely surround them and they kill them.
Maybe that's going to be episode nine. We don't. Know. <laughs> that's how episode nine <laughs> begins. But, but, We're like, oh no, god. No. Mauler, you've got this whole thing wrong. They're not tracking for smaller ships. Oh, remember? Fuck. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and they can literally see them out the window. Almost like the, you're suggesting got, that got they got can hyperspace device. the Falcon in and out of the space chase, and they can carry almost like a hundred people on the Falcon, meaning they need four trips to save everybody on the ship. Nah, I don't know. That's not. That's kind of clumsy on the big screen, though. That'd be such a shit story, wouldn't it? It's like, we're, we're being chased by the first all. there's nothing we can do. Oh, we can just ferry them out on the Falcon one by okay, one. Okay, we got that ship, remember? That we've established? It's even, got a not name. Not even just the we, Falcon. We saw it like remember, Ray, not Ray, Rose and Finn do it on that little transport ship. They could probably fit a good 20 people on there at least. Yeah, just Ray, standing Ray does room it only, well, it's important. Like, they, they jump in, Ray gets out in her escape pod, and she goes into the, the you know, <laughs> Flagship of the first she order stole fleet. Snoke's ship, dude. We don't even know what that and thing is or how much it could hold. Like, who knows? Yeah, do but they're not tr yet? they're not tracking for small ships, so it's okay. You can do that all is, that stuff. That is possibly one of the worst throwaway lines ever. It's like, how the fuck could Ray have possibly escaped the scenario? She took Snoke's escape ship. You're like, oh, oh, it was just lying around. Oh, okay, like right over there. Oh. Can Very convenient. Can you someone remember, um... explain to me what a decloaking scan is? As well? <laughs> oh, that <laughs> really so damn much. A decloaking Wait, scan? Uh, it's called Deep Nude. It's a new app. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we we did talk the, about the this the other day, scan. but the concept of a um, technology that protects you from a scan, and thus you create a scan that outdoes any scan protection technology. Which is the dumbest <laughs> fucking thing I've ever heard of. You're like, Whoa, this scan wait, wait, will prevent just... scan immune things from being scanned. You're like, what? Exactly, like, if they why wouldn't you just do this ships, all the time? <laughs> exactly. Forever. <laughs> they just call it the scan. And the just scan wars. <laughs> oh, it's like anime. It's like, we've, we've created something that's it... immune to X. And it's like, yes, but now we've created something that's X plus. Well, we've created something that's immune to X plus. It's like, oh, for fuck's this, sake. This is, this is what I said to you the other day, Mo. It's like, insulting to anime. Anime's better. No, the there's really Jedi bad anime. Is a, no, it's well, a perfect yeah, example but... of, like, writing yourself into a corner and then trying to write yourself out of it and then writing yourself into another corner and just having to constantly do that. Corner war. Over and over. Yeah, and it's just like... <laughs> If anyone uses a cloak in Star Wars from now on, we're going to be thinking, Why don't they use a cloaking scan? <laughs> the <deep> cloaking <laughs> Why don't they just ram their fucking ship into it? Exactly. What, what, even what? Is a, what even is a cloak in the context of Star Wars? Like, when I think about cloaking devices, I think of, like, Klingon bird of prey that can, well, like, typically, go invisible. Before you know it, a you... cloak in Star Wars is just going to be, like, a cloth you put on your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, it'll make it so that you're invisible to the naked eye, but a scan will still pick it up. And it's like, no, this is immune to scans too. You're like, oh wow, okay, cool. But it's not immune to decloaking scan scans. And you're like, what? Yeah. It's like but uh, they the have idea that a super that... scanner, a super scanner. It was developed as an experimental, blah blah blah. It's like someone's gonna hit you with a with a sword, and you're like, I have a shield, and it's like, yeah, but this is a shield killing sword. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm sorry, a, what? This is a shield-proof sword. <laughs> shield-proof? <laughs> oh yeah, well I brought my sword-proof shield. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Don't but let I them touch! Don't let them but touch! I, but I only use it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not literally all the time. I, I only believe... bust it out for special occasions, like bar mitzvahs and sword fights. It's, I'm not even kidding, when, when the guy says, we ran a decloaking scan and we can detect, it's like, what? Why weren't you running that previously? Like, what? It's very expensive and our budget got cut a little bit last year. The whole year film after the explodes when he said, well, the whole film explodes several times. Someone says, regarding the decloaking, military advancement. Uh -oh. yeah, so, so, someone said, regarding decloaking, military advancement exists. Still cut, <laughs> still cut it out. Still cut it out. My God, what the like, fuck? Uh, like, what are you okay, military, okay, like, hold, like hold on, hold on, or something. Okay, let, let's try it again. Regarding decloaking, military advancement exists. That's what Hobo Frodo said. Thank you, Hobo. What Frodo. do hobbits know about war? <laughs> Nothing. You've, you've shed light on this whole situation. Yeah, and honestly, I'm not questioning the fact that they might be able to develop a scan that can break cloak. I'm questioning the fact that they don't use it constantly if they have it. They decide yeah. we'll just use this one-off now because 
it, yeah, it, that, that's the yeah, whole but point. is it is it like yeah, you, you can stupid. only use it for like ten minutes at a time, or it'll burn out your <laughs> scanners or something? Like is you there know, a reason for you it? know that the kind of hack writing has to come with it. So we ran the clock said, Why didn't you run it earlier? We could only run it once per ten hours. Why? Because it's on a. Ch we have to recharge it. The batteries can only take so <laughs> much, or else they're overloaded. And there's this guy who has to like run a like a little fucking turbine. He's like running a thing. You know, like how you get those torches that only work if you. They spin have six thousand hamsters yeah. on hamster wheels. It's like I. Captain, I cannot do it. I cannot do another. <laughs> you can't change scan. the laws of physics, Captain. <laughs> Fucking terrible movie. <laughs> so, uh, it's like riding a horse and you're trying to shoot a bullet with another bullet while upside down and blindfolded. <laughs> Rags, Rags, do you remember EFAP? I think it's like EFAP 7. It's the one where we have logic on and we're talking about how to make. The bomb drops make sense. They magnetize yeah. to their targets, and then someone makes a joke about how you have a gun that shoots bullets that magnetize to their targets to kill them. And it's like, why do you just fucking shoot a bullet? <laughs> <laughs> why do you need to magnetize? <laughs> It's it's like almost like Warhammer 40k kind of over engineering to every <laughs> kind of possible. <laughs> It's like the army is ran by retard. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need the exterminatus protocol right no, now. We need a double exterminatus. <laughs> we have there are okay. So there's three new memes that I wanna I wanna show just because Shad might be leaving to, uh, uh, before we can see them. So I gotta make sure he sees these. All right. All One right. sec. Show me. The fun. There's two. Okay. Wait, uh, uh, sorry, I'm very drunk right now. Uh, <laughs> Am I the only one who's not drunk? No, I'm not drunk. Yeah. I'm not drunk, I'm just fat. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a couple of inaccuracies here. Uh, <laughs> you know, when, when you get Bayo and making memes after you, that's when you know you've succeeded. You made it big. <laughs> oh, How awesome is that, nice. dude? He got his gambits in and everything. That is brilliant. I love it. <laughs> I Die love how the, the snakes is like, but why? <laughs> I was only snaking. It's what I Yo, do. Seriously though, in Australia, that's a, that's enough justification to get rid of them. And I know people Racist. people got really ticked off when I shared that in the video that snakes are protected. I'm like, you guys have clearly this one wasn't on the farm in Australia. <laughs> like, no, we we understand. Like, fucking everything in Australia is out to kill you, so you might as well just get in there. First. There are reasons why me, Wolf, Rags, everyone won't visit Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Failure is the greatest teacher, as Yoda said, oh, and this final up. showdown ties into the theme of the movie beautifully. It's also no, beautiful- it How do you even gorgeous. say that when you said- okay. Hey, we made it four seconds, everybody! <laughs> so, so beautiful. Failure is the best teacher. Luke failed and he learned from it. There you go, best movie ever. It's like, ah. Oh. Alright, but, but let's, let's try and strongman his point. What, what is Luke learning from his failure? Uh, if I was to steel man his point, I would then say, uh, Luke judged too quickly to try and solve a problem instead of thinking it through and caused a villain to be created. And in this scenario, when Kylo is trying to, like, say, hey, you fucked up, you did everything, he doesn't choose to deny that claim. He simply says, yes, and, and life goes on, and... Uh, you can... But, but I got if nothing. he learnt from that, then wouldn't he be trying to save Kylo now? But he... Kylo asks if he's nope. trying to save him, and he's like, nope. 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 <laughs> you see, so, so Luke, he hasn't really learnt from that yet. Luke Skywalker learned the very valuable lesson that murder isn't always the first solution to any problem that you have. <laughs> Sometimes it's the second solution. <laughs> Sometimes it's a close second. Well, well, if he's learning from something, if he, if, because he doesn't want to redeem Kylo, maybe the thing he is learning is that I should have just killed him then. Why did I hesitate? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I should have killed him faster. <laughs> Imagine that was the glorious arc that Luke experiences. He tells Ray, You need to kill your family members when you realize they're being <laughs> evil. Kill them before they can kill you and make you live on my own. <laughs> Ray has like a moment where she introspectively realizes how like glorious oh, and altruistic yeah, that, that is. Oh, that would have solved a lot of my problems if I just killed Kylo in that throne room, huh? His death scene is really powerful. Because of the visual. That's it. Yeah, that but we talked it. about that. Unironically, last argue to me why his death scene is meaningful beyond the fucking visual. Yeah. What and, what and, does and... what does Luke actually accomplish in this movie? What does he learn? What does he do? He it dies. Fuck it, fucking nothing. <laughs> like I have n <sighs> I hate this movie.
Movie created my career. <laughs> It's not pointless. Shut up. That's like saying Obi-Wan's death scene is pointless. Watch a movie for its theme. No! No. You can't relate wrong. Luke's death scene to Obi-Wan's scene and say, like, Steve, if you think one's meaningless and the other one is too. How is it that you don't like this movie? You could say that. And yeah, we addressed this in the last stream as well. There's a lot of reason that you can actually find with Obi-Wan doing what he did. But when you look at Luke, you just start getting confused. Yeah, everybody has a different account and they conflict. Obi Wan, like, look at his his character throughout A New Hope. He always seemed like he knew what he was doing. He was there to impart a bit of wisdom to Luke. He was there to get him started on his journey. He served a logical purpose within the story. We all got it. We all understood it. Then you look at Luke in Last Jedi, and he's fucking nothing. He's just this confused mess of a character. The screenplay doesn't know what they want him to do. We don't know what he want, what he's supposed to be. He's just there. He says random bullshit lines to Ray, tries to teach her lessons that don't mean anything. It all comes to nothing because he didn't the, even the people, finish his lessons. The people who wrote his character didn't know what he was supposed to be. They resented him even being in it. Did I tell you guys? And they like, just, like, this is a thing that was said by I think it was Ryan Johnson. It's going to be in part three or four of my TFA series when I finally release it. <laughs> um, but uh, Luke, Mark, was confused when asked what the third lesson was because he obviously was like, there wasn't one. And when Ryan Johnson is asked about it, and again, it could be someone else's quote, I'm pretty sure it says, uh, they say like, the third lesson is to be interpreted by the audience. Oh, Fuck off, oh, Ryan. If, if, that, if that was, that's a cop out, like. It's like, so... how, it's like 101, how to be a shit writer. It blows my mind that people, like sensible people, who are probably quite intelligent in day-to-day -day life will defend this movie. Well, they would look at you <laughs> like, the same way in reverse. They'd be like, intelligent people criticize this movie. Yeah, but I'm always like, okay, fine. Tell me why you like it. Tell me why it's good. Have you seen <laughs> what arguments are usually... This is the thing, you're talking to people who do have done, I want to say, at least five streams on TLJ. Some of the video is bad. If you liked it on an emotional level, that's really subjective, and I'm not going to take that away from you, but, like, objectively, yeah. you must look at the script. You must look at the... And that's where you're entering a problem. A lot of people think there's no such thing as objectively assessing art. But if you have an objective standard nope. to go by... Well, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? Who, cares, who cares about your objective standard? That only applies for you. You valued it. Who cares? No, but if the, the standard is understood, for instance, like consistency, someone does something that establishes something that's now should be canon, and then they completely contradict it later on, you could say quite objectively that that was bad. True, but we the person's get, response will be, I value the theme far over, I value whether or not the space makes sense that the ca that the bomb would fall at that speed. Yeah, but that, the blah, blah, that's blah. an assessment on what an individual values, which is subjective, and it doesn't undermine the objective standard that yeah, I Yeah, and they would say that to. they do not value the 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 objective value you've brought up and they wouldn't even give a mm. shit about and it. And my so. response to that is that I wouldn't I don't really care what you value in this regard because they it would say the same back to argument. you. Well, this is what I mean. The, the, it's like a spiral. My points. Well, this is the, this, this is why this I don't is... argue that it's a it's a I don't think you the whole premise of a fucking story is progression. The, a story is yeah. built on the idea of progressing A to B to C to D. So. It's not um, an arbitrary standard. And... This is literally the thing that it is. So it's an objective issue whether or not you consider the standard or not. I don't care. It's an objective issue. So if they were like, I don't, I don't care that um, Yoda casts lightning, just because the other Force Ghosts don't do shit all in the OT, that doesn't mean it's a problem. I was like, it's a massive problem. An absolutely massive problem. problem. It fucks everything up. And you go, no, it that's your problem with the massives. It's a, it's a subjective issue that you have and no one else does. And it's like, you're full of shit. <laughs> we, we, we need to get one of these people on this uh, Dude, on you need EFAP to watch something. EFAP with Major Lee. Me and Rags debated a man who would, enjoys this movie. It was a disaster. His, Rags, uh, how would you well, describe it? He's famous it? for saying that you can, you should just look at women, and that's a reason um, to like the movie. If, I was gonna say, fact, Critical though. Drinker, you need to check this shit out. You'll love it. You'll be able to look what? into the mind of someone who defend Rags, are you there? I, uh, it's funny what Rags remembers that experience like. I, I like this is the weird thing. Like, I like to think of myself as a fairly <laughs> person, and like I could I could talk to someone who defends this movie, like just 
you know, we'll have a conversation about why you think it's good. And I'll I'll put my points across, you can put your points across. But I feel like they won't be able to do that because they'll just get angry that someone doesn't like it. We have experience in the field, and we will tell you that it's a fruitless endeavor, but we will continue to engage in it, hoping that one day we'll be proven wrong in that assessment. Seriously, right, though, check sorry. out the major lead debate. Uh, fun <laughs> fact about the major lead debate is that um, I was listening to it live, uh, and then I was living in student accommodation at the time, and I, I locked my key in my room and then listened to it through the door of my room because it was still playing. <laughs> <laughs> And how was that experience, Jay? Oh, it was really fun. I had to wait for fucking hours for someone to come. It was great. And then they were, as they were unlocking the door, they were like, who's this guy defending TLJ? And you're like, you wouldn't understand. Yeah, that's, how long, that's how long it took. By the time they unlocked my door, uh, you had finished. And oh. you know how long you faps are. <laughs> oh no, you were sitting outside your six hours. I was about to say, yeah, that was like six hours. That that was a long EFAB from what I remember. Or at least it felt long. I, I can't looked, remember if it was a long. I locked my phone in my room as well, so I had to make, wait for my flat uh, for my flatmate to get home so that he could call people to let me into my room. You know what was a good debate? The arrival debate. <laughs> hey, Wolf, you like, like the arrival, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I like how the people who said we were wrong couldn't agree with each other as to why we were wrong. This kind of sort of proves our point. <laughs> The Arrival is a confusing movie, there's no doubt. Hey, Critical right, Drinker, confusing. have you seen The Arrival? Uh, no, I wait, have uh, indeed, yeah. What um, do you think? I thought it was kind of shit, and <laughs> actually, like... This is interesting, actually, I didn't realize... So a lot of people do think that the not-so-great... Great... Bait to great... Fucking hell. <laughs> Not-so-great debate guy did put up a fight that was... I honestly thought Major Lee was way better than him. Uh, I think you... so too. I think that the not so great debate is more entertaining. I agree with that, actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, the, the not so great debate was like watching a guy come to some kind of realization, like <laughs> live on air. It was like watching someone lose their religion uncomfortably. <laughs> yeah. <in front> of <laughs> the it, it was like watching a flat earther realize that the <laughs> Earth is round. You know, like the, they really have that moment where they pause, and it's like. Oh, Shit. Just, but, just but the bro. moment where he's like trying so desperately to defend something, and then he's crying in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if your if your vote is neither or both, just don't vote. You're fine. <laughs> Mahler is pulling a toe. But Mahler, Mahler, no vote is a vote for Trump. How do you, I? I'm going to divorce you if you continue to vote for Trump. Which right? means that uh, I think you mean no vote is a vote chat, for Trump. Don't vote. You can't talk about you're, this, Jay. You refuse to rim job him. But you're complicit <laughs> in this, Mauer, because remember, Trump is literally Hitler. I don't. Is that true? Is he liter Is he the literal incarnation of heat lore? Well, if Twitter's to be believed, then he is. Yeah. Was Trump born after Hitler died? Because if that's true, then he is the reincarnation. That makes Can sense, we get right? Some I mean, he is an old man. He is an old man. He, he might not he act is, like yeah. it, but he's like seventy-two or something. Speaking of seventy-two, it reached seventy-two percent on Major Lee for a moment there. Aha. And it is once again. There we go, guys. Thanks, confirmed. Trump. 72. Okay, so, yeah, so it's, it's confirmed objectively that it's the absolute truth that Major Lee was a better debater than not-so-great debate guy. I can't imagine uh, a worse debate than the fucking Major Lee. <laughs> well, go <laughs> watch this the entire not so great debate and you'll find the worst debater on the <laughs> The entirety of his arguments were going, come on, whatever you said. Something <laughs> okay, bad well, he, the, the entirety of the Debate guys' arguments were something to the effect of, "Well, you see, Luke is old, and oh my, God, my personal yeah. favorite, Dude. I'm axing you. Dude, is this part of the Disney fanatical Star Wars universe? Go back now, and watch. Uh, yeah. Yeah, now, Jay, I, I, tell me, what is? I, I felt, yeah, I felt bad for you, Will, because you tried so hard to pin him down on what the fuck a Disney fanatical <laughs> universe was." <laughs> And he it never, ever, sense. like, yeah. I, I presume he tried to say fantastical or something like that, but... I think the whole overall point is that Disney canon means that you don't consider any canon previously. I think that's what his whole point was. I th I, th I guess it's he was trying point. to say, like, it's that, that same old argument of, like, oh, it's space wizards with, like, laser swords and stuff, so you can't oh, hold goodness. any kind of standards to it. And it's like, well... I hate arguments like that. If, if, uh, if you're going to go by your that, standards. if you're going to go by that argument, then like you know, you know, Ray could like jump up into space and punch the Death Star in the face and blow up with like a single punch or something. Like, wait, the Death Star's the, face? 
Yeah. That's Star okay, is enough. face. I, th I I just thought it was a ball with an anus. <laughs> it's got it's got it's got a, it's got a dish or something. Ball with an anus. You could anus probably punch that. <laughs> <laughs> um. What was it? Yeah, I was gonna say though the the major league debate. You can see uh, there's a progression at one point. So he opens with saying something like, uh, "It was obvious that Kylo Ren and Ray were in love." His evidence in total is they touched fingers, and by the time we talk about it for a good half an hour, what he wants us to definitively agree with is not that they were in love, which is what he previously stood for. He moves the goalposts all the way over to, you have to admit that there's something happening between the two of them. Can we get that guy back again? Major like, Lee? <laughs> I don't no, know where no, to no, find no, him. The, the, we... the guy from the not-so-great debate. Just oh, get him on the c -fab. I don't know. Major Lee <laughs> now. No, Major Lee made me sad. <laughs> Did he make you majorly sad? No, he mm. made me extremely sad. He made me fanatically sad. I like it how you don't even know the name of the second guy. <laughs> it's yeah. like the guy from that debate. You didn't even know who it was. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even Major know what Lee? his name is. I don't either. Major no, Lee's the, the second so debate guy. Oh, yeah, but that's the first debate. Oh fuck! I don't know what's happening. Anymore. Uh, who do you want to? Who was in the debate? Even that was, was me, Wolf, and Guy. And the guy. The, the in guy. fairness, Guy didn't have name, <laughs> right? Did Guy have name? I don't remember. He had Discord name, but it's been a year since that <laughs> happened, Twitter, so I don't right? remember it. What's the chances that he's even still alive after all this? Well, he's alive. Probably died from an accident. <laughs> Why would he dude be with no dead? <laughs> I mean, honestly, if he is dead, it might be for the better. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a meme that got blocked, by the way. The problem with memes is, is I always feel awful trying to pause the memes because they're really funny, but when they do film ones, I'm like, I want to get a let it run, but then the fucking thing is like, you're trying to sell the movie to make money. It's like, have you seen what we're looking at? <laughs> it's not... whatever. Anyway, is everybody happy for me to... To, uh, to to continue the video that we we I'm really happy. Wait, 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 what? We're watching continue. your video. Wait, it was what? a video, yes. <laughs> We're doing is it. Is there still it's more to this? Shut up. That's like saying Obi Wan's death scene is pointless. Watch a movie for its themes and subtleties for once, instead of taking everything Watch at face value. Oh, Didn't you I make found, this argument I, to I found... him about Thor in Endgame? Don't even yeah. go there. I I found the name of the not so great debate guy. <laughs> oh, his name was Death and Karn, and he plays Roblox. Death and Karn? He yeah. plays Roblox. Oh, tell he me he's is, online right can now. Can he handle can he handle Roblox? Did he forget? Oh, I don't I don't know. I'm not friends with him. Did he forget Why to not? finish the name? <laughs> Why would I be? Wow, that's fucking cruel. Yeah, that was a mean. Chad, it's not <sighs> Death Incarnate. It's literally just Death and Karn. I don't think he understood <laughs> what <laughs> and Oh, I love means. Karn. Is it Karn Definitely. as in like I love Karn and the Cobb? No, it, it's all one word and it's death in Karn and it just ends there. <sighs> so it's uh, like he forgot that there were three more is... letters in the word. Just think though, like that debate that he had with you guys, that was like probably the highlight of his life. I don't think that was the highlight of his life. I think, <laughs> like, I think that was literally the worst day of his life. <laughs> that was often a shot. man cries. No, no, no. no that was a shot. <laughs> that was a shot of greatness. You know, he didn't he, take it. But... Totally I wonder if I wonder if his opinion of TLJ has changed since then. I wonder if he death and corn people are saying <laughs> chat. <laughs> How did he return the stone to Natalie Portman? <laughs> he had to use America's ass. He had to use freedom powers. Hey look. Uh, I don't know if you guys have the same pause as the stream does right now. But there was probably a guy editing this where a laser goes to the behind of Luke and he's cut it really badly, the editor. So <laughs> the laser has two gaps between Luke and the laser because they probably were limited on the, uh, the abilities of special effects at that point. That's really obvious. <laughs> Speaking of which, that's the final nail in the coffin for Thor. He has no endgame in this movie. It really feels like they that didn't know what to do with him at the end compared to the masterful ending. Maybe this isn't his end. Yeah, that's <laughs> assuming his yeah this isn't his yeah. end. He's literally it's, gonna be the next exactly. Guardian. <laughs> yeah, it, it's assuming his arc had to have been wrapped up in that movie. And I mean, there's already precedent that character arcs extend beyond one movie with <gasps> what happened in Ragnarok and also Infinity War and stuff. There's some great moments with Age of Ultron when he, particularly when he's talking about vision. And like that was his ultimate, you know, goal for for himself. That was his that was his <laughs> well, his vision for what he wanted to be. 
mm. and that was taken away from him. And it, it's quite well conveyed. The The whole theme of that movie is like potential squandered because of flaws within within a person, within an idea. And it carries through with everything. And it, it actually plays out pretty well. It's just it relies too much on like comedy and, and humor. Hard to take him seriously as a villain. Fucking, yeah, okay. Well, we don't want to get sidetracked. We'll continue. <laughs> Wait, we wouldn't want to get sidetracked. We side wouldn't want to get sidetracked. It really feels like they didn't know what to do with him at the end compared to the masterful endings Tony and Steve got. In the grand scheme of things, Thanos was just a minor slip up in the middle of his story. And I don't, I don't agree with that at all. No. no, not me either. Like uh, the fact that he blames himself so drastically for not killing Thanos when he had the chance, that's that's a big thing for his character arc. Just like I hope Far From Home is a great movie, but a lot of people are already being like, eh, I don't think it's going to be good. And I was like, oh well, maybe. Wait, why are people think it's not going to be good? Because a lot of people don't like Homecoming. So Pete, those people are wrong. <laughs> They're wrong. For one, once, I actually agree with Jay on something. One day that debate will happen. Endings, Tony and Steve Wait, got. In the grand who, scheme who of here? With, with what rock have you been living under that you don't know that people uh, don't like Homecoming? There are people well, in the I've chat the right point. now who hate Homecoming. Everybody who hates Homecoming, put a H in the chat. H. Oh, wait. See? Oh, no, wait. The chat. wait, I can't. There's no Homecoming way. was no dumb. Way. Homecoming was trash. CJ, where have you been? Where have you been, Jay? Well, that was two people. You can always find a H two from from. Oh, Homecoming oh, oh Jesus right. Christ! All right, everyone, oh, no. don't no. don't be shy. If you thought Homecoming was underwhelming, no garbage, no garbage. If you thought it Drupal. was garbage, put a H in the chat because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of those people. <laughs> Vulture was cool though. That's, That's weird because I think it's one of the top three. In the MCU, as do I. I enjoyed Homecoming. I Thanks. mean, th there were there were parts in it that annoyed me, but overall, I enjoyed it. What? Uh, what, what? What's the biggest? The thing only that arguments you? I've seen from it come from people that uh, are talking about it from a purely adaptation standpoint. Which, sure, fine, but what about the objective standpoint outside? Yeah, of that? I I will completely disregard any argument about the comics. I just could not care less. Right. I've I mean, I can, I, I can personally Wait, totally what? understand that because I mean, I hate the Expanse show for what it does to the books, and I refuse to watch it because of that. But I'll admit to that. Yeah. Wait, Sh Shad. What was your main problem with uh, Homecoming? Um, uh, the MJ replacement. Uh, like for me, she does not come across likable at all. She's this, you know. I'm, like, I'm going to second you on that one, on sir. What? She's she's an arrogant, like uh, fucking um, self possessed arsehole. Like I just couldn't get behind her at all. I just yeah, thought she see, was annoying. And and so she didn't. I I don't like her as a character. And now that she's going to be the main love interest, who's not like, even in the movie that much though. That's the problem. Yeah, they're, setting her, was, they're setting her up for jerk. like that. We're talking about this movie. We're not talking about the next one or anything. Yeah, yeah. When she was in Homecoming, she was being a jerk. And so it didn't really make me like her as a character. And I, I mean, I'm a, and I guess this is the thing because, you know, you don't like comic book arguments, but I'm a big fan of the comic books. Spider-Man was like my big number one. I appreciate like, comic, comic book, book arguments, but we're talking about the yeah. film separated from. Yeah. The, uh, and even comic separated, book. she didn't come across as a likable character. But on top of that, the fact that they replaced Mary Jane, the true Mary Jane with this, I'm like, what? Did you like see in the trailer when, uh, Peter's on a date with her, like for um, Far From Home, and he's like, Oh, you look nice tonight. And she's like, Oh, what? <laughs> she makes a joke out of it. Yeah, does that, she does makes that, a joke does out that of it. Imply it that the only value I have is to look good. And he's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And then she and says, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. Come on. No, 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 no. The, I, really I don't accept kidding. that. That's a good That's a good joke. That's a kind of joke that we would write. You know, yeah, because at the yeah. end of... Um, because but you know when someone says Homecoming, they're kidding, but the they're not thing. really? Yeah, see, that sounded like she was being serious. You can't just oh, fear that. Serious. You can't just go, oh, she said she was joking, but she's not really. All right, well, look, we'll find out from the movie. If she did the thing. exact same thing at the end of Homecoming when Peter leaves the yeah. class. She's like, where are you going? What are you doing? And he's like, uh, and she goes, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Whatever the hell you're doing.
He's like, nah, I'm just joking. Go on. But she is though. She is low key stalking him, and that's actually already proven in the in in the trailer because she knows that he's Spider Man, and so that might have actually been a very genuine. Where the hell are you going? But then she tries to gloss over the fact. <laughs> yes, and we could infer the opposite of every action everyone takes. I don't know. What it is. could be, but but there, but there's some validity in that assessment based on what's happening. I'm surprised that that is the major issue with Homecoming when she's barely in it. Well, that's all, like it had more of an effect on me because I remember I I like the comic books and stuff, and so it, it rubs me the wrong man. Like I said, I liked Homecoming overall, but there were certain little things that irked me, and that was one of them. I actually uh, this is the this is the benefit of being so detached from the comics. When she's in the detention thing, and he's like, "Why are you even here?" Because she's not in supposed to be in detention. She's drawn a picture of. The guy who's organizing detention and like she said she's got like a line under it that says like he's pondering his purpose of his life i thought that was funny, it was funny. I, i'm not saying that's not funny either no my point is that, that she's, she's nice not person? like i i'm not comparing her to the mary jane of the raimi films or even the comics yeah. or whatever else i she's just this character she's like a, a character homecoming is stupid as hell because they want you to buy that a blue collar worker can reverse engineer alien tech and not gain unwanted attention from the fbi in a day with powerful you weapons out of the streets so it took them, what we can only infer was years to reverse engineer a flying piece of gear. That's all it is. It's nothing more special than that. And then they also have a rifle that can disintegrate someone, which is no more special than the rifles that they fucking had in the start. Um, the idea that they're not noticed by the FBI, the whole thing is that they only steal from people who are extremely low level. And they only sell to extremely low level. Even Tony says that they're below the Avengers grade. This is all assessed in the film. This is part of why I get frustrated that people hate Homecoming. You're really not taking advantage of all the effort they put into the script to explain all of the things that happen in it. One of the things I was impressed then, with... There's... there's, But then it never deals with this whole idea that, like, there's this weapon smuggling operation going on. Like, we're using alien tech to... to Spider-Man literally stops it. Yeah, he does, but against Tony Stark's, like, urging, against Tony's you know, advice. Yeah, but Tony's Whereas recommending Tony that just... they deal... No, Tony re recommended that the police take care of it. But then that's never touched upon. Like, he never just notifies the police and then deals with yes, it. Yes, he does. He calls like... the FBI and they turn up on the ship and that's part of why Spider-Man fucked up. Does he? Yes. Yeah. This is he, part he of did, why yeah. people hate this movie for no fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. Tony literally I says I to Peter, I'm, I'm I did listen, I did care, he called the FBI. Fucking piece of fucking. It's true. Like, I'm, <laughs> I, I gotta I'm not disagreeing with music. you. Two. This is what I mean. And I think I Tom just... Holland did a great job as Peter Parker. I enjoyed him, and it was the younger, youngest Peter Parker we've seen, which was more true to again comic books, which I love because Peter the Parker's youngest, always been. Uh... A... The yeah. youngest Aunt May we've ever seen as well. Well, that that was different. He's not okay. So that actress is not young by most standards. She just looks incredible well, for her age. She's... She's young compared to uh What the fuck? <laughs> what, the, what was that? <laughs> oh, who was right. that coming from? Who who was that? that? Is that coming from Wolf's Pizza? I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> well people told me to put on elevator music, so instead I got ice cream truck music. Look, okay, <laughs> chat, I apologize oh, for getting angry. <laughs> I just ice cream, I constantly there, there's you again thinking about ice cream. <laughs> I constantly like hear this. about how Homecoming sucks, and I just don't like hearing references that are inaccurate. That's just- I, I apologize. I'm gonna withdraw my statement about the, the police interference then. The, the FBI were called, so that, that criticism of the plot is negated. But the MJ is largely unlikable. It doesn't ruin the movie. The yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll stand barely, by that one. Barely in it, so... I like her. <laughs> Well, this is the thing, I'm not even addressing a counter-argument, I'm just addressing that even if it was valid, who the fuck cares? <laughs> well, that's what I mean! I'm not saying it ruined the movie for me, it's a good movie! That was just one of my pet peeves. I can't believe, literally, the fucking straw poll, 40% of people... I know! Incorrect. People hate Homecoming! Also, some people are recommending we check out the High Top Reviews video, so me and Fringy have actually oh. watched it, we hate yes. it, and we're gonna address it on it's EFAP awful. eventually. So it's what? terrible. High Top Reviews has a video explaining why Homecoming is terrible. His arguments are fucking right. worthless. And EFAP is going to explain why. Video. Homecoming is underrated. I said it. Come at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how's everybody doing?
I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Mahler? <laughs> Not good, apparently. <laughs> no? <laughs> it's a shame people don't like the amazing movie that is Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm going to repeat something in chat. Why are we talking about Spider-Man? Because Spider-Man <laughs> is coming out. <laughs> Just something that's bothered me over time because I've never seen like a really strong argument against it outside of it's not like the comics. We don't like that Mary Jane is not a white redhead, which to me I'm like I understand that from an adaptation point of view, but that's it. And then the other comment that really fucking bothers me, which is Spider Man, uh, his life as Spider Man never interrupts his life as Peter Parker. That's what the movie never addresses, and to me that's just utter bullshit. You didn't watch the fucking film. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 sta no, that statement's was, yeah. bullshit. Like, in yeah, the context but, of the movie, like, yeah, he's constantly wrestling with that. He tries to take a girl to prom, and he runs into the villain. <laughs> like, how is it not affecting his life? No, I, I would never mark down the script for that reason. So, no. So, can I just highlight the duality of YouTube? Back to back, these comments. Mauler, Civil War is an overrated film. Mauler, thanks for reminding me why I subbed to you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Well... <laughs> How can you overrate Civil War, though? Civil War's so fucking good. I can't wait to make my video on that. It's gonna take ten years, but it'll happen. And I like that the Rags liked it. That made me happy, because I like Rags. He's a doggo. Yay. <laughs> wait, Shad, it's what do you think of Civil War? Oh, I love Civil War. That's one of my all-time favorites. Good, you can stay. I, I say War, this tacitly, but are all six of us positive about Civil War in this chat? Because I know that a lot of people hate Civil yes. War, too. Yes. Yay. It's the only time when the Avengers actually <laughs> have to wrestle with real-world consequences for what they do. Hmm. My only criticism of Civil War is that Tony's motivations aren't that well-defined, I think, compared to Cap's. I disagree. I think, like, he could have done with more... To, to build him up to where the, the sort of path that he goes down. I disagree. There's just not quite enough there. We can't, I was about to say, we can't do this. We go from like a, a homecoming discussion to an eye. We got, we got to continue with this guy's video. It's yeah, taken us five it. hours to not get <laughs> yeah. through this video. <laughs> That's a different how long, how long have we actually been? It's been five hours at least. I love the idea that we're like, okay. guys, we're going a bit long. Even for EFAP, we're going a bit long. <laughs> like, we're, gonna, we're gonna reach it's ten hours video. soon. Like, Anyway, is everyone ready for me to press play on this ch video to finally get to the end, maybe? Nope. Uh, again, compared to the masterful endings Tony and Steve got. Mahler, wait, wait, wait. How do you feel about Interstellar? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. People in chat are gonna be like, "Bull's wrong on Interstellar. It's a very good film." <laughs> oh man! Does anyone in this Someone chat asked, love is Interstellar? This is a testament to how bad the video is that it's taken us this long I don't... to get through it. I, I will jump in and say, like, the in ending for Interstellar is absolute nonsense. Yeah, almost like the rest of the film. Like oh, up until a certain point, I was all right with it, but the idea that love crosses Interstellar. Boundaries of fuck off. No. <laughs> Why do you hate I love? I didn't get that from Interstellar. I'm missing something. Like, look, I'm, I'm from, look, Rags, I'm from you really, you're, de you're derailing this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring up Interstellar another time because I liked it. But yeah, anyway. you, you, well done, Rags. I, you look, actually managed I, look, to do man, it. <laughs> I'm from Scotland. Love isn't what we do here. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that I know that, isn't it Chris Terrio is one of the writers? Chris Terrio. And that just means your film is dead at that point. Let, let me let me confirm that quickly. Um, because... He's the guy who wrote Batman vs. Superman, isn't it? Writer of Batman v Superman and the Justice League. Is that a joke? No. This movie's gonna be awful. The idea Some that you've got... First of all, J.J. Abrams, which you, you fucked. J.J. Abrams with this mystery box bullshit. And what's his face who wrote two of the worst movies of all? You wrote Argo, apparently. <laughs> People liked Argo. That's something. This movie's going to be awful. Oh god, he's writing Justice League Part. Is it called Justice League Part Two? <laughs> <laughs> Is that happening? There was a second part. Are you Are Why you kidding me? Writers Zack Snyder and Chris Terrio. Oh god. No. <laughs> oh, I can't uh, wait. I can't oh, Jesse wait. Eisenberg is coming oh. back as Lex Luthor. I can't Why? wait. It'll be Who great. Who wanted that? <laughs> oh dear, really? I can't oh, wait to see Justice Lex League headed by Aquaman and Wonder Woman. <laughs> it's gonna be so <laughs> oh. great. You guys ready for me to press play again? Um... 
I believe so. <laughs> I'm, I think it rags is like, how do I derail this again? Wh which movie? I'm, 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 gonna, I'm probably going to round out this video and then probably call it a night, I think. Oh, so we need a few more hours then. Yeah. <laughs> Wolf, Wolf, what's your favorite Soon Lord of the Rings movie and why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, subvert expectations. Say one of the names and then one word and then go. Fellowship the of the Ring. Desolation of the Smoke. Shut the hell Desolation up. Of my... No. That is, no, I, that I is would the rather... wrong answer. No, I'd rather shoot myself than watch that again. <laughs> His arc is complete. His story in Last Jedi has a sense of finality to it because the heroic. His story is, is complete. It's not even over. He's in the next one. <laughs> There's no arguing that his story is complete. The argument is that it sucked. Hey, wait, can you say that though? If his story sucked, would it still be complete? Well, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> no one's really it. dead. Is that no one's is really thing. gone, is, dude. Is this, no one's really gone. Oh, is this God. their benchmark though? It's like, oh, it has a sense of finality to it because he dies? <laughs> like, is that all you got? I just like the idea that the film was I'm only... I'm not saying it's a good sense of finality. Like, if, if the film only ever showed Luke on the toilet, he farts, dies, then he goes, well, in fairness, <laughs> it's complete. The story is finished. Yeah. <laughs> he went through an arc. Much like Luke at the end of The Last Jedi, he went out like a wet fart. Hey, Rags, what's your favorite video game and why? <laughs> and he didn't Now, now, Wolf, we can't be derailing this all the time. Yeah, Wolf, what the <laughs> fuck? We have to stay focused. It's actually starting to get light here where I am. I can see it in my window. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're, we're definitely. Was, was it light when we started? Yeah. So we've come full circle. <laughs> <gone through> what, <laughs> a, what a poetic arc. This That's a great it. arc, no matter what the context is. Even if JJ had a plan, which nobody would believe, but let's just say he did, Ryan Johnson threw it away and went his own direction. So imagine. Having a plan for three films, someone else did film two, and it's the complete opposite of what you intended. Imagine trying to write film three as the guy who had the plan from film one. Yep. You're fucked. Yeah, I just, it, I, it, I honestly, just let Con <laughs> just get rid of it, Last Jedi, pretend it doesn't exist. But then, who do you blame for all this? Ultimately. Disney. <laughs> you have no choice but at like, this point. Pin it, pin it down to someone specific. Like, someone over, oversaw this, and someone approved it. You know, we had JJ starting off with The Force Awakens and then just basically handing over the reins to Ryan Johnson saying, do whatever the fuck you want with it, don't mind. And then he did, and what he did was awful. But then is that Ryan Johnson's fault? Is it like Kathleen Kennedy's fault for approving it? A lot it? of people is blame J Kathleen Kennedy. Is it JJ Abrams' fault for saying like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. I don't, I don't mind. This is my outline, but you can use it or not. I don't know that he necessarily had a choice in that anyway. And uh, let's remember that if you were like, why didn't he complain about where the direction of episode 8 went? It's like, I don't think he can contractually do that. Probably some clause that's like, you will not disparage where this blah 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 goes. Not that I think that he would. I'm sure that he would just be on board with it anyway, because he recently signed a deal where he got, was it half a billion dollars or something? Uh, what, for Bad Robot? Something like that, yeah, and he, to work with Warner Brothers, I think it was, and it's just like, when you read that, you're like, whoa. He just, he just got $500 million. But you just think, like, for, for something with so much money behind it, and so much at stake, the idea that you can just run roughshod over whatever plans there were before, it's just mind-boggling. Like... It's to subvert expectations! Which yeah. it did. You can't just have anybody out there subverting expectations. I, know. <laughs> I mean, doing the obvious, the thing that the fans want, that would actually make a good movie, that's just ridiculous. So anyway... <laughs> okay, since we'll see more of him, but again, dealing with the repercussions of Thanos was kind of a major thing for his character. But I guess it really wasn't in the grand scheme of things. Now look. I really hate Last Jedi. I'd probably rather rewatch Attack of the Clones since it's at least way funnier and meme filled. But Last Jedi is not the worst movie ever made, and I have to give credit where I see it. Oh, no. Luke's emotional journey. I'm afraid you've given credit where it didn't deserve it. It's not the worst movie ever made. What high praise. I don't understand why people even say that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've probably said Oops. it, to be honest. It's not it's the worst movie ever made. Because like, people would go to the room 
but the room is so bad it's good. So. Yeah, trad sense being bad. Hey, you can't use the word bad in conjunction with the room. There is only good. There is only masterpiece. The room in is a masterpiece. The <laughs> so, could the Last Jedi be one of the worst movies ever? I don't know. It's one of the worst. Yes, I would oh, say yeah. that. Um, I think you... Terminator Genesis is worse. Apparently, you can't buy good writing. Like, you can't buy a surely good writer. And I think that's also think tied to the fact could. that they have time limits. You think you could. Like, well, yeah, time limits can affect This things. is the thing, man. It's like, a lot of us feel that we could write a good TLJ, but what if someone said do it in an hour? We'd be like, fuck. Yeah. Uh, and you might be like, well, we can still, has... still do better than Ryan Johnson. Probably. I agree with that, actually. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Like, a lot of writers will suffer dramatically when they're forced to write something quickly. It's kind of one of the fundamental things that makes a good movie, in my mind. Unless it's like some Fast and the Furious, just <laughs> fun bullcrap. You know, you get to see cars explode. But anyway, even then, they're Hobbs still telling a story. <laughs> the Hobbs and Shaw trailer. Is that so looks great. Funny. It does look trailer. good. Actually, yeah. I actually, when I saw the trailer with a friend of mine when we watched it, I think it was Captain Marvel. I was like, you know, that looks like a lot of fun to just watch when you literally aren't paying attention. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> well, the thing is, the previous Fast and the Furious, didn't they have a race against a submarine in the Antarctic? Wasn't that a thing? I yeah, stopped like paying he... attention to the Fast and the Furious franchise. <laughs> it's like the dumbest <laughs> set of movies ever I, I, created. That's the only time where I've seen someone grab a torpedo when it <laughs> jumps above the ice and just, like, <laughs> redirect it towards something they wanted to blow up. Like, yeah, it's that beautiful. Works. That's where you're wrong. Uh, That's yeah, you completely totally realistic that. and well-written. When you when you're the rock, you can do things like that. Anyway, not the worst movie ever made, and I have to give credit where I see it. Luke's emotional journey was really compelling. No. Thor's could have been, yeah. but it fell short. How the fuck can't you just say Luke's story could have been compelling, but it fell short? How how can't anyone just say that? And it really seems like his like as you said before, Luke's one felt serious, and Thor's one felt like a joke. But like. The humor in Thor's journey doesn't undermine the stuff he's going through. And, uh, like, if you were to say which one felt more serious, well, I would say it would be the last Jedi one, but the writing was awful, the motivations were terrible, he was contradicting his character, and it was a mess. Sometimes it's important to let go of our hate and recognize when a bad movie does something better than a good movie. No, you didn't. This, this is no, the thing. No, like, wrong. I don't think that's just, what you just did because, here. <laughs> just because a movie has a serious, like, tone doesn't actually make its content serious. There you go. I brought balance to the force by talking positively about you The Last tried. Jedi for a change. Tried, yeah. Perfectly balanced. Now that I've said both good and bad things about it, I'm sure the comment section will be perfectly content. Well, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I'm assuming yeah, that the video is relatively well was re what fuck well received <laughs> compared to the uh, the Doom video, for example. You know, at least I tried. I never got to finish the Doom video. How'd that go? <laughs> Horribly. Oh, the guy came on, Rags. The guy came on. He did? Yep. How'd that go? He didn't know okay. any of this work except you. He was a friend, Leo. Tell people That's about your amazing channel and why they should subscribe. You shouldn't. I'm an asshole. Don't subscribe to no, me. No, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I'm really good. Do fascinating work. <laughs> Nine hours is what we're nearly at now. Nine hours. Not bad, that is, sir. That is a fucking long EFAP. Wow. Not the longest but... still, though. That's <laughs> is the, that the longest? 11 hour EFAP. We Jesus. might beat that today, because it usually takes people all the two hours we to get some super chats. EFAP chest. still dawn. There, Episode 50 is, is going to be the 24th. If there, if there is other stuff that you want to cover, um, yeah, do let me know. And we'll I'll in absolutely in have you back, sir. Good night slash morning yeah. from Creamy Sheaf. Uh, you guys seen Cinema Sins Captain Marvel vid? I think the only person yes. who might have is Sin. Okay, so what do you think, Jay? Uh, it was really, really bad. Oh. Like um, Cinema Sins? No, Cinema Wins. One, no wait. Oh, oh Cinema. Point, wait, sorry. There's one point where he goes, um, where he talks about how it's really great that two women have a conversation in the MCU. <laughs> so clarification. Creamy Sheev's question was apparently about Cinema Sins, not Wins. Has anyone oh, yeah, seen Cinema, Cinema Sins' was, video? I haven't seen it. That was the one I was talking about. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking... Okay. Um, wait, so Cinema Sins said that it's yeah, great that two women have a conversation. Two women have a conversation and they're not 
they're not bad characters. Which they are, but um, well, one of them is. But I thought the whole thing was about him criticizing the film. He says that's a good thing. Yeah, but sometimes he takes things off, and it's like, oh. And it's like, you know, it's about time two women had a conversation in the MCU and tried to think of times. Is it supposed to be like strong. a joke, or is it is for it, realsies? No, it was for reals. Like, um, it's about time two strong female characters had a conversation in the MCU. Uh, and I tried desperately to think of another time that two strong female characters had a conversation in the MCU, but couldn't. So, never mind. Mm. I guess it comes down to what you consider to be a strong female character. Well, who, what, what other woman conversations are there in the MCU? Gamora and Nebula have spoken to each other. That's a thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There we go. Chugging a beer in honor of the critical drinker and clicking on this stream within the first five minutes of uploading. Well, he drank a lot, and so did I. It was wonderful. It was I only had one relevant. beer. I I brought it back with me. I brought a beer back with me to drink for EFAP because I don't I don't have any here with me at the house right now you should always have a backup spirit in your house rex i do you? it's in the freezer but i don't want to climb up there freezer I, yeah up, up, hang on what hang on you keep your spirits in the freezer and your your freezer is up somewhere yeah the freezer is up at the top part of the fridge. i will admit it's really tall yeah what i've found watching a lot of american media is their freezers are typically above the fridge rather than below what the fuck i know yeah I'm... yeah we don't of do course. that that way. We we don't live like savages. The freezer well, is we, like we half don't have the to... size of the fridge, and it's below the fridge. Ours is about half the size of the fridge too, and it's above. <laughs> no, we don't. We, I think I I don't think we access our freezer as much as the fridge. So when you put the freezer also, below the fridge, it pushes the fridge to be at standing level with you, and that's why it's useful. Because you typically access the fridge far more than the freezer, so you'd kneel for the freezer while you would stand for the fridge. Rags, you keep your spirits in your freezer. Why? They don't My, freeze. What I have in there right now level. is um, wild turkey. Uh, is that an that's actual not a drink? That's an animal. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, wild turkey. Wild turkey, or really I haven't cool. had a I haven't had a turkey in my freezer for a long oh time. Oh my god, wild turkey is an actual drink. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah, it's really good. It's uh, wild turkey American honey is what I really like. It's really smooth. Do stuff. you like cook a turkey to the, the degrees freezer. that it turns into a liquid? Is that how that works? What? Yeah, that's why it's brown. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> once you squeeze, once you squeeze down a turkey oh, no. and turn it into just, you, just you nothing sure but turkey juice. That's not just its pee. <laughs> no, 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 no. That ain't no turkey pee. You squeeze the turkey shit. down into a liquid. And then you add alcohol to it, and then just just squirt it into a bottle, <laughs> and then you freeze it, and then you enjoy it at holidays and special occasions. I'd love to try it if it. ever I get to visit your ex. Why do you I, freeze I it? it? Well, because it doesn't freeze. Oh, it's in the freezer. It doesn't freeze. M Mark Alcatraz said Muller is so stupid. That feel when you take me seriously when I ask if. If, the, if it's made from a real animal. <laughs> yes, he really thought that what we do here in America is we go out to the woods and catch wild there's, animals. There's people telling me I'm wrong juices, about how it's, it's, it's constructed. Fucking hell, chat. Come on. <laughs> catch up. So my experience in the Toy Story worked in for a while. Uh, they told us, and this is, this is the big shame of retail, they told us that once the customer makes enough noise, shut them up by giving them a refund. And that's really bad as a precedent because you, it just encourages people to be fucking that loud. Oh fucking hell! They can do whatever they want. I don't work in retail anymore, but please, for the god, just remember that there are people that work behind those registers. People, okay? They could be you. The, the one th I actually recommend everyone work in a tough retail job before doing anything in life, just so you can be humbled by the fact that it's fucking horrible to work in a really rough retail job. So you guys know. Um, what are they called? The, the, uh, Fuck, the, wrap it up already, get to the point. <laughs> the Funko Pop dolls, right? Yes, I do. So yeah. we had I'm a... Sure. I, I was in charge of the software department, and for some fucking reason they gave us the Funko Pops, because I guess they're connected to media, and software is typically a lot of media. So we had to take charge of them. We had this huge stand of them, and uh, we also had a security guard, because every store should have a security guard. That makes sense. We actually got him installed because someone tried to run away with a PS4 and our manager had to tackle them. It was the most fucking hilarious thing you've ever seen. Um, we got a security guard. And so these, these, this couple, 
came up to to my till because I was in charge of software. I had only been working there for three months, and I was put in so charge. So you're in charge of, of like the software department. Yeah, which is the most like. Okay. It was ridiculous. It was a really, 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 really bad situation. I try to be vague about it because I don't want to put anyone in trouble, but it was terrible. I shouldn't have been in charge, uh, but I was the best person to be put in charge because of how bad the turnover was there. So I was just doing my dailies, and then I saw these this couple come up to the stand with um, all the Funko Pops, and they just start taking them all out onto the floor, and like the entire stand. And I was just looking at them like, okay, that's odd behavior. Idea, I'm talking like a hundred of Funko Pops. They're just putting them all on the floor. And the security guard looks at them, and he looks at me, and he looks back at them, and he's just like, you know, like, mouths, what the fuck are they doing? And I just sh shrug my shoulders like, I don't know. And they're just staring at them, they're looking back, looking through them all. And he walks up to them, and he's like, uh, what are you doing? And like, I'm in range, so I can hear the conversation. And then they're like, oh, we're just looking through them, because we're just looking for the ones we want. And he was like, okay, people walk through here, so if you, you wouldn't mind, like, Know, doing this in a more efficient manner if you have to do this this way whatever you know it's, it's sort of thing and they put them all back but then like the woman out of the, the it's, a, it's a guy and a girl the woman's like distressed about this and i remember finding it odd but i just go back to my, my my work whatever and then fast forward about 20 minutes and my manager comes up to me and she was like i need to speak to you about our security guard and i was like okay and uh the couple and my manager come up to me and they're like, uh, so these, these people feel very distressed. Were they harassed by the security guard? And I was like, um... And they were like, you were there, you heard what he said. And I was like, so, uh, you, uh, you guys were looking at the, um, the Funko Pops, right? And they were like, yeah, do you remember what he said? Like, oh, well, he said, he said that, uh, he wanted to know what you were doing, right? And they were like, no. I was like, oh, sorry, what, uh, what, what did he say? Like he was like, are you trying to rob the store? Are you trying to sneakily put these into your clothing? And he was like, oh, I need to check what you're doing. I was like, oh, I don't, um, I don't remember uh, him saying that. And then like uh, they started talking more. And then I got, uh, uh, the manager talked to me separately, and she was like, I think these people are crazy. Like what actually <laughs> happened? And I was like, he literally just asked what they were doing, and that was it. And she was like, yeah, that's what the security guard told me. And then they came over as we were talking, they were like, I demand he be fired. I demand he be fired. And we were both, like, wide-eyed, like, uh... I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> like, I don't think you can just fire somebody. You're, the customer does not have the power to hire and fire, <laughs> and actually. I, and ironically, she was like, we will never shop here again unless he's fired. And my manager was like, okay. <laughs> that's a, that's, that seems like a win-win, right? And, uh, yeah, well, they, they, like, they left outraged, and the security guard was like, Hey man, thanks for backing me up, and I was like, what do you mean? I, did, I, did, I just told I didn't even- I just, And my manager was like, yeah, if ever this shit happens, just fucking hell, these people need a reality check. Like, some customers are actually insane, and they just do not listen to what people are actually saying, and they just imagine yeah. slights so they can get free shit. Or they can demand people get fired. It's the most insane. And this is one of like a thousand stories. Retail is hell when you live in like the, the you're working some of the worst jobs. And I had like it was a nightmare. And like I remember just being like, what the fuck? I need. And she was like, if you had told me that he had abused them, he may have lost his job. But I was just like, how arbitrary your life can be when you're in retail that a fucking annoying customer can cost you everything just because they didn't listen to what you were actually saying. You see enough people that if, you know, 0.5% of people are fucking psychos, yeah. you're going to eventually run into them. It was eye-opening, and this is why I recommend everyone have that experience, because, like I said, so many stories. Uh, like, I'll, this one's quicker, but uh, we had a special when uh, Pokemon X and Y released, and they were like, you can, um, we give them out a card that has a code on it, and it'll give you a free Pokemon when you put it into your whatever fucking console you have. And like, uh, we ran out because the idea was you give it w uh, one card with every purchase of the game and eventually we ran out as any store does. And a guy walked yeah. up to me, he looked like he was in his 60s, but he had the outfit of like someone who was like f fucking 10 years old. He had like shorts and a nice like little shit and he was holding his games and he was like, uh, the sign said that you get a free Pokemon code, I'd like to have that. I was like, yeah, sorry, no, we were out, the, the promotion doesn't been refilled on our side so I can't give you that. And he was like, okay, I can wait. And he just stood there, and I was like, uh, no, no, I mean, like, like, deliveries, like, this could be a week, it could be more, like, I don't know, because I, obviously, I just work here, I don't know what the actual deliveries are, but, uh, 
yeah, we used to have, you know, we had a whole stack, but we've given them out with every game purchase, and we've ran out now. And he was like, well, that's unacceptable. And you just awkwardly stand there, and he's like, I'd like to speak to a manager. And I'm like, the manager will tell you the exact same thing. And he's like, I'd like to speak to a manager. And there's, you hear about these stories as, like, almost jokes in movies and stuff, but these things happen. People are there insane. Are people like that. And the manager comes down and tells you the exact same fucking thing because they don't know anything about it, so they ask me about it, and I tell them what I told them, and they tell them the fucking customer, and the customer's like, that's unacceptable. And they're like, okay, do you want to see my manager? <laughs> it's like, do you want to see the fucking co-owner of the now store? Up the chain. You want to talk to the CEO? Is that what you want? And you just... You want, you, to, you want us to fly you out to London to go to corporate headquarters to get into a business meeting room with our CEO so we can explain to you that things are limited in this finite world. <laughs> That's not acceptable. I didn't leave that job because I found a better one. I left it out of pure stress. It was a nightmare. In yeah. the purest sense, it was the fucking worst job I've ever had. The best story I have, and again, I'll try and make this as quickly as possible, is that we have uh, tents. So think of them as uh, several outdoor tent things. And this is when I was, this is before software. I was in control of outdoors first, which is just imagine everything you'd have outdoors you'd have like the four foot tent then the six foot tent and then the 12 foot tent which many not many people buy but this guy wanted a 12 foot tent i was like okay i'll go find one for you it took me like 10 minutes in the back but i found a 12 foot tent and then by the time i was getting it out for him i realized that the box was all damaged and i was like fuck i can't sell this to a customer because this is just bad and then after another 10 minutes i found a 12 foot tent and the box looked fine and i checked it and it was like it was missing one of the most important poles and i was like this can't work either then I, I woke up to my till to check the stock, see if there's more than two. He was like, is everything okay? And I was like, I, I, I'm just, I, there are two in stock, they, they're just, they're not, uh, I can't, they're, they're not sellable. I was like, and I think I said something like they're reserved to try and cover it instead of saying they're just broken because it makes the store look terrible. So I was like, yeah, uh, yeah. so I'm trying to find you a more, a different one. He's like, yeah, okay, fine. And so I look for ages and then it says there's one in like warehouse B. I go over there, and then I find out after searching for ages from the guy who works at the warehouse, it's like, oh no, we sold that one, we haven't recorded it yet. And I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, after like a good half hour, 40 minutes, I remember coming back to this guy with the unfortunate information that he's just wasted his time standing here and we don't have it, and he's going to have to wait X amount of time, we'll go to a different store. His reaction? Okay. Thank you for looking. And he left. I was yeah. just like, wow. <laughs> Some people are... Thank you so fucking super, much. I I don't want to waste your time. I want you to get out, and that's not supposed to be uh, rude. It's me telling you that I'm trying to get the job done as quickly as possible so I can get back to the, all the standard jobs that I have in the day regardless of customers, which is typically a lot. Customers are usually on top of whatever jobs you have to do in the day. So when a customer's like, I want X, you get it to them as soon as possible so you can get back on with your job. So the idea that it's like, you've been fucking me over, it's like, no, 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 no. Trust me, workers want you to go satisfied as soon as possible. And yeah, I really appreciate that guy. That guy was like my favorite customer ever. And all he did was say, okay. And you know the meme about how it's like a 40-year-old woman with that standard hairstyle? It's like, yeah, We're it was a Aaron. lot of those. Yeah. It's, it's more than just a meme, I swear. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. The message ring, you tell him to EFAP now. Is he online? Yeah. Well, can you do it while I read out Super Chess? <sighs> Fine, Mahler. <laughs> I'll do it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I hope Danvers pulls a Daenerys in the MCU. I actually agree with that. Wait, why would you just ring him? You gotta ask his permission first. <laughs> Holy fuck. I, listen, when he comes in, we'll just tell him right off the bat. Fringy, it's important. What? Okay, listen, Fringy. All right, we're live. Just let you know we're EFAPing. So okay. anything that you say, cannon will be used against you in the court of public opinion. Why did you do this okay. to this poor man? So, because I... We were, Jay and Mahler and I, we were, we were talking um, about retail, um, and we wanted to ask you, what was your opinion on the Emancipation Proclamation? <laughs> Pro, against, <laughs> in the middle. Of what? <laughs> this is out of context. We're super chatting. Oh, okay. Rags doesn't we're, even we're know what to say. We're, Why did you do you this know, to this poor man? How could you do this? Okay, right, so Mahler, so I, uh, Mahler said, up, right, I, "So the the emancip that was Lincoln, right?" Why I don't know what you're talking about. So we were doing an EFAP, <laughs> and I said, "Hey, we should ask Fringy if he wants to come on." And Mahler told me to do it, and of course I fucked it up because I don't know how to run this show. So it's Mahler's fault 
because he knew that I would mess it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> so I don't know what the situation with you is right now, for you in terms of free time. What happened was I mentioned... Uh, he's got so a lot of free time been, because of the Emancipation Proclamation. There's been a lot of talk about how Spider-Man Homecoming is bad tonight, and I mentioned the hype... Now, it's funny you say that, because I literally got home from watching Spider-Man, like, 20 minutes ago. Oh, shit, you've seen the new one. Yay! Is it better or worse than Homecoming? Uh, I'm probably gonna have to think about that, because Homecoming is so solid. Oh, careful, um, Fringy, careful it's, saying that, careful. You can't say that. It's, it's not you can't say that because MJ's black. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who cares? I know. Who does shit. care? Apparently some people out there give a shit. I'm happy that you think that way because, I mean, me and you pretty much are one-to-one -one on Homecoming, so I'm hoping I enjoy it. Yeah, Homecoming is awesome. And anybody who says it isn't is objectively wrong, unfortunately. <laughs> oh my god, this I'm is sorry. spicy. I'm sorry. We've, we've <laughs> dealt with care. a night of, like, chat a... and guests saying Homecoming isn't very good. We've got a, a straw poll up. What was it? Uh, I've lost it. Oh, you know, it's right on my screen now. 40% of people in the straw poll uh, say that Homecoming... Homecoming was not good. 40%. Wow. <laughs> Why? Why? Well, I'm, well, this I'm, is the thing. Wow. So we were talking about the high top video, and I said that me and you watched it, we thought it was terrible. And then Rags was like, let's it's put really free on. But then we were, we were currently it's... talking about Super Chats, we can't even talk about that video, unfortunately. It's like, I gotta get no, let's watch it right now. But, but you I, 12, I don't, 12, I don't really want to. I, I don't really want to watch it. See, look, look at what you've done. You've disturbed this poor frog's slumber. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> look, look at this shit. Literally back to back, these three comments in chat from different people. Homecoming was average. I loved Homecoming. Homecoming is overrated. I don't even know that there's any kind of consensus Homecoming on Homecoming. Is underrated as fuck. Yeah, but the thing is, is, it is underrated because a lot of people don't say that it's one of the best ones, which it is. I said that. <laughs> I said I that very Homecoming. controversially. This is the thing. I like, thought it was one of the, the most securely solid ones. Yeah, for me, it's in the top three. I'm surprised uh, it's not so highly received. 30 years between Captain Marvel and Endgame, why didn't Captain Marvel try to stop Thanos at any point during that period? It's established in Guardians that Thanos is known galaxy-wide as Space Hitler. Well, let me tell you about something called a retcon. That means that when the story is already running, someone adds a thing in there, and sometimes it can be really clunky, and it ruins everything. We call this Captain Marvel. That's because she's flawed. They'll be like, why didn't you stop Thanos? She's like, uh, there are other planets in the galaxy that need my help that don't include Thanos. She was like, he was literally next on my list when he did the thing. Like, okay. She's justified. She didn't, kind of. she didn't stop, uh, she didn't stop Thanos for the sake. You, you cut out, what did you say? She didn't stop Thanos for the same reason I haven't watched Lord of the Rings yet. And what reason is that? I don't know, but <laughs> okay. I, I'll say I just introed my little brothers to Lord of the Rings. Hashtag one less J. <laughs> <laughs> you should have James Moore on. We could do that. I don't know if James, James Moore on. Yeah, Moore on. Whoa. Oh, damn. I didn't mean to insult, but that's how words oh, work. Wow. They sound like different things when they put up with different words. That's up. my bad. Obviously, not after Infinity War, but in Endgame, only two characters die, right? So. No. Wait, who am I missing? All of Thanos' oh, minions. You gonna have a funeral for each? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up. The Black Order. <laughs> yeah. But that'd be great if they had a funeral for Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah, you have like a thing pushed out into the water, and you have all the space dogs there, mournful in tuxedos. Upside down skittles of fives rags. Duh. Up, upside down Skittles a five and no, it's an S. I think it's yeah, it's still an S, isn't it? I'd have to, I'd have to clarify that with science. Uh, uh well, no. It? Let's just use our noggins here. S, you flip it upside down, it's still an S. What about if it's at ninety degrees? That's your opinion. No, I don't think so. All right, here, paint. <laughs> just draw an S and flip it. No, I'm doing. That's what I'm fucking doing. That's what I'm fucking doing. Oh my logic. god, it's it, it's a it's um well yeah, I was right, wasn't I? Again. Well, it's like a backwards ES. It's not a five <laughs> though. 
It's it's a backwards S. Like like the point on the top of the S is facing the right, but if you flip it upside down, then now it's pointing to the left. Did you flip vertically or did you rotate it up? I flipped vertically. Because that's not actually what it's going to look not, like if you turn yeah. it up. <laughs> what kind of fucking bullshit is that? What do you mean what kind of bullshit is that? Life. That's true. Flip Life vertical. Is that yeah, if you oh, flip, vertically, flip vertically, it goes vertical, like... Vertical, like vertical, vertical, yeah. <laughs> Okay, right. Or better right. yet, just get you, a piece of paper. Turn no, a if you skittle. rotate it, if you rotate it 180, it's still an S. But when if you, you turn a schedule, it it's just a, a weird symbol. When you make, yeah, when, you, when you perform the action of, of flipping a skittle, what do you do? Do you rotate it or do you invert the physical like, existence? <laughs> of it? No, that's what I'm saying. When you rotate it 180, it's an S. When you flip it vertically, it's a weird squiggle. Well, if you yes. flip a skittle around, it's just <laughs> gonna have no letter at all. Well, yeah, there's going to be an S on the other side. Yeah, that oh. you can't see, but if you turn it around, you no, see No, if you have a Skittle S. and you flip it around, then you're looking at the S on the back now. There is no... Uh, <laughs> aren't, aren't, aren't there at two S's on a I'm pretty skittle? sure there's one S, isn't there? An S on well, the front? Well, in, in the word Skittles, it begins and it ends with an S. So it would okay. make sense that each What's Skittle that? would have a, a S on each side. Does it though? Does it I don't really? know. I don't need no, skills. I'm pretty sure they have skills. <laughs> I'm pretty sure skills have S on one side. Like M and M's. I don't know. Maybe. That Here, let me Google redundant. it. Skittles. What are you googling? I'm how googling. Many, skittles. How many sides do skittles have an S on? They have an infinite amount of sides because they're <laughs> fucked up round. It looks well. I, I, I went to Amazon to Skittles, and I have a picture of Skittles, and many of the Skittles pictured do not have S's on them. Huh. So uh, let me show you a definitive look. No, I'm looking at a bunch chat. of Skittles no, right now. Look at that. Some of them have the chat. S's, and some of them don't because That's the what S is I on said one just side. a second ago. That's the picture I was using. Some Ooh. have S's, some don't. Yeah, the ones that don't have the S are the it's ones that- It's on the that side that it. I can't see. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're on one side. Yeah, they're on the side we can't see. We, you said they were on both sides. I said they might be. Well, okay, well, they, you're wrong. I didn't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a Skittle connoisseur. I don't, or I don't partake of the Skrittles often. Skrittles. <laughs> the Skrittles. <laughs> I barely eat M and M's, and I and I'm fairly certain that if you flip a, uh, mmm, it becomes a woo. Skittles are better than M and M's. Skittles are not better than M and M's. Yes, they are. No, absolutely you not. You said that earlier in the stream, I swear. No, 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 no. M and M's are better than Skittles in That's taste. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. They absolutely, yeah. M and M, fuck it, chat. M and M's taste better than Skittles. Absolutely, they do. Better. Have you watched In Evangelion yet? Way. It's on Netflix. I've not seen Evangelion. Has anyone else here seen it's, it? I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Evangelion. And why would I? I just admit I no, haven't seen it. So how would I know? <laughs> Evangelion. <laughs> Evangelion. I don't fucking know how you weird people pronounce things. I'm from Britain. Skittles are better than M Ms. No. Why, why yeah. is this happening? <laughs> straw poll. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a straw poll. Go ahead. <laughs> So I have the results of the straw poll on the screen right now. It's very, it's not even close. It's very, very clear that m and M's. It's literally, oh, it's 50-50. No, no, I posted it's a picture. m and M's is running away with it. Look at all that. <laughs> it's currently 50-50. It's got four it votes. It is crushing the polls Remember, right Remember, chat, answer honestly. Ooh, no, that's not looking good. No, m and M's is definitely better. I prefer M and M's, but that's my. I'm precisely biased that I prefer chocolate to sweets. That's my take on that. Even though sweets you're can all, cover you're chocolate. You're all dead to me. <laughs> hey, at least. Hey, you hey. Which it. was your favorite Lord of the Rings movie, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> and Jay never spoke again. <laughs> I think I could probably get along with Wolf, but the thing is. I'm kind of a, I really, really enjoy my personal space and being able to get away from people. Like, I'm not really a guy that, I don't really, I'm not into, like, serious relationships. And there's an element of, like, let's say you were friends with Wolf IRL, you might be like, I don't want to potentially ruin the friendship with a... Yeah, plus Wolf's a fag, so I don't know how that would work <laughs> in the long run. I'm pretty sure it came out in China on Friday. Well, fuck the China, man.
Did Ch does China really exist? Have you been there? Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Let me guess. You've hmm? seen pictures. You've heard stories. Yeah, because but that no counts. Real proof, huh? No yeah. real proof. This is. I, I, ha I hate green people making too. these kind of statements without any kind of fucking backup. I bet you think Australia's real too. Yeah. See, what, nothing. some uncharted island far, far, far away from Australia civilization where the spiders eat birds. Yeah, I'm not buying that. Mm -hmm. Oh, the spiders are as big as dinner plates. Yeah, okay. There used to be an old prison colony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Britain killed the prisoners instead of sending them to Australia, and Australia was a cover up. That's the thing. That's Australia's not real. Oh, yeah. Australia's not real theory. Now, is that actually real, or are you just fucking. <laughs> I swear I've seen people who Australia that. is flat. It's not spherical. That is the truth. That's See? just your opinion. He doesn't even deny it. Doesn't even deny it. I deny it. He's a, he is a verbal terrorist of the toxic brood. Now, now that's, that's an interesting term. Verbal terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> is this, this real? <laughs> <laughs> I'll read this. Flat Have you ever been to Australia? Australia is not real. It's a hoax made for us to believe that Britain moved over their criminals to some place. In reality, these criminals were loaded <laughs> off the ships into the waters, drowning before they could have seen land again. It's a cover-up for one of the greatest mass murders in history, made up by one of the most prominent empires. Australia does not exist. All things you can prove are actually well fabricated lies and the documents made by the leading governments of the world. Your Australian friends, they're all actors and computer generated personas <laughs> part of the plot to trick the world. If you think you've ever been to Australia, you're terribly wrong. The plane pilots are all in on this. They've all actually flown you to the islands uh, close nearby, or in some cases, parts of South America. Well, they have closed space and hired actors to act out as real Australians. Oh my God. Um, this can't be real. This cannot be real. It's in a flat, a... It's in a flat Earth group. Yeah, I was about no, to say, what, like... we wouldn't believe the flat Earth believers are real, so... <laughs> well, just love the whole like, thing about it's this the is... Show. <laughs> have you ever been to Australia? <laughs> <laughs> well, at what point do you think... This is all an uh, this is a this is a cover up that's going to cost an incredibly insane amount of money. <laughs> and what to is the point? Continue with into perpetuity to do what to cover up potential murder of criminals? <laughs> yeah, like d does he not realize that just killing people, killing criminals in the 18th century was super common, and nobody really gave a shit. To do what to cover up potential murder of criminals? <laughs> Yeah, like, d does he not realize that just killing people, killing criminals in the 18th century was super common and nobody really gave a shit? What are the kangaroos? Are they just, like, people in costumes jumping yes, around? Actors. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Rags, if you were in a room with two Carls, you would of course refer to them as Carl and Carl Eternal. <laughs> <laughs> Man, how, how shitty would it be if you were the one just... Carl. You were the one who became Carl Eternal. You'd be like, why am I? Uh, oh yeah, I'm okay with this, actually. Oh, all right. You are the Carl Eternal, and you're you're just Carl. Hi, Mola. Yeah. Having seen the Great British Podcast where nitpicks guested, I'm wondering if you would debate them on objectivity versus subjectivity question. I like them, but their points need taking down by the long man. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, they, get, they had nitpicks on to guest, which is a popular video essay podcast, and he was like, there is no way to uh, objectively assess a movie. And I'm not saying this is my take, but a lot of people's take was that they inefficiently argued against him. And he actually PM'd me to come on and argue about it, but I was asleep, and I woke up an hour after he'd asked me, and I was like, I'll come on! And then he was like, it's too late, we've moved on. And I was like, oh no. Oh. So maybe, I don't know if nitpicks would want to come on to this podcast, though, if they knew me, Wolf, and Rags would be like... Objectivity is a thing. Roar. You know, that, that could be terrifying. Uh, Fringy doesn't come on this podcast specifically for that reason. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the new oh. Doom guy does kind of look like he was drawn by Rob Leefield. I'm assuming that's a sausage enthusiast. What else could it be? Of course. Uh, there are many sausage enthusiasts in the world, Muller. <laughs> When he said he had several things to say to us as a response, I was like, oh god, I hope that we haven't, like, fucked everything up. But it, it did seem to, to be that took the criticism in stride, from what I understood, so. 
Hey, when way. your video when your video has a dislike ratio that bad, it's kind of difficult to not take more criticism <laughs> of it in your stream. I mean, did he say that it was one of the the most like the, the ratios was one of the most disliked videos in the history of YouTube? He, I think he said. Yes. You need to you you need you to talk drink like this a bit more and get some air on your chest. And you got to fucking interrupt people whenever they're talking about something, and then you, you got to fucking drink a lot too. I know it. Yeah, you haven't got the fucking right accent right, do you? I can't do the accent on demand. I can sometimes do well, it. Why you mean I you can't bloody do, do the accent on command? <laughs> well, neither can you, apparently. <laughs> I yes, I can do it. I do it all the time to all my Scottish friends. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm uncomfortable now. Well, you wouldn't be uncomfortable if you were a true Scotsman. Oh, cool, there's a wasp in my room. Why didn't you kill it for invading your country? I don't know if I can say it because then I get in trouble. What? Did they say Negro? <laughs> Literally that. How did you know that? Did you read it already? That's like one no. for one what they said. Wolf was very upset when the trailer for Jedi Order they say an at at. And I had to be the one to tell him that that's actually done by a lot of people. It's not uncommon. At at walkers! I call it an at at myself. But a lot of people call it an at at. He thought yeah. it was like. What do they call an ATST then? Do they call it an atst? <laughs> atst. Atst. <laughs> yeah, and in the yeah, immortal exactly. words, in the immortal words of Rich Evans, ATST, ATST. ATSTs, ATSTs. Uh, TLJ is unironically proof positive of why women should never have been allowed to vote. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <All right. laughs> Jesus. A Holdo toy? Well, now I know what to give to my friend. I know it sounds <laughs> fucked up, but I'd be like, the only reason I'd want a Holdo toy is to probably set it aflame. And they'd be like, wow, that's violent. I'd be like, no, 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 just, I don't know, it just seems to be funny. No, it's just a toy, it's not yeah. like a real person. Bring you, can you get a message to Wolf and say he's a fucking piece of shit? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'll get right on that. Alright, thanks much. <laughs> we thanks, always buddy. Want to on you. <laughs> just out of context, Wolf's gonna be like, what the hell, bro? <laughs> He's like, hey, by the way, uh, uh, by the way, Butler says you're fucking piece of shit. So don't give go. him a timestamp. You'll have to look through the entire thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's an important part on one of the EFAPs. It was part one or two. I forget. But uh... <laughs> he's like, was I there for that? You like, I forget. <laughs> I remember Soph year in college, Ivy campus, supposed to be smart, chatting with friends about film, and one chick kept dismissing everyone's criticisms. I probed her and eventually asked if she believed standards shouldn't she did exist. What to her? He probed her. Oh my god, on college campus. I probed her and eventually asked if she believed standards just shouldn't exist, and she actually said yes. That's when I realized women shouldn't be allowed to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is like the fourth time this is possible. It's the up. same dude. <laughs> women <Yes. voting. laughs> St. Don's Braille Library for the deaf burned down later <laughs> that day because Don could not operate his fire truck correctly due to his broken hand. When pressed for comment, Legal Eagle reportedly stated that the arsonist was acting in self-defense as one of the deaf children had made light contact with his jacket and thus was endowed with the privilege to act with a justifiable amount of force. Many deaf orphans died that day, not being able to hear the roaring flames approaching them as they appreciated the joys of freedom. <laughs> In memory of the death. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What'd you bring me?